This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. After the first week of competition, the Alpha Group reigns supreme, but the question is, will their domination continue? Hello, everyone, and welcome to week two of VCT Americas, coming at you live once again, as always, because we have nowhere else to go, the Riot Games Arena in Los Angeles, California. Of course, I'm Golden Boy. We got Doug, we got Wyatt, and we have a special guest. It's Shazam from G2. Good to have you here, my friend. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, you're, we're gonna put you to work today, okay? You're gonna <laughs> earn, earn, earn your paycheck here, okay? This is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna have a good time, but first, let's go ahead and talk about our current standings, because week one took a very uh, unexpected, dare I say, one-sided turn, unless you're MIBR, of course, because the Alpha Group won every single match. Let's actually go ahead and show the standings there, because Wyatt, you were blown away by this when you saw it earlier this on. Is, it's a pathetic state <laughs> for the Omega Group, when the best team is just they haven't played. <laughs> I mean, this is just sad. This is just, ugh. MIBR in first, zero and zero. Fury lost, 100 Thieves lost, Lev lost, Loud lost. I mean, you can shoot Loud some bail, right? Yeah. They had the whole Lev, thing. Lev, laugh, Lev, Loud, lost. Oh, Ronnie Mimi was here. We're not Lev laughing or loving. <laughs> Lev fans are depressed as hell. The yeah. team looked terrible. <laughs> it's just the Omega group. Hopefully, maybe they'll turn it around, surely. Surely yeah. they'll get some wins over Sen and NRG this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, it is, uh, it's it is, brutal. It is like an impossible situation, right? Like surely yeah. after week one, nobody would have thought, I mean, really winless? Surely somebody's gonna walk away with a win. Yeah. This is just, this has been a wild start to the year. Hey, well, you know, anything is possible. Let's take a look at our schedule here and see what we're gonna have coming up on the docket today because we're starting off the day with G2 taking on 100 Thaves. And then after that, it's gonna be a kickoff rematch where we have Sentinels taking on Leviathan Shazam. I feel like it's gonna be easy answer. Which, which game excites you the most here? Uh, G200 Thieves. I think Surprise. they're the most evenly matched team. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously, I'm going to be biased that, is, that does look like an exciting matchup, though, because you're, you're right. Both of these teams are kind of coming into it with, with you know, similar expectations here, right? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be really fascinating. We'll see what happens there. What about for you guys? I mean, any, any Sen Leviathan enjoyers today? I'm, I'm really excited for them. I think this Leviathan roster on paper should be good. We and keep they, saying that. they have struggled, right? <laughs> and so we, everyone's wondering, like, all right, when are we going to go from paper to like translating it on stage, and when yeah. are you going to start executing? And I think that's something that a lot of people are still really excited for. This is a really good litmus test, though. Yeah. I think yes, you're playing against the best team in the world right now. You've got to convert. But honestly, when you have a team that's been built this way, and you've got those pieces on the roster, you just kind of have to deliver. All I'm right? saying like, is, if Leviathan beat Sentinels today. That's going to be fun. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Go balls. Yeah, I was Maybe. waiting, Joe, waiting to see where you were going. No, I was, I was, I was more just Jones. like, I'm going to go on the internet and just look at people's reactions and see them get mm. mad and funny. I don't know. People's right. disappointment online brings me joy. That's provocative. You know? <laughs> what can I say? I'm a monster. Uh, in any case, come on, really? <laughs> Mimi's not here. We don't have to do this today. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, today, Sentinels and Leviathan match means that we get to see two former teammates and world champions face off once again. Of course, we're talking about about Sassy and Aspas. When I met Aspas, he people thought he was cheating in the game because <laughs> he was so good. Even I did. Then when I started playing with him, I noticed that he didn't know anything about the game <laughs> and how to play it. So I kind of, it's weird to say that, but I kind of raised him. And uh, yeah, it turns out that now he's one of the best players in the world. Cool. So much noise, curveball, two kills, make that three. What I did back with Aspas is that we would always do VOD reviews together, like one-on-one. -on -one. So I would always watch him, telling him what he needs to do to get better. So instead of doing my VOD review, I would do his, because I wanted him to grow, because I saw all the potential on him, and yeah. I think it was worth it. We won chance. <laughs> Quando a gente estava na Loud junto, uh, ele era uma pessoa que me ajudava muito. Ele me ajudava muito, não só dentro de jogo, também fora de jogo, porque eu não sabia fazer muita coisa fora de jogo, só sabia jogar. Uh, eu tenho uma memória bem engraçada com o Saci. A gente estava treinando um dia uh, na Loud e aí. Eu morri, não lembro nem o que aconteceu, e aí o Saci pegou e falou 
ô, ô, aspas, o que, que você acha que você deveria ter feito ali? O que, que aconteceu? Aí eu peguei e falei pra ele, mano, mobinha, se eu tivesse acertado o tiro no cara, tinha dado certo. E aí... Ele disse, oh, next time I will shoot him in the head. So I was like, ok. Aspas, na verdade, me ensinou muito, você sabe? Ele me ensinou como ser paciente. Eu acho que ele foi bem importante, sim, pra mim, pra eu ser o player que eu era agora. É, é sempre legal estar tá jogando contra o Saci. Como eu já disse várias vezes, eu gosto de jogar contra players bons e ele também é um grande amigo meu, então é mais legal ainda jogar contra ele. Eu sei como ele joga, ele sabe como eu penso também, então, sim, é sempre um banger match para jogar contra Aspas. It is an insane luxury to be considered one of the best players in the world and Sassy go, yeah, you know, I saw him, he was really good, I thought he was cheating, and then I got to know him better and realized he doesn't know how to play the game. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about yeah. the game, which is just, I mean, insane. To yeah. be that good and to not know the game is just wild. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, Shazam, you, you've, you've been around for a while. Any, <laughs> any players you've taken under your wing over um, the course of your career? Yeah, I think, well, for the original Sentinels roster, I feel like I was all of their dad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running the daycare over there, but um, I think most recently, Oxy. I've, like, you know, if I could buy stocks in a player, Oxy. Yeah. I think that not just being, like, incredibly talented, like, he's a very good kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah easy yeah. to work with, and, you know, that comes rare with superstar talent. Yeah, so, yeah. Caught that vibe good. immediately. Also, the pop-offs. I mean, it just, uh, that makes me an Oxy fan forever. Uh, it's going to be awesome to see, of course, all our players take the stage in a moment, but let's go ahead and shift gears to our first matchup of the day. We got G2 versus 100 Thieves. Now, G2, they did, you know, it wasn't the best start for, for this team going into the kickoff, but I, I feel like, you know, undoubtedly, Wyatt, this G2 team is definitely, with the addition of Icy, is certainly coming to their own here. I'm excited to see what they can cook up. Yeah, it's allowed other players on the team to make some role swaps that they're looking very comfortable on as well. Leaf going to the Killjoy. He's played a number of different agents on various teams in the game. He played Killjoy previously, and just having a guy like that alive in the late rounds and anchoring a site where the rest of the team can focus elsewhere is really allowing them to thrive on defense, especially uh, on, on Lotus. So that's been pretty cool. And Icy himself, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he was good. He did what he needed to do. He didn't light the world on fire in his debut, but he did what the team required of him to get a win. You can't really ask for much more than that for the first game on stage, right? And first time, like, in a Tier 1 team as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was interesting to listen to, it was both Alan and Josh talking about the role swaps and some of what was going on there and how it felt like from the beginning, the design was almost for Leaf to play Sentinel. And, you know, he had played it a couple of times last year, but this really feels like a position now where they're able to put him in that comfortable role. I think it was in the interview, Valen said, it, it almost felt like Leaf was designed mm. to play Sentinel. So he feels more comfortable, and I, I think you're right. Icy doesn't have to pop off. He doesn't have to light the world on fire. I think as long as he's creating space, as long as he's doing what the team's asking of him, this G2 roster could look really good. I think now more than ever, with a team yeah. that's been around as long as it has and has been playing together as long as they have, it's not about people popping off. It's about fitting your role and doing your job for the team. And that could be the key to success for G2 moving forward. Yeah, potentially. I mean, uh, anything on your end that you yeah, saw there? Um, definitely. I think with roles being more defined and like sometimes when you play with the same group of people for a long time, it becomes routine. Yeah. And when a roster change happens, it's like a breath of fresh air within the team and the dynamics. And so everyone becomes extremely motivated yeah. and it just like brings a whole new feeling to the team. I like to uh, equate it to the new car smell. You know, you ever get a new car? I mean, I don't have a driver's license, but if you had a new car, right, it smells good. You don't have a driver's license? Yeah, I'm from New York, man. I don't this need a driver's like, license. This does live in LA. And I walk to work every day. Yeah, you know what I mean? Surprise you. Look at, the, look at these hammies. You look at these glutes, you know? <laughs> You calves have to be jacked. Oh, 100%, bro. I make tall leaps in a single bound. Uh, no, but seriously, it, it really is that. It's like this team's got, like, a, a freshness to them, and that's a positive. That's what you want to see, especially for G2. Now, speaking of Icy, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and hear it from him because we've got Geek Heavy standing by. All right, we got G2 approaching. Icy, Icy over here. Now, as the new guy, I got to ask you this. How much time have you had to integrate into the roster? Uh, I've had like three or four weeks, but you know, I feel like I'm fitting well into the team. And things are running smoothly. Okay, so you ready for today? Of course, I'm ready. Excited? Very excited. All right, good luck out there. 
All right, well, you heard there, excited to jump into the game. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also looking forward to one other player, Valen, who's going to be taking the stage with this G2 lineup because the fragging IGL was living up to the role yesterday, uh, uh, last week, Doug, said yesterday, last week, time's uh, elusive to me. Uh, but I got to say, to see Valen fragging like this and stepping up for the team is huge for them. Yeah, and I think especially when it's coming from your leader, it, it's motivating, right? Yeah. It creates a spark when you see a guy like that who can Didn't happen all drag. the time, but, you no. know. And, but I do think even even when it does happen, it creates a lot of value both in the short term and in the long term, right? If you've got a guy who's leading from the front like that, someone who's been so vocal and who's also putting up the numbers that he has, that's the catalyst to the start often uh, of something that could be really special. And I think it has to come from someone like Valen. You wouldn't really expect to see it from many other people. I think when that happens, things bode well for G2. Yeah, I think that we've come to that point in Valorant Esports where, you know, all five players are using the same weapons. like. Yeah. Everyone yeah. needs to be able to frag out yep. and like do their job and hold their role. So yeah. it's very important coming from the leader. Yeah, there's no, at this point now, it's like with, with the level of play and also how competitive this region has been, it, it's like you, there can't be any slouches out there. So Valen stepping up when they needed to, definitely massive. But here's actually what Valen had to say about that win in our Verizon post-match interview. Let's check it out. Um, I mean, I'm just really proud of the team. Like, we went through a lot of adversity the last couple weeks, you know, picking up Icy, who's a rookie, and he's been integrated in the system really well. Um, as you can see, he's very aggressive, and he takes those timings on Duelist. So he, he's the unsung hero of this new roster because I, he's making a lot of space for the team. Like, he's so selfless. He goes in with the utility. He usually gets his one. And from there, you just let the rest of us shine. You know, I think one of the things, Shaz, that stood out to me when they were talking about him was Icy and his role and the job and what he does and how good he is at taking space. So I wanted to take this opportunity for you and I to nerd out a little bit about some of the perhaps maybe nuances of Lotus, but I think answering the why. So I want us to take a close look at Icy here and what he does to open the round and really just kind of pick your brain on this as mm -hmm. someone who's been playing the game for so long and is as knowledgeable as he is. So things start off and Icy immediately satches over uh, to half wall there and then they just kind of freeze. I feel like we see pro players and teams do that a lot, but why? What's the point of that? Yeah, so Lotus, A main control is very important. Every team, you know, will contest for A main at some point. Um, you're just controlling such a large part of the map. And so this is like an uncontested example. Mm. So you have IC satcheling out the rubble, um, the Omen seeping to the front. Uh, it's very easy for the defense to just dump a bunch of util into the main and stop that control at all, insert someone into rubble. So the importance of like movement, IC going in there, is that all you need to do is stay alive for the rest of his team to wait out the util, and then they can continue to take the space and take those fights if it's being contested. In this example, you know, it's all free and it seems like they go straight into like an A split through tree. Um, and that might be like a protocol that, you know, if we're not being fought, let's commit to the site take immediately. Now, what does it do to the defense when you have an, a, a team on attack who's that's aggressively taking space right off the rip, not really giving any of that space up for free? Yeah, so on the defense, if they have control A main, they're just like one step ahead of the attack. You know, mm. they're, they're gonna be able to stack and rotate ahead and know where the site's hitting. Now they're spread a bit thin. You know, there's the option of going through breakable. There's the option of committing to an A or even just going back. And it, they're more of a like guessing game on their back feet. And so I think as we continue to run this clip forward, we see how things play out. You mentioned it, that it feels like they're going to just go through a split A. They smoke off stairs, and it really felt, Chaz, like because of the early protocols, they just had so much more room to breathe. Ultimately, they end A, but you're right. They could have, in theory, gone anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, everything seems to be rehearsed. You know, everyone knows, like, what they're supposed to do if they're going into this. And you see IC just go straight into the back of site, ready to clear out everything and hold a retake or flood. Now, you often, when you talk about duelists and you talk about them taking space, it's often fireworks and it's exciting and, you know, kills and blah, blah, blah. But really, what what is the value in a duelist taking space when it yeah. comes to especially a hit like that with Icy satcheling backside and things like that? Yeah, you know, they're the ones that are opening up the round for your team. You know, everyone else has a certain role. They're setting up util and stuff. And kind of them, they're the ones scaling in, ready to take an engagement and have their team follow up. Um, you know, they have to be fearless and, like, kind of just trust that their teammates are going to do the job for them. And I think the, the last question I want to ask you very quickly as we see the round uh, kind of close out is, again, obviously with the duelists, you're hoping you get kills, you're hoping you get entries, you're getting your ones, as Valen so eloquently put, but would you say that there's a lot more value, especially on a three-site map, especially on a site exec, on just taking the space, on occupying space and creating that fill for your team? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, they, they need to take opportunities when they have them. Even if he's necessarily not getting the first kill, it, it's not, that's not all it is, you know? It's not just the engagement. 
Well, and I think one of the things is, as we talk about Icy in his debut is this was the only map we saw him play a duelist on. And the attack side, admittedly, when it came to stats, was a, a little weak. But mm -hmm. he did create a lot of space, as we saw here. And I think when you think about how that plays out looking into the future, is that something you're looking out more for? For G2 as a roster, are they okay with that? Does he need to start delivering in frags? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think right now he's probably just getting comfortable. But you can see everyone else like with the space he's making, everyone else looks extremely comfortable. Everyone knows what they want to do and the team looked great. Um, I think for him, maybe he, as he gets more reps on the role um, with you know the team and matches and stuff, it's going to look even better. GB, I'd love to bring yeah. you and Wyatt back in on this because Hi. I think oh, come on over. We, <laughs> I think it, it'll be really interesting to watch how G2 do this because as we were talking about earlier, uh, Icy played um, Gecko on Icebox. They only played one map that was Duelist on, so you wonder if things go heavy towards Duelist maps yeah. where there's a lot of raise, where he needs to be able to deliver in that role. I think there's still a lot of questions to be answered for, for Icy and for G2. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really fascinating. Why? I mean, you know, we'll see what G2 can do, but it does feel like, uh, at the very least, they're they're coming up with ideas, they're trying to implement this new player into it in an effective manner, and so far, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, G2, at the moment, I have no reason to doubt them heading into yeah. this. They were playing well at kickoff. They played their best game last week. No, Jury, no reason to doubt them right now, but again, yeah, we're so early in the season, like all these teams. You kind of, now, the... We're used to overreacting, and I want to overreact. That's you want to overreact? I, I, I want to overreact to there news. was one result last week, but, you know, realistically, let's be smart, guys. Surely, we let's, don't, let's we don't overreact and, to the one match they played. Why don't we overreact for the next one, then? How about that? Who is it? Okay, yeah, what talk, team? We're talking about 100 Thieves. Oh, Everyone... then I will overreact. <laughs> 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 There's one team to overreact about. I was waiting for Perfect. that one. All right, we'll move on to 100 Thieves, then. Now, this is a team that I think it goes without saying. They need a dub on the board. We talk yeah. about teams that aren't winless, that struggle to pick up those wins. 100 Thieves have not won a best of three since May of 2023, and oh, that's a long ass time. <laughs> I mean, listen, the, the, the dedicated parasocial fans of this team are holding on to their cope by a thread. And that last thread is, well, they've only played against Sentinels twice. They played Lev close. Let's see what happens when they play a different team. They're going against G2. Surely this is a winnable game. I mean, it is a winnable game. So if they lose here, but that's it. The cope is all gone. It's it's over. It's over for the fans. They'll have yeah. had enough with this team. This is their chance to prove that, like, all right, they're at least going to be, like, upper mid-table here, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Shazam, I want to bring you in on this. What's your, like, surface level, what's your read on this 100 Thieves team based on what we've seen and, you know, maybe even information that you may have? Yeah, I feel like not only do they need a big one, they just need a one in general. Like... <laughs> It's getting crew status real real quick, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're they're having some, I don't know, they're swapping around the roles in some maps, and you can tell, like, from one map, a lot of people look comfortable in their roles, and the next map, it's swapped around, and things look disconnected. People are hesitating, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's something they need to figure out or just keep it consistent throughout. Yeah, yeah. If, if I may, to, you know, continue to inject a little bit of, of cope, I think Cryo, at least on map one, oh, uh, yeah. last weekend looked incredible he looked confident he looked like the duelist that everyone's been hoping and wanting to see out of him for what years uh, yeah. at this point and I think there's a lot of conversation to be had around translating from chamber to a primary jet duelist and you know creating space like that's a it's a very different role I it think is. what's being asked of you is is drastically different I think for cryo at least on icebox that felt like a, a breath of fresh air that felt very different from what we had seen for the past what, yeah. a year and change? Yeah, I'm actually really glad you mentioned that as well because we do have Geek Heavy. You got an opportunity to speak with Crow to get his thoughts heading into this matchup. Here they are. Cryo, right over here, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, I got to ask you, how comfortable do you feel in this current meta? Uh, Pretty comfortable. I mean, I get to play Jet on a few maps, Controller on a few maps, so yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to kill it today, man. How are you feeling? Confident? Hella confident. All right, let's do it. Good luck, man. Crow's feeling confident, and he's feeling confident with the meta. Well, let's go ahead and continue the conversation on Cryo. As he had mentioned, he got to play the Jet, also play a little bit of Controller too. Wyatt, uh, it, it does feel like Cryo, you know, you're always going to have your attention focused on him because of the player and the caliber of player that he is. It's a lot of pressure for him. He was brought into the team because it seemed like this massive, obvious duelist upgrade, but it just didn't really pan out as intended for 100 Thieves, at least yet. It was really good to see him specifically, though, in that game. He was dominating on Icebox as Jet with a rifle, because when he has had dominant games with 100 Thieves, it's 
They switch to defense, they win the pistol, he gets an off and he just carries the entire half. That's how they were getting a lot of wins last year when they were getting wins. So I'm just looking for him to keep this up as a duelist with a rifle. Mm. Well, I think part of the issue, too, is, you know, we saw highlights from the Icebox game and how good he looked and loose and confident and updrafting and knives and whatnot. But then we turned over to Split, and it, it looked like a different player in a lot of ways. I think the transition, and this kind of goes back to the conversation we were having earlier, transitioning from a duelist role to a controller role, what's being asked of you is very different. And I think Cryo almost was like punished by the success that he had on mm. Icebox because he's feeling it, right? Like he almost dropped 30. He may have dropped 30 on Icebox. I don't remember. He was close with it. And then he transitioned over to this Astro role and it looked like he was trying to take a lot of aggressive fights and he was trying to swing with confidence because he was feeling it, but it wasn't translating the same way. Yeah. 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 Go for definitely it, like on Icebox, I think we saw him the most aggressive he's been in a long time and it looked really good. It's what they need. But then on Icebox, a split immediately, he's on Astra and like he's hesitating. He's... He's in the smoke. He doesn't know if he should take space and yeah. fight B main or if he should, you know, back up and play for the retake. Um, Do you think there's really value in keeping someone focused on, like, especially with the circumstances 100 Thieves find themselves in, keeping people kind of focused on roles rather than, like, being completely flexible? Do you think the meta just doesn't allow that right now? Um, I think there's a balance. You know how we saw Demon once with Charaise on split for the first yeah. time? Like, you can definitely do that, and I think Cryo's a player that kind of needs that. He could have carried over that momentum from Icebox into Split, yeah. while on Astra, you know, he was very restricted, and yeah. it was really obvious. Yeah, it's just, uh, of course, uh, you know, when you think about this 100 Thieves lineup, you got a lot of different weapons that can come into play here, but another player as well that stands out, Bustio, who, you know, uh, again, strong kickoff, but kind of the opposite of, of what happened to uh, Valen, <laughs> where, like, Valen was seeing a lot of output that week. Bustio, on the other hand, not finding what he wanted in that week one matchup, Doug, and you're really going to be hoping to see Busio step it up this time around. Yeah, I think to roll back the clock even further, you go back to their Tokyo run when he was on EG, he was leading from the front, and yeah, you had a lot of pieces with you there. Khan was having his big moments, Demon 1 was what? Demon 1, but Busio had really big moments. He was dueling, he was popping off as a sentinel. A lot of clutches, yeah. Yeah, he had some really massive moments, and I think it continued into champs, maybe not to the same degree, uh, but we just haven't seen that. We haven't seen that since, and this felt this past weekend felt like the worst performance we've seen out of Bustio in a really long time. And I think for him to succeed and for the team to succeed, I think there's a lot of value in him. Obviously, the 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 benefit that he provides from a calling role, the uh, motivational uh, aspect that he plays into things, but I also think he's at his best when he's when he's popping off a little bit, right? Like when he's delivering frags, and that was just I mean, he was a complete shadow of the player we've grown to love since yeah. last year. Yeah, that's that's tough. Uh, yeah, when you're talking about that, I mean, that is a lot of pressure to put on this one guy that he has to solve so much with this team from yeah. being yeah. IGL to also the mental side of the game because they're just, they were at least such an unconfident team. And so you're looking at him, the hype man of EG, to try and, and like rectify that at least yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, specifically, I think in comparison to Valen in the last week, Bustio was definitely playing a lot more. Uh, set up for 100 Thieves than Valen, especially like sure, sure. on Icebox in that comp that. Uh, G2 run where Valon is the omen. He's basically like a duelist. So yeah. he has way more opportunities to get kills because they don't run a duelist with that comp. And like he's getting flashes from the KO and that kind of thing. Yeah. Or on split, Busio is like pretty much pure gecko setup and their game plan was just failing. So yeah, I mean, it's just tough for him to find opportunities to look decent on, on that map in those circumstances. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, you're definitely looking for him individually to turn it around because historically he's been individually great IGLing no matter what role really. So yeah, he has to be leveling up. I mean, that was his worst performance in like, I, yeah. and we'll, I can't remember the last time. We'll have to see if it carries through till today, of course, but uh, that's going to be a problem for future us to talk about. Current us, we're going to have a little fun here because before we start week two, it's time to play a little game, and you guys at home get to play, too. It's agree to disagree. That's right. Everyone loves a good argument on the Internet, right? Nothing bad could possibly go wrong there. Everyone should have their, their thumbs, their up thumbs, and their down thumbs. We almost okay. Uh, now, <laughs> I'm going to read a statement, all right, and, and you use your thumbs, all right, to vote. Now, Twitch chat, you guys get to participate as well, in well, okay? So make sure you guys go ahead and do your thing. Spam yes or no for our next question. So here is the first one. 100 Thieves have been unlucky. They're stronger than last year. Agree to disagree, fellas. How do we feel? And the chat will pop up here in a little bit too. I mean, is there like a neither? I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just, I'll agree, just put them like sideways. but like, 
I'll like barely agree, at least so far. Barely agree? Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, I, I'll agree, yes, but uh, I don't, I'm not <laughs> thrilled that I agree. <laughs> it's a begrudging, like, I think this is the truth, of the mild truth. The mild <laughs> like, truth. Shazam, what about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to agree too, just slightly. Okay. Um, I think it is an improvement. Uh, I think Bustio for sure is an upgrade. But, uh, you know, we just haven't seen it then become more than, like, the sum of their units yet. So, mild truth. It feels wrong agreeing just because it's a first question, right? Like, we can't all just agree. But, unfortunately, I, I do. You kind of have to. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I kind of do agree. And I, I will say another thing is they've had some, some you know, go back to Coke. They've had some pretty insane draws. Right, they played Sentinels twice. They mm -hmm. played Leviathan. I think it's hard to say that Bustio isn't an improvement, and I think Cryo continues to look more comfortable. So yes, this may be cope. But Least coped up hundred thieves fan right here. <laughs> like, I'm like ha I mean, I'm, yeah, I guess it's I'm, like a halfway. It's like a mitting. <laughs> it's more like mitting result. There he goes, trying to do it. All right, uh, here's another one. Leviathan will finish stage one under .500. So below 0.500 record, meaning they will go negative on the record this season. How many matches do they play? Uh, nice. five, <laughs> five total. Five total. Five so total. they would have to be two and two and three, right? And I they think. play. They still play Energy G2 and Crew. So oh, I was. I, easy, I mean, yeah, easy to agree. Then. Easy to agree. They're like max two and three. Max two and three. Yeah. Okay, you yes. know what? I'm, I'm gonna, max two and three. I'm gonna believe. I'm gonna believe in Leviathan. Who are you okay, yeah, I don't give, know. Uh, you gotta explain the why. Because <laughs> the why? Listen, hope. All right, uh, uh, dreams. Uh, I don't know. Hope. Just whatever. Okay, I'm just hope. trying to. Act. <laughs> he obviously hasn't been betrayed enough and doesn't have no trust I have not. I have uh, not throughout been. life. Dude, I would love to. Be <laughs> <laughs> I would love to believe. I, I would. And I think when this roster got put together, we talked about it at the beginning. I was like, this team's gonna win a lot. It makes a lot of sense. Aspas is still Aspas. King is an absolute freak. Khan's going to do his thing, but it, it really doesn't feel like this is coming together. So and what you, you mentioned, oh, yeah, I, I agree. Okay, Unfortunately, agree. and I think when you think about who else they're playing, and there are no free wins. Are you agreeing as well, Shazam? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Um, okay. Stacked roster on paper, but they just seem so disconnected from each other in the games we've seen. Yeah. And the teams they're about to play, I just I don't see them figuring out in time. We gotta believe somehow. We gotta, we gotta put some hope out there. Okay, this last one's a good one. Oh my. <laughs> the 2021 <laughs> Sentinels can beat the 2024 Sentinels roster. Do you agree or disagree? I and I think we'll shave, save Shaz Shazam for the end there. Wait, what's like, hold on, just, okay. So Do like you them think at their 2021 peak, Sentinels Them at their peak beat? versus this team at their peak. Sure. It's like the idea. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, He's right there, so this is... Doug, take it away. <laughs> uh, let me think. Uh, you disagree? disagree. Oh, oh disagree. he's right there. This is entirely intended <laughs> to be inflammatory. <laughs> just, just so everyone knows. Okay. I'm trying to stir the pot. Why Here's it's a thing. failure. So he didn't give us one. At least Doug gave us something. I, th I think this... I'm using uh, my mind, GB. I, uh, I think Allow this, me to this use combo it. of Zekin and Tens right now are... The, one of the best duos we've we've ever seen in Valorant. I think Zekin sure, yeah. continues to get more confident. He continues to get more comfortable. Tens has found where he needs to fit in the grand scheme of things. John is calling out of his mind. I, I think the game has also changed so much from 2021 up until now. Where I think they, it, I think it would be a, a tough sell. It's kind of like does LeBron beat Jordan? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Uh, I Shazam. Think yes. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I'm gonna disagree as well. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's just the nature of sports and esports. You know, to win a tournament, you have to be the best team at that current time. Yeah. I don't think there's any pretending that the game has evolved. The yeah. intricacies matter more, and uh, that's what we were. We were the best team at that time period, and okay. now this current Sentinels is the best team at this time period in a much more evolved game. Okay. Ooh. Okay. okay. I mean, if we're doing the time period thing, that's an easy. Yeah. Then disagree. This, this what feels if, like a massive if, cop out. If we <laughs> read it. No, I mean, if we're well, if we're doing the time period thing, of course it's disagree. It's been yeah. three years. Like, yeah, you wow. think you that's know. a long time ago? Yeah, I, I mean, it's been, it's been a long yeah. time. Like they're a little bit better than the players three years ago. Okay. I mean, you have tens versus tens with three more years of experience. <laughs> yeah, like, that's tens, true. Ten players, tens. So <laughs> All right. that's an easy disagree. All right. That's that, well, there you have it, it, folks. You heard from the crew. Now uh, we only got a minute left, and we'll dive into some uh, predictions here. I, I think I know where where you guys are going, but here's a bigger one: If Hundred Thieves were to pull off the win. Where would that come from? Where do you guys, do you feel like it can be a 2-0 or have to be a 2-1? Like we're going to three of 103's pick up a dub or is this just going to be G2, 2-0 and that's it? 
I mean, it depends on the maps we're going to. I okay. I am okay. gonna go with Hundred Thieves barely. Oh, like, you're going with Hundred Thieves. The barely two one victory. Wow. Okay. Did not see that one coming. Shazam. Yo, I'm biased here, so. Con G contractually obligated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, G2, 2-0, and my cope is that, you know, if we lose, that, um, you know, we're implementing a new player. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we're working out correct. the kinks. All right, that works right. well for you, Doug. Uh, I think I, I agree with Wyatt. It goes down to maps uh, in a big way. I think if the maps lean a certain way where Cryo can continue to play in these comfortable roles, it'll go well. All right, well, you heard from the desk. Now it's time to get started for week two. G2 versus 100 Thieves. Sentinels versus Leviathan. VCT America starts right now. As he swings in, there's that first kill. A second one, easily done. Prowess it is the center. Oh, Green tag! Oh. Pacquiao with four! I think we're feeling very confident after this first week. Just confident. Don't really care about what they're doing, just focus on what we're doing. The forces EG to have to try to plant safely, but Valen's still around the corner. And Valen Valen is. And watches his back. You know, 100 Thieves is like good individually, but I think they're just gonna be a very like swarm team. Like they, they'll try to catch you off guard and stuff like that. They're very aggressive by nature. Easy pickings right now for Bang. And they're running circles around Sentinels right now. I see you first came on stage, so a little rough for him, but pretty good player. He was doing really good in um, the EG Academy team uh, last year. He can play a lot of roles. He's not a superstar. We're not expecting him to be. We're not expecting him to drop 40. We're not expecting him to drop 30. We want to play more as like a team and stuff like that, and he really helps us. Um, play our roles better. Riot Games Arena! We got ourselves an NA showdown. And your first team headed to the stage. Make some noise for 100 Thieves! Headed to the stage. Yeah, Give it up G2. for G2. I don't take over the world. We don't have to. We don't have to. Better forget about what you heard. Probably ain't true. This ain't go to. Cause you know it's G2. Can't be called a newcomer. We've been up for several summers. Seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, buy the bundle. Say you should buy the bundle. Barely time to buy the bundle. For this turn of Evans Rumble. Cause you know we Titans in this game. Ain't no contest. If we take it to the game, turn the Wild West. Make it what I claim, it's a wild threat. No rook we benefit, not check the mindset by the name of G2. How to take over the world, how we come through. You just follow in the herd, we don't have to. Better forget about what you heard, probably ain't true. This ain't go to, cause you know it's G2. How to take over the world. How we... Both of these teams looking for a big win here today for 100 Thieves. It'd be the first BO3 win that they've picked up in a long time. And G2 Esports does not want to be the ones to give it to them. And for G2, this is a team that's continuously trying to find their identity with the inclusion of Icy and Doug. We see our maps laid out. We're going to go to Bind, Split, and if necessary, we'll be taking a trip to the frozen tundra of Icebox. Yeah, I, I think my immediate response to that as I look at how things play out is there's a really good chance we're going to see Cryo on Controller. We're going to see Asuna on Rays, and that's going to be some of how they decide to approach this. And I think it, it's, a, it's a really tough situation to be in because Asuna's an insane race like his raise is, is really good I just wonder what that dynamic is because again if there's a lot of success dependent on cryo being comfortable and doing his thing it's gonna be hard for him to do that from a different role other than the go button 
Yeah, I agree. Um, but maybe it work, might work differently this time around with Asuna starting on Raze and Kraus okay. starting on a more restricted role. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes to third map, you know, he's playing the jet and he's ready to just like take the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Where, where do you see, I mean, with the series layout the way that it is, Wyatt, what are your thoughts regarding how this plays out for your prediction of 100 Thieves squeaking by a win? Split was really bad for them last week against Sen, but typically that's been one of their better maps that they've been able to rely on to get at least, I mean, they lose so many 2-1s, and a lot of the time Split is the map they won. Bind in one of those scenarios, that was a map they won against Sen and Kickoff. Like, I think this pool is actually pretty good for them. Like, all three maps are pretty good. This is reasonable for them to get a win. A G2 on, on Bind for sure. Not really idea what they're gonna have to, to bring here. Well, yeah. and, and I think that goes back to the conversation we were having earlier because there's a lot on Icy's shoulders here. Mm -hmm. Assuming he is gonna be playing Duelist, those are two maps where he's gonna have to be playing the race. He's gonna have to be creating space. Yes, it was a really small sample size last week and he created some space and got his ones, whatever, but he's gonna have to deliver here because there's a lot more on his shoulders. Yeah, indeed there is. And Agent Select's gonna be coming up here in a moment as we see what our players are gonna be looking to roll with here as we get ready for this series high pressure situations in and we say high pressure because it's a short stage <laughs> you yeah. only got a few games every single match yeah. every single map counts and matters here uh, so when you got those things that you need to fix those wrinkles that you need to iron you don't have a lot of time to do it yeah so. I, I think with Shanghai just being around the corner I think that's bad that's the aspiration and that's a goal for any of these teams so you're right GB I think there's a it's a little bit longer than kickoff, so maybe the stakes don't feel as high pressure, but the truth is every single week matters. And I think when you've got two rosters who are still trying to figure out their identity and think about how they want to develop themselves and how they want to build moving forward, I think this match, yes, it's just week two, matters a ton. We're still back on that uh, Gecko again. So we've seen him on that, as we were talking about before, the primary setup duty that we come to expect from him. Uh, and, you know, nothing really crazy as far as the agent draft is concerned. But I think this just does give us an opportunity, though, to continue to harp on this conversation we're going to see, right? Why between the two duelists? That is going to be a big point of this matchup. Icy's got a lot of work ahead of him. Against Asuna, who historically has been an incredible raise, but is like the player under the most community scrutiny at the moment. He has just become the lightning rod for all 100 Thieves fan frustration that he's just not oh. I mean, consistent enough oh, on that God. agent. Yeah, they're actually opting for the Yoru or G2. But I think on these maps, because you're going to be seeing Asuna duelist, duelist back to back. You, I mean, I know the fans are going to be looking at him to step up and go crazy, and I am too. And I know he can do it on the race. He's done it here plenty times before. Yeah, well, this is going to be awesome. Looking forward to this one. The Yoru pick's going to be fun to see how that one plays out. We'll, of course, see what Asuna can do here against a game and ready G2. But we're ready for map, map number one. Excuse me. Brings me great joy to send it to these two casters. It's Mimi and Ender. Thanks very much, GV. Yes, we have a good one on our hands, Christy. 100 Thieves, the supposed North American super team, yet to pick up a win with this new roster. Today's the make or break. It absolutely is, especially going into Bind, which is their map. This is a map that they beat Sentinels on back at kickoff 13-6. Looked very strong on that one. And it's against a G2 that just came off a big win themselves versus EG last week. And for 100 Thieves, even though they lost that debut, I think we saw some good things from this team. This is a squad that has been improving for quite a while, but has big expectations to live up to. Yes, they do. They had the, the group of death they had to work through. Still mixed opinions on whether they're going to be able to bounce back after that one. But now they're going against a crazy comp on the other side. I see coming in this second week on this G2 roster, busting up the solo Yoru. That's some, not something you see every day. No, pretty rare Bossing composition smoke. here. Malin ahead of his smoke to start here. Great flash setup, but it's just one for one. No one's over on that B side, though. 100 Thieves are taking it slow for the time being, but it's a massive stack from G2 over on this A side. 100 Thieves is not looking to commit just yet. Spike left back in market, just hunting down, seeing if they can find a pick or something like this. But G2 are going to be happy to play heavy A, push out of that shower's angle, and get a massive flank going over towards B. Bang going to reclear, peeks into three, and goes down. G2, gain advantage, it'll be a quick rotation towards B. Yeah, 100 Thieves need to heat up now over into that B site. Still not entirely sure where this Viper is. Most He's down. hanging out over on the A site for the time being, so they've got to clear out Octagon down towards Long, get this plant off, but without very much forward space. They're going to be playing primarily off site, I think, in this post plant. G2 have a great combo ready, the haunt and the flash. Make this retake a little easier, but 100 Thieves will fight into Elba. Getting active with it. 
the big engagement is going to come if 100 Thieves push back into CT. Now that the smoke has faded, they can look for their timing on that angle. You tight corner. Knife is up. He's got hits. A quick retreat. Odds now even in this one, and timer's starting to tick here. Two players towards elbow, one towards long. Leaf's trying to hold it halfway. He's just sticking onto this one. Swing just coming in time. It's one for one. Haunt up. It tags one. Cryo perfect on the swing. The last man standing is dealt with. 100 Thieves. An excellent post plant to start. That's how you want to kick it off right there. 100 Thieves come in with good post plant and two better to start it off, right? You got Cryo, who looked insane back on the jet last week. Now he's back in his smokes prison, but still finding the kills. And EU with the 3K. The last time he played against this guard core on G2 was in the Ascension Finals, losing that one three to one. But now a little chance to, to win back here on the main stage of ECT. And he struggled there. The, the bottom fragger in that series. The elimination, the end of his season. A chance for great revenge in this match. G2 are actually going for the massive stack again over towards this B site. Something that was very characteristic of G2 uh, during their whole kickoff run was their willingness to play heavy side and then full retake on the other. Their retakes looked very well drilled. This time again on the eco round, stacking five players ready for a full trap in hookah. But uh, 100 Thieves, they've got themselves going fully down towards long, so not trying to run into that. Molly on this exact. Smoke will go towards Tuka. It's a question of, does G2 flood? Flash ready to go. They'll hop on out. Haunt broken, but 100 Thieves dealing with this one very well. The traits are clean, and I see we'll find at least two in that one. So a bit of damage, but no round to come of it. Makes it a little messy. Still two Vandals carried over from 100 Thieves. That's good preview, though, I think, of how a lot of these rounds are going to play off, right? Because with all this utility 100 Thieves have for their set execs, the, the Dizzy flying over the top, you've got the, the Haunt that's going to be a difficult thing to break as well, the Mosh that fully clears tube. G2 are going to want to play inside their smokes and then push into them. They wait out that Dizzy timing, go for that fight. On the pistols, getting three kills, not too shabby. I think the big question in this game for 100 Thieves is how good is their on-the-fly ideas? How good is the adaptation? Because we've seen these set plays be good, even against the best teams in the world, like Sentinels, even though they're losing those matches. We saw their AXX look very strong in the past. They've got five rifles on this third round. No bonus, and Asuna going quickly, diving back over towards Showers. IC gets the first kill and still looking for more. Flashes himself into the fight, and the spike has not been planted. It is a mess here on the A site as G2 continue picking up kills. Bang, the only player to try and equalize from back in U-Haul, but he's all on his own, pushing forward. G2 only lose one member. Stunning hold from G2 there. Holding onto Showers control with the comp like this is so pivotal, because when you're flooding back in, you can have flashes from one side with players swinging from showers and from the other flooding back side. It's super effective. And let's talk comp for a second from G2. They're not playing a raise in the duo slot. They're playing this Yoru from Icy. He's getting those kills. And then that means they have another source of flashes on this side of the map. So you can keep fighting remain. forward in showers. They've also got KO flashes over towards B long. They can fight very actively on both sides of the map. Yeah, you saw in that retake, it was a combo of the haunt and that Yoru flash to win out. Early TP play, some Yoru shenanigans. No Actually ended up walking all the way into the corner, sounding like a clone. The TP's out the same. Under Thieves going fast into U-Haul. Trent has to retreat, but crucially, Shower's control again maintained for G2. I think 100 Thieves want to slow things down for the time being. They've got full control over U-Haul. Where do they want to go? Still hard to break through this once the wall yeah. goes down, then a second cycle of a brimstone smoke. 100 Thieves are taking their time as the rear clear comes into you. Great oh. shot out of bang. Just sits him down. And they'll continue playing slow off of that for 100 Thieves. Leaf, though, takes his opportunity and finds one. G2 still have a lot of utility to fight back in with the flashes once I hear that tap. 100 Thieves are waiting for the next cycle on this Viper Wall going down before it, at least faking a tap on this plant. Haunt over the back, doesn't see too much. They fake it on through, but G2 haven't gone for the swing yet. Notice Trent's position fully flashed up behind Triple and putting down volleys as clock continues to dwindle away. This delay is ridiculous. G2 swing at the perfect times, cut down a. for a double. Under Thieves will trade back, but they just can't get that plant Let under control. Trent's enemy. ahead of it, and they've taken care of the hit yet again. Lovely discipline by G2. And 100 Thieves just kind of getting like stuck that? in that area for too long. You know, they were hoping by waiting a little bit more time, maybe they threatened there could be a lurk going up into B, maybe we can TP over onto that side of the map. 
and G2 won't go for the hard stack on A, but they're not familiar with G2's game. G2 are very happy, just leave that one player over towards B, get this heavy stack, and win yet another fight. Heavy playing from backside. Spike down. One enemy remaining. Survivors rest. Yoruwalt, the first to come online here for G2. You can combo a lot of ideas with that one. It's gonna be a fight towards long though. Dizzy broken. Do they wanna pop through just a haunt? It's excellent. Here. Asuna is down. That's a big player to lose early. 400 thieves. Yeah, I see Chuck in a flash into the mix as well. Comboing up some utility there, and 100 Thieves haven't been able to get any space anywhere on the map. Jonah P doing a great job of locking down a short with the knife. Very hard for Bang to lurk up with his wall when the second he throws that up for a few too many seconds, you've got a knife shutting you down and no space to be had. Yoru gate, gate crash ready to go. Rotate over towards this B site. And that's the other beautiful thing about this Yoru, is you always have three players. You're playing with six players effectively, three on each side of the map, thanks to that teleport. Unless 100 Thieves can find these windows to attack when that ability times out. Right there. There's my buddy. Dizzy recovered for Bustio. Yeah, they're trying to fake a two-phase hit into this area of the map. In five seconds, they could threaten to Dizzy, but the entire time, we're actually working over into that B site. 2-2 two, two split for the time being, but G2 have not flinched. They've still got Valen and Trent here to hold. That's a great molly. Players towards long gonna be starting the first wave left. of utility in, and no one's even past the start line. Second wave initiated, 100 Thieves fight forward, Bustio for a double, it's 3v3, but I see straight it out. Trent biding his time swings through this hook and falls and his teammates gone too. Down to one. Spike planted. And he's going fast, Leaf. Welcome Backside. A viper world. spit in front of him. Molly and a tap on the spike. Leaf spamming, but Bang's gun's better. Yeah, Bang just follows those tracers straight through the pit. Gets the easy kill. That was a, a really solid round from 100 Thieves. We saw yet again G2 trying to flood out of every smoke, but 100 Thieves, their fundamentals were very strong. Even after losing that first player, they're holding every single smoke. So even a guy like Jonah stepping through that, players jumping through elbow as well. They shut it down. This gecko gives Busio so many options as an IGL, having those cycles back online every 10 seconds. It's the reason they made that call happen. And Thrash is now available. EU and Cryo not far off their old side. So they're going fast up into Buka here, jumping out and escaping is Jonah P. But they can reclaim that one relatively easily from inside Hookah, especially now that the smoke goes down. At 15 seconds of the round, getting two Brimstone smokes is a huge, huge win. But look how many alts G2 have. They're really comfortable to just flood retake off that utility. And you can combo things, right? Nightfall with Icy popping out. He's gotten ahead of Bang, I think. He is all the way out from showers. Toxins going up. But does he want to keep going? It feels like he's maybe leading a walk back over into the A site, so he doesn't want to keep hunting too far ahead. Orb and orb the position he's in right now is absolutely gorgeous. Thrash isn't done with you! It's a fake over into that B side for now. Thrash dealt with fast and whoa, look at that! Ultimate used, Asuna sort of abandoned on site. Valen swings and gets the kill. And we're now in a five on four situation from G2. You still have that lurk going on all the way back from short. You also have this gate crash. That's a fast rotation, Leaf activated. Bustio walking up, Spike it's planted. a game of timings. And Leaf misses his chance. Now a lot harder to make this retake happen. 4v4, still a Yoru to work with. It'll be a flash out You're from heaven. Here. Haunt front sight. Bustio will reply with a wave of his own, but Icy wins it over bank. Trade is good, and time is ticking. Trent flashed off the line yet again. Bustio ready to fight for more. The IGL gets a second. Now 2v2. Spike tapped for the first time. EU decayed, and they know that G2's off, but have to find it. They can't hear They're deafened. They can't One hear a damn thing, remaining. but Trent swings One at the right time. Bustio! He reigns it in! Next time, yeah. Finds the spray just in time. And the leader wins the round for 100 Thieves. The only way he's gonna win that one with the wide swing, taking down the planter first with the diffuser. Rather. And I mean, what a what a demonic round here. We've got ults on, ults used over towards this B site, because G2 really did think it was gonna be that B exact. But then Bustio going on the late lurk, dealing with the walk up from the other side. Somehow it all works out in the end. Running out of bullets, just heartbreaking. But even then, there was no time. Boy, you guys are nice. <laughs>
Busio getting the vibes up early. Big win condition for 100 Thieves. I got you. As G2's money's gonna be reset. Down to an eco here. Yet another round where G2 are heavy stacked over here. We've got a flash ready to go. Low buy, but actually Icy comes around the corner. No flash necessary. Maybe a second one just to get him out of that angle. G2 win another fight down long and find themselves with another numbers lead. And look at this setup in Hookah. All five players are for that is of 100 Thieves stuck out towards long. We'll try and make this hit happen. Bang is seized. The util is just so good from G2 to delay, but can they follow it up with a kill? Not quite. Wingman going in and gets his mission done. Plant wheel come down and bang. Ahead of where Trent expects him. It's a big kill in that one. Now the players flooding out are taken down. 100 Thieves again maintaining good control of this round. Just a matter of recovering that spike and closing the deal. Busio's got to do it himself at the very end. Four wings got cut down right at the last second. But 100 Thieves are showing some of that strength that, that we saw from them during kickoff on this map. G2, now a chance to call a timeout. Still got that Yoru ult to deal with if they want to. And I do have to shout out Icy because he's been able to find a couple of critical kills. I think last week was not putting up the numbers that you'd necessarily want from him, but it was also his first time on the stage here with G2. Yeah, I remember the hype for this guy. We didn't see him in officials, but he was scrimming with EG Reserve and people were talking about him dropping 30, dropping 40 in scrims. G2 saying the expectation is for him to be more of a team player, kind of meld in with Leaf being the second entry. But if he's having games like this, I mean, you need a guy like that to show up. Yeah, also, sorry, but I, I don't want a player that's just going to go get space. I feel like that's G2 propaganda. And really, this guy is going to be so sick, maybe needs a little bit of time, but I feel like they're just trying not to set expectations I think it's good propaganda for him, right? It's His good teammates propaganda. aren't going to be like, yeah, he's going to come out here and he's going to dominate. No, they're setting reasonable expectations. They're setting him up as a team player. And if he does more, that's amazing. And yeah. he'll probably evolve into it. I've got news. He's busting out the up in this round. Out of the timeout, that's going to be the call for him. And one of the benefits, I think, to, to taking a Yoru as opposed to a raise on this map, I think the Yoru TP a little bit more reliable in terms of that get out of jail free when you are going for some sure. op shots. Not as strong as a jet dash, perhaps, or a chamber, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility to go for these early lines. He's going to be posted up inside of showers, looking for that forward line quickly into this round. Change his mind. No operator. All that for nothing. No. Why do I even bother? <sighs> Haunt here. You. No flash to combo it. It doesn't catch anything. Actually, a C's ult committed. It's fast into the site. Asuna over the top rocket. Connects on to Trent. He's mollied from his own team. And there's still a player. A problem in the U-Haul. Hunter Thieves, though, winning every fight. Asuna, he's electric in the backside. That is 100 Thieves' classic A short exec. Double ults go flying in, and Asuna gets all the way back underneath heaven. Even after getting that first kill, G2 not anticipating him playing right on the outside of the smoke. I love that idea from him, especially right as G2 tried to flood into the site. I love these pace chains from 100 Thieves thus far. These guys have been throwing so many rounds where they're showing early pressure towards A main or towards B long with that first dizzy cycle, then doubling back, throwing these late round fakes. And now they change up, go for a very classic 100 Thieves hard hit and own. They absolutely do. One save for Jonah P. That was coming. They had an eco round the one before this, took the timeout, had some money for this one. Not looking so hot for the rest. And honestly, for G2, I, I was kind of liking the idea of taking the off and trying to fight more forward angles. Because it feels like the last few rounds, G2 have been heavy stacking one side of the map, playing for these trap ideas around Hookah, around B-Long, and then flooding out of smokes on the retake. They haven't been doing a lot of forward fighting. Apart from that round, they fought all the way down on B-Long. And Op could change that look somewhat, but I don't think that's really going to be the idea for G2 yet again. <laughs> Viper's pit committed towards a short, but 100 Thieves again going back towards this B-Long default. How do they want to work back into this Viper's pit on short? They do have the thrash. The one tool to really get you through that pit. Leaf's movement is going to be so important here, though, because he's got the judge, so he cannot Justice break thrash. Down. That's just not going to happen. So if he can somehow dodge out of his pit, get back into it, then he has a chance here. How fast right to the there. feet? I think they might want to wait. They've got two players in the shower scaling oh, yeah. up now. And now they can try to clear into the space. 
Old committed and actually broken. I think a little bit of spam coming through, through there to help out Leaf. He's stuck towards the corner. Avoids every piece of Util thus far. Still spam coming in, but at this point, Hunter Thieves have no way to get through. 40 seconds, they're not going into B. They're grouping up over in showers now with four players. Maybe some late scouting from EU down on A short, and they can wait. They're not even gonna have a second cycle of the thrash because it got shot down. For G2, this round is on Icy. A position, top truck, Asuna! What an entry! The Yoru's down. It's only a judge for Leaf. This round becomes so difficult as Bang fights forward for more, and Leaf continues to find himself in trouble. Cryo's watching it. No chance in hell to escape his pit. Trent's caught the walk up on the flank. Being scouted out, but wins it with the Stinger. Still four players left alive. He's running down to pick up a rifle. The clock's just simply too low, though. They know it's over. G2 called the save. It's looking a bit dire for G2. Remember how their, their two maps versus EG started off, by the way. They won all four pistols in their series. They won three out of the four bonus rounds they played. Like, G2 was running away with games from the start. This is the first time post kickoff that we've seen them just getting slammed from the get-go. Yeah, that second map against EG, 13 to three. That's yeah. what they're coming off into this map. Hasana has been ridiculous to them. He, he's a guy who's often criticized for some of the inconsistency he can find switching around different roles. But when he is on, 100 Thieves look legit. Icy's been sitting on this ult for so long now. G2, the rounds have been falling apart before they've even been getting those retakes underway. Maybe a chance to fight heavy down B long here. I'm seeing Icy, I'm seeing Trent playing with each other. Maybe another look at a flash combo with a haunt to pick someone off B long, but... 100 Thieves aren't geared up in that area. That's what they looked for. Icy did spend that flash, but they didn't see anything. And now I think 100 Thieves might want to scale back into that space, right? They're grouping up to maybe work down into long here, leaving Hookah abandoned. And maybe even reading that Icy, after throwing that flash, has leaned over into this A side of the map. Because whenever Icy's been playing on B, it's usually been playing up in that cubby, so the Dizzy would have seen that. Now we've actually got that Yoru coming back over into the B side. And 100 Thieves can get this take underway. Again, good molly to stall from G2. That'll cancel out this first wave. But Asuna, double satchels in the second wave there. of utility ready to set him up. Oh, pops. Icy's gonna go forward into this one. Scouts out information, but they're trying to get ahead of him. 100 Thieves fighting into the site. Asuna caught on the entry, and Icy now an issue behind them. They can't hear. That's a haunt committed as well as the Nightfall and Fallon fighting forward for three. The leader steps up when he's needed. It's a flawless round G2. I think Trent's got to be the hero in that round. First Come of all, on. he gets the kill on Asuna from atop the ticket, but that unlocked the Nightfall. Nightfall comes out immediately, and in the chaos of not being able to hear anything, being decayed, playing off of his own haunt there to get that kill. That was so nicely done from him. And you see that decay so critical. All these kills, body shots for yeah. Valen. But it's enough with that decay, with the haunt. Lovely combo. But that's the difference. Trent gets that first kill against Asuna, unlocks the ult. The previous rounds, Asuna's been getting into sight and always winning out in those openers. So a bit of a break for G2. Still two left in the half, a chance to salvage this to a 5-7. They showed this once before. Fake clone that's actually a real Yoru into the teleport, but he can always TP out. Flashbang. Nice shot by Jonah. Won't connect onto a kill though, but that's good damage. And but the Yoru in the KO retreat. Yeah, we just sent a Prowler down a short that saw absolutely nothing. So I think G2 are now grouping up to maybe fight more forward into B long. They are expecting the B lean now from 100 Thieves. And the few times 100 Thieves have gone B, it's been heavy through long every time. Jonah. Makes contact. And 100 Thieves are just gonna walk up on this one. Dizzy, ready to pop through the smoke. Icy is so blind. No, TP to get out of this one, but just in time, he arrives. Jonah still in the smoke, though. Maybe wants to make another go with this one. Icy has a flash to set him up if they want to go for this one. Ult committed. Fight oh. Two shot down before they can escape through the teleporter. It's gonna be an attempt for a pivot, though. This entire round would hinge on Bang. If Bang on A short was able to find some kind of a kill, maybe they have a chance. Cryo takes matters into his own hands, though. A 2v2 over on this B side of the map. Yeah, they've changed their mind now. 30 seconds Going left. Going back into B. Uto ready for the re-exec. 
or at least trying to show the heavy util here and then teleport back into that A site. A site is now weak. It is just the Viper. It is just Leaf for the time being. But there's Molly's to stall. There's only 15 seconds left, Mimi. The clock is going away. Wingman's going to go in there. And if, if G2 can get in front of this and take down Wingman, this round might just be over. No! Bang! Defends Wingman! The spike has been planted. 100 Thieves still have a chance. It's Cryo versus two. Getting active, finding his. He has a Molly to play with. Icy has nothing. The first tap now. Icy looking for half. He gets it to half. Another fake, and now the Molly. That's a lot of time. Icy's got to go on the offensive. But look at that. Cryo's backed all the way out. The clock is moving. The clock is moving. And Cryo now back on the hunt. Icy looking. Pulls off. No, he can't go for the full stick. Cryo waits him out. Icy can do nothing. The clock goes down, and Icy's got it. He wins the fight in just the nick of time. To keep G2 in this one. Only a few Last seconds away for G2. But the rookie steps up. Having the game that people expected from this prospect. One enemy down remaining. And, and that was a ridiculous round from 100 Thieves. Yeah. I, I think three or four times, re-changing their mind on where they want to commit towards B, towards A. And honestly, G2, in these last few rounds, I think he's been handling it very well. And a big part of that is this Yoru and how 22. fast those rotates can come with the gate crash. Icy's but coming in immediately. Out. He can fight showers early, get back over that B site quick. 100 Thieves, though, tempo change after these slow rounds, blitzing it over into the A site. No control of U-Haul just yeah. yet, and Icy oh, gets there. the opener. Or fighting coming, leave. One for one. Break spike on the planted. haunt. Trent can't hear a thing, and that spike timer begins to tick. 3v4. In comes the pit for Bang. He becomes the danger man in this round. How long can he stay up? How much can he do? Great he angle there yes, from ready. Bustio. Evens out the odds and buys a bit more time. He'll escape. No! Trent, at the last second, catches him through the smoke. Tap on the spike. Spam last coming in. Bang! Dead. They're so close to him, and Valen knocks him down. The Kitty showers. A chance oh! for revenge. Down to a 1v1. Trent has to hold this one halfway. The Prowler in his face. He hops off. The time is ticking. And he gets it done. He couldn't in Ascension. But sides. here with 100 Thieves, he bests G2. EU crushes that opening pistol round and clutches it up at the end. The Red Bull clutch for EU. And it starts off looking great, right? Icy gets that first kill, but then all the gets the pandemonium of this Viper's pit. AU repositioning from showers where he previously been seen to short, and getting those two kills was gorgeous. G2, they might have just kept themselves in this one, but it's still eight to four up for Hundred Thieves, heading into that defensive half. Before we get there, the analyst desk. Thank you so much for that, Mimi and Ender. Wow, great start here for 100 Thieves. 8-4 total. Uh, and really, I think, you know, the, the big point that kind of stuck out to me throughout that entire first half, you got to talk about Bang and Busio. We kind of harped on Busio a little bit at the pre-show, Wyatt. But Bang also joining him. The output's been insane from both of these two. Yeah, on, on that attack, Asuna was not really able to do much on a lot of the rounds. He was getting shut down. He was trying to get some of the space, but was just going down. And then it was Bang who was following up after that. And in a few crucial moments, was able to push forward, find a kill, and then give his team enough space to actually play off of off that. Last week, Bang was really struggling. He was needlessly dying a lot. He was struggling to hold areas of the map. And right now, he's completely making up for that. He looks to be in sick form. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the same story for Bustio. It feels like last week might have been an off day for him. Normally, you see him as like a really confident player, taking every fight you can get an opportunity for. And you see that in this first half. Uh, he's playing really well. Yeah, stats definitely speak for themselves. Bang had a lot of standout moments there as well. And I think, if anything, what this goes to show is that you know, you can't judge a book by its cover here. And even though the, the cover was looking a little a little tattered a bit, Wyatt, it does feel like, at the very least, 100 Thieves have found themselves, uh, you know, a good, good inroad here in this bind map.
Yeah, for sure. They give, this team has given Bang a long time to try to like flourish. They have a lot of belief in this guy, and I think they should. He's proven that he can be a legit player, but you know, being at this level is what they need him to do to get wins like this. Well, we'll see if Hunter Thieves can close it out and send it back over to your casters. Thanks very much to the desk. 100 Thieves, a great chance here. But G2, they were apt at those pistol Satchel. rounds in the game versus EG. Four for four. It's fast down short. Asuna satcheling forward, but Valen was not caught by the flash, and he shuts him down. Talk about, about a guy that was money last week. It was Valen. Now EU out of showers, and Valen also the one to take him down. G2 responding to that aggression perfectly. Bustio's got an angle, but he has to get ahead of that haunt. G2, two throw, it's Valen again. There's five players around Va Valen, and somehow he's still the guy that gets the kill. He's down on six HP. He's grabbing an ult orb. He's up to four out of eight on the brimstone. The and there's still time to play with. He's got a plant. He's clearly got two more kills left to him. Hell, if he gets over towards B long, he could get ult for round two. <laughs> I don't know if they'll orb max that much. There is a big flank coming here from Bang. And Leaf not watching the right angle turns. Oh boy, it gets awkward. But Leaf finds the timing, and now poor Cryo has too much to do. G2, big pistol round. Honestly, 100 Thieves kind of shocked me coming out of that. Playing so fast out the gate, but uh, G2 did a great job responding. Valen now five out of eight on that orb with the death. And again, like he was fully ISO'd in that first fight. Got that one, came in for the trades eventually. Down towards showers. Down and out. That is boning fantastically for a round three here. High chance Valen has the ult on line for that round. Let's go. Come on, guys. Valen again top of the scoreboard. This guy's the IGL, but he can do it all. Ustio? All right. Stunning shot there on Dicey with Boosty the was like, I'm an IGL too. He can do it too. <laughs> I can also do it all. If he gets another, that would truly be ridiculous. Wait, Kyle what? gets one with a classic. How's this happen? There's a flank coming quickly too. This round is suddenly dangerous for G2. Molly's to try and flush 100 Thieves out, but they're still chilling backside and they're biding their time for Bang to approach it. Bang's made it all the way up, peeking on through the smoke, but Leap is holding him. G2 back with the numbers advantage on the hunt. His low players corralled in backside. G2 mop it up. It was a 3v5 for them somehow. Yeah. Kind of a little scary in. there. Learned something. Never right. in doubt. Never in doubt. All the plan, because uh oh, Valen Valen. Is now. Yeah, that makes sense. Now unfortunately for they actually bought pretty heavy into that round. A lot of SMGs, so it's one real gun on Icy. And then the ult. But what even is a real gun? They can all get it done. We saw it with Boostio, we saw it with Cryo. 100 Thieves also buying a lot of sheriffs into that round. Together. Have quite a few players on half armor here. That they do. One Molly on Bang as well, so not perfect in the utility camp. Notice how 100 Thieves are gonna be playing this, this A site. Very deep positions held here. They've got tons of Mollies to be able to stall out of plant, but they're effectively getting full control of U-Haul. It really all comes down to this stall in EU. I think just off the hop there. Finds a kill through the smoke onto Trent, and Icy has no way to trade that one on out. It is attrition for 100 Thieves as they slowly flood back, and the util setup for Cryo is lovely, and they have dealt with this round. Poor Jonah, just a specter, and not a chance in this one. I like 100 Thieves' read there, playing heavy back sight. I think one of the things that G2 are going to be missing with a comp like this by not running the raise is you don't have the ability to dive up on top of that truck and fight into back sight easily. No, you have to TP right in front of it, and that's where you play out the round. So then these fights into back sight are a lot harder to win. 100 Thieves can play heavy for gunfights, can play heavy volley denial on the plant, and sort of force G2 over into them. That's probably gonna be a continual thing over towards A. With this Yoru as well, one thing it gives you is the ability to kind of send the player one side, fake out, apply more pressure than there is, and then immediately teleport back to the strong side and go for an execute. Yeah, what that means is I see look for a pick over in showers, and if you can't find it in your timing, if 100 Thieves don't creep up into him, he just snaps that TP, look at him, already back over to exec into B. Molly's traded both ways. Ooh. That dizzy gonna be unrecoverable. Yeah, that's a good spot. Valen has the ultimate as well. 
How close is he gonna use that? 100 Thieves, there is nowhere to run as Icy comes on through the wall, finds two, Bustio stuck, tethered underneath the tube. Yeah. And Valen takes him down. Everything about that execute was oh perfect. Play. The double flashes coming over the top from both Jonah and Icy combined with that haunt into the seas. Everything caught on. G2 has really cooked up some great combos with this composition. I think having the ability to have two different players who can bring that synergy with Trent's haunt to basically guarantee you're getting a scan every time gives you so many options in the mid round. There's just too many things to do if you're uh, an anchor and you only have one teammate with you, right? Like, who's breaking that haunt? Who's turning the flashes? Who's playing up close? A lot that you can lose track of in those tense moments. So though 100, 100 Thieves with a fairly comfortable lead, lead at the time being, can be holding on to some guns. They've got enough money to buy into the next. Cryo's not far off that ultimate either. Still, this map is lean, pretty attack-sided, and G2's comp, I think, gives him a lot of options on this attacking side. A comeback definitely becoming possible here. Yeah, so far in America, uh, Bind is the second most attack-sided map, right behind Lotus. Lotus sitting pretty at 58.5% over on attack, Bind 56%. Not so lopsided, but still, still something to keep track of in this. I think a lot of it is because I think a lot of our comps that we've been playing have been skewing a little bit more aggressive here in Americas, uh, a little bit more aggro pieces. We don't play much of the, the Cypher on this map. There's no real Sentinels being played over here. It's a lot of tools to fight, and basically every agent has some sort of mid-range piece of utility that's great at flushing out corners, assisting in a fight, whether it's flashes or scouting or whatnot. G2's comp definitely epitomizes that. And 100 Thieves going to be taking a timeout here from Six. Asuna, after a pretty good start with the entries in that first half, has been struggling a little bit more in these last 10 or so rounds. 100 Thieves needs to do anything possible to win a series. It has been a drought for this organization. I mean, this year, the group of death was unlucky, but it goes deeper than that. 11 months ago was the last time they won a VCT game. Regular season, stage one last year against Furia. May 13th. Yeah. That one was Yowza. I but they have they've won one other one game match, since. But it was uh, a BO1. Yeah, it was a BO1 Scars. Scars, a team in Red Bull home ground. Who are and they? if you haven't heard of them, that's because right now they are the second to last ranked team in Japan Challengers. Ooh. That's the best win, the only win that they have gotten since taking down Furia. And obviously G2, they've been close, right? They they, they, they won a map of find against Sentinels. But it has been tough for them. And it's been a drought for 100 Thieves fans. And it's actually a tech boss. That's fun. I love tech bosses. Famously. Yeah. We should have a techno pause. We could just they start blasting music. They did do that. They did do that. <laughs> Sorry, you, you just remind I, I'd love no, that. Great idea. Away. No one's ever thought of that. Yeah, my bad. Okay. I'll stop doing it. Well, you know, the nice thing is, 100 Thieves, you have so much more time to chat to each other. You know, ask, ask some, uh, some icebreaker size. I wasn't trying to do that, but, you know, you would get, get to know them. Get to know him out there. He's new on the roster. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll have to get to know him. What do you do in your free time? Play Valorant. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> all you need to know. player interview. <laughs> uh, just for a little update for you folks at home, client crash. They're going to have to hop everyone back on in. Shouldn't be too long. I think it's just one player who crashed out. Why would you out. say that? Why would you say that, Mimi? There shouldn't be it's too... only one player. Ooh. See, I see. I, I just get nervous. I get nervous. As soon as you tempt fate like that, oh, we are in trouble. All right, well, well, well we have the time. Talk to me a little bit more uh, about this, this Yoru comp, because we've seen some teams kind of early this year run it. Uh, Sentinels, for example, was kind of taking their time with this, but they played a different variation. This is something new for G2. Yeah, I mean, the, the solo Yoru is definitely surprising. I think a lot of times people will try to pair Yoru with another dive agent to make so much chaos on site that you can mask those teleports a little bit. I think what G2 are using instead is the double flashes the combos that are very nice with the haunt to give Icy some space. You've also got the clone, so actually flooding out into sight, especially because that clone is supported a lot on this attacking side. Thankfully, let's well, just a quick pause. We're back into things here. And for 100 Thieves, this is a pretty critical round. Their money's on a knife edge. They lose this round, we're likely looking at an even game. Yu is also just playing right on the outskirts of that knife over towards B-Long. Don't believe he was scouted out. 
There's a couple different options you can do with that early KO knife. We, we just saw one that was thrown right about there for full info on long, but you can also throw one that hits both Octagon and Hookah if you want to go for a split like this and save a little bit of utility if you don't get a ping. Less precise information, but if it doesn't see anything, very effective. But with this comp, you can have a combo like that, the Flash and the Prowler, and then you still have KO Flash Haunt or another Flash Prowler. Yeah. There's just so many layers to the combinations. And I think especially like after nerfs to stuff like the, the raised paint shells, it's way less reliable that you're actually getting kills off of those kinds of utility. So sure. having flashes to actually take active fights can be really potent. Poison's on. A little bit of pressure put towards A, but it's going to be a rotation back over towards B with this Brim still in trench towards Huka. Yeah, it's being read just a little bit here. Bustio moving back over towards this B side. G2 are going to need to go fast here. Good Molly to stop the flood, and Jonah P gets that opener. Haunt cleared off from EU, and a TP in from Cryo picks off the straggler in Leaf. Cryo's all the way back from behind, and he has the ult. The second they drop here, the second they look for the plant, he can unleash that ult. And here comes the flood off of it. Austin a backside, but EU finds time. a massive There's one. There's no time! 11 seconds! They need a plan now. Trent's found a big kill. There's still players on this site that need to be taken care of. Five seconds. Spike on the floor. 100 Thieves deals with it. Wow! Cryo monstrous on that flank there. Jumping straight through the teleport. Got a beautiful timing on Leaf, who dropped all the way from short over towards Huka. And that gives him the ult. It was so nice because the ult too, you'll see in the replay, it fully clears all of backside and creates a perfect little lane for his teammates to jump out of. They can go straight through from that. If anyone from Huka is watching those players flood, Cryo is going to be shooting them in the back off of the timing. That is a great on the fly call. Another little aggro piece here for Hunter Thieves. Thrash Roomba, fight down short. Austin gonna try and follow that one up, and he gets a kill onto Valon, and he'll retreat. Revenge from the pistol round. Asuna is back. And now Valon without the smokes. All G2 have is this Viper Wall to work down A short. Not an easy sight to play without those smokes, especially when you can't reliably take control over backside. They might try to scale all the way He's down next. into Yuhal and play it out from there, or just pop that Yor ult for the clear. Icy's gonna get asked to do a lot yet again. Flash towards front sight. Your ult will clear out. Lucio is there, Yuto. Good combo. Combo. Nice combo. Oh. Spam too, but Icy's blindsided by Cryo. Swinging back through from showers. Minute left on the clock, and Asuna picks up another. They're struggling to win out on this one, but you do get a critical kill. That's Asuna taken care of. And now back into a 2v3. They've got to wait for gas for Leaf if they want to have a chance of escaping out from here. 100 Thieves should know they're stuck over on short. There you have it. The wall up. They have a chance to make it on out, but look who's awaiting them over towards B. Because of Bang's position, 100 Thieves can leave two players left. over towards A. And Bang's got to be good for one here. It's a stinger, though. He needs it. And no one has a gun out. Leaf falls, but the trade is there. Trent in the clutch. We've seen this one before. Where are 15 you? seconds. Haunt to buy time to go for this plant, but a teleport comes in from behind. The pressure is on. The crunch is on. And EU finds the kill. The haunt and the spam. I've been so impressed with EU's utility throughout this match. It seems like every time he's throwing a haunt, they're getting value. And they don't have the same tools that G2 has to combo. Sure, you can throw a dizzy haunt, but most of the time those pieces of util are getting invested alone. And still, he's picking these great timings to get value off the spam. It's timings where no one can be shooting it, really, right there. It's while a planter's, a player's trying to plant the spike. And on defense, he was throwing it a lot as players were diving into the site, so that no one's looking behind them to spam that through. We got a lot of first kills anchoring over towards B that way. G2, walk up towards Huka. This is Asuna's responsibility, and he's pushed off the line, just a stinger in his hands. G2 might try to invest some ult here and win this round. Nightfall and the Null Command. Asuna taken very low, but Bang is still looking for it. With Icy down and more space Poison taken off. towards Octagon. I mean, if, if G2 can't push Bang out of this position, they're not getting into the site. No haunt available for now for G2. They're gonna have to Poison's wait off. up here and try and let that utility recharge. And at this point, I don't know if we're using ults. The buy is bad, the players are low. And walking back over into A now. Keep your eye on that player in U-Haul, Cryo has been lights out this game. 
All four players contacting into Cryo's line of sight. Out of charge. Spots the first. Damage taken from the Sheriff. Second swing. That is excellent support out of Bustio. 30 seconds. Cryo will continue to fight, but Leaf finds the right timing to take him down. 25 do seconds. This plant needs to be committed. And he follows up off Bustio's utility again. Every one of those peaks supported. 400 Thieves. Excellent stuff. Match point. 100 Thieves seem to have such a strong game plan and sort of a group buy-in of how they want to play the game, uh, especially on this map, which you know is good for them. Like playing full util solve, not rushing their fights. I don't feel when they know they have the opportunity to stall out and play off of their, their utility. Instead, waiting for the swing to come in from Asuna to fly through showers with the double satchels. It is always well coordinated on these fights to deny the spike being planted. And that was lacking for so long with this team. You think of old 100 Thieves, right? They get a man advantage situation, they bunker down, they play way too safe, they play scared. And now with this roster, it, it honestly reminds me a little bit of Sentinels with that buy-in, with that full commitment behind every piece of utility. When they have an advantage, they're not afraid to lose it. G2 now going to be the ones to call a timeout. Look, they've got some big ults here. Fade, KO, Viper, and they've got a buy, but they need five in a row here. And it just feels like A is a site they have not found an answer to. Because usually I would say, look, if you're just getting util denied on the plant over on A, Raze needs to dive for back site control, but they don't have that tool. Yeah, they've maybe got a Nightfall so they could get a little bit more creative with the teleports, but going for deep TPs is a very, very risky, very hard to support that effectively. And that's why almost always you'll see shorter TPs into truck, into U-Haul, as opposed to going all the way back towards heaven. The only time they can really push back site is when they have Yorwalk. We saw that get punished in the last round because everyone in main gets stalled. Yeah, they, they could change their smoke patterns because they've been doing really deep pipes and heaven smokes. Maybe do the double smoke on site and flash through on the fight. But that assumes the 100 Thieves isn't fighting you before that. Because right now, Asuna up on truck is ready to take a very early line down short. Map point, 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves very stacked over towards the A site, but now they can move EU back over here with the Viper Orb up in Hookah as well. It's very hard to take sand control because if you haven't flushed out, if you're if you're G2 and you haven't flushed out that area, well, then Raze could just throw paint shells through that space with a Molly combo, with the, the decay of the orb there too. You're just gonna get stalled out perma, so they need to come back into A short and force players away. Do you see the setup yet again? Fade Haunt ready to come over the top. A rocket for Asuna. Yeah. A swing out from Cryo. This is really tough to break through. But they're going for it. They need time and watch the teleport. They're going to Nightfall TP into backside. Is it committed in time? Can they get something for it? There he goes. Asuna's down. TP committed. No one can hear. Cryo is taken care of. That's a great start for G2. But now on the flank, a Viper leaping forward. Bang to try and pull this round back into control. Looks up on short, anticipates a player there, and Bustio finds one on the other edge of the pit. Two on four now, as 100 Thieves move back into the space. Wingman's on defuse. Wingman on. Bustio looking forward, but Leaf takes him down. This one's not gonna go to 100 Thieves. G2 are still in it. What a lovely combo there. Changing the TP pathing perfectly in time with their Nightfall commitment. And, ha and then just having great positioning in this post fight. Yeah, and you're not going to get a, a TP like that unless your Yoru scales through showers. That was so important that they split up 3-2 at the start there. And they finally got the backside fight. It's a great timeout call. Josh RT comes in with a plan. And that's the first time we've seen G2 really fighting for that space in showers. For the most part, it's been these strong side takes that haven't been working. But can you do it again when you don't have the Nightfall? Because now you've got to be comboing that with just flashes going into the back site. 100 Thieves, bad buy for them this time around. Although some ults to dip into if things get close. Yeah, Austin is Rocket. Could prove critical here. Oh, the TP is! Okay, this is fast from 100 Thieves, but Trent has dealt with it. That's massive from the man, but the trade comes through. Now, Bang has recovered a rifle. It's a 3v3, and they're into A. Cryo would be the hero here for 100 Thieves outside showers, going for that late wrap down short. This may come in faster than expected, but I think G2 are going to turn around because players could have pushed through on sand. They're ready for it. If he kills Jonah P, he has ult, but he Saw needs to win this fight. And it's gonna be tough. A Viper wall in front of him, Jonah holding with support. And now this round becomes all the more difficult. 
100 Thieves, no util to work with. Just walking into sight, Bustio. What a shot to find. Balance down, Leaf swinging into the front sight, but that smoke still delaying, and Bang is gone. Bustio was separated, and this should be nigh on impossible. Lucy will hop into the site and fall to his demise. Probably the most important round of the game coming up for G2 now. Still down three, but it's five versus five. 100 Thieves have four heavy hitting ults ready to go. 100 Thieves just showed a bit of a sand trap look I was talking about previously. So now G2 have unlocked a little bit more of the playbook, anticipating more of these ideas, but 100 Thieves have so much to work with now. Zix hitting another timeout. This is the round to close out if you're 100 Thieves. I feel like 100 Thieves, if they're coming into this one, the way they've gotten a, a, well, the two rounds were very different, but I think the last round was a little bit less accurate to how the next ones are gonna run. Just because it was a bad buy, 100 Thieves went for the very aggressive look. Sure. But I think they should hold on to Shower's control a little more heavily, right? The the Yoru TP pathing, it's very important that he gets control in Showers to send that one out on a line where it's not gonna be seen, not gonna be broken. And if 100 Thieves hold on to that space, you can still play very easy Molly Denial. You could actually play Heavy Octagon as well and look to fight around the extremity teleport lanes as opposed to fighting right down the center of the map on those two and sort of stop G2 from getting Showers control at all. The question now, what has the World Championship duo come up with in that timeout? What's the call to close this game? Zix and Bustio. The minds of 100 Thieves at work here. G2 are trying alternative strategies out here. They want a heavy open over towards B long. Scout out some control on that side of the map first. But Bang's gonna pit here, and with no Yoru wall, you don't have great tools to clear this. What on earth is this Viper wall that they threw? Is that just a one chunk Viper wall from Bang? Wild. Thrown probably from the, the corner there, not giving you a whole lot of space. But with the pit set up over towards B and, and uh, Orb, I suppose, in Hookah, cutting off that area with the time to be able to run over there. I imagine he didn't have time to run to A and set that up before getting back to B. Showers is weak for 100 Thieves. And G2 have a lurk posture. 100 Thieves are holding onto short so, so heavy here. They can scout it out with a dog here. Dog notes one player shooting that one away. And the question is, what is the timing on the showstopper? Can Leaf find anything from Showers? The answer is no, and now the smoke blocks off his view completely. Austin has a showstopper of his own. If he activates it at the right time, he can oh. close this map. But it's a rotation yet again, G2. Are they heading back towards B? The Nightfall committed. It'll only ping one. Yeah, sees one player. The rotates are gonna come in. 25 seconds on the clock, and Asuna through the teleporter. He gets his before being burned down, but it's still just 20 seconds. There's no control over long for G2. 17 seconds. They have to commit now, and 100 Thieves has arrived on this site. That ult is perfect. Cryo fries them on the entry. 10 seconds. There's no time. There's no chance. 100 Thieves. Map number one is there. Defenders win. Hundred Thieves looking very strong once again. <laughs> the on the fly, fly ideas, their reactions in the server. I loved those 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 side holds from them. Playing heavy backside, tons of utility to stall it out. Very well coordinated from them on their best map. And I think Cryo might be back. He had that crazy back, jet baby. game last week. He's playing well on the brimstone here. Promising signs for this Hundred Thieves roster. But honestly, G2 that comp had so many looks with the double flash, with the fade combo, but that makes it all the more impressive that 100 Thieves managed to adapt to a, a very different idea on this map and take the win. Yeah, I mean, ultimately at G2, we saw some of the limitations of them, especially on their A hits. They got creative with the ults, but it didn't seem like it was enough to come through in the end. Well, a big win there, 400 Thieves, a chance to get their first series win in 11 months if they can close out this map number two, which is coming up after this.
Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings. As he swings in, there's that first kill. A second one, easily done. The prowess that is the center. Oh. Green tag! Pacquiao with four! All right, gentlemen, right now we have Coach Zex. How are you doing? Doing well, how about you? I'm doing fantastic. Now, map one, I think the team played phenomenal overall, but I want to talk specifically about Busio's performance. It was a bit of a, like a comeback. I mean, he had more kills on this map than the previous series. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, yeah, I like to see that. <laughs> I mean, he had, a, he had a poor performance, I'll say, in our uh, last match, but you know, it's like, I think some things like he was in his own head about, but coming into this match, me and him had a long talk the night after then, and uh, 
we kind of set him straight a bit on like what his identity is, like how he plays the game and like who Busio is in the server, you know? And he's really annoying to deal with and we wanted to make sure that that's what he brought today. Yeah, well, what we saw was phenomenal. Honestly, can't wait to see what happens on map two. Good luck. Thank you. There you heard Coach Six there as he was breaking down Busio and how he performed that last game. 100 Thieves pick up a big win on their pick of Bind as we look to break it all down. Golden Boy alongside with Doug. We also got Wyatt and Shazam from G2 joining us here today. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. And Shazam, I want to start with you because this 100 Thieves team definitely felt like, uh, especially going from that first half to the second half, a team that just started to become more and more invigorated as that map continued forward. Yeah, honestly, 100 Thieves looked really good on their first half on attack. Uh, I don't know how many Yoris they played against on Bind, but it seemed like they knew what to do. Yeah. They knew the rounds to play them out, slow, wait out any possible TP stacks, um, and then decide to commit to something. On rounds they had ults, seems like they had a rehearsed execute they went straight into. And then there was uh, an example where G2 had a, a lot of ults on the board, and they threw a really good fake on the B site, yeah. and baited out all the, all the ults on that site, won the post plant, even though it came down to a clutch. Um, but it looked like they had a really solid game plan going into the attack. Yeah, I think they looked complete and and they look comfortable, right? Everybody was kind of contributing. Cryo looked way more comfortable in the controller role. Controller role, excuse me. He didn't feel like he was trying to do too much, and it just felt like they also continued to just believe in their plan, right? Asuna struggled uh, at the beginning of the game, and ultimately he continued to struggle. But they continued to set him up. They set him up off of the threshold. They gave him uh, ghost armor in the pistol round in the second half. Like they knew what their game plan was, and they stuck with it, and ultimately it panned out. Yeah, I mean, this was definitely like a team effort game when you're looking yeah. at the stats. No one was super standout. He was playing well. But for me, when we're talking about Cryo with the controller thing, a lot of it is coming down to what controllers he's playing. I just think his Astra, it's just not letting him be in positions to get kills. Um, and How would you fix it? I prefer that, like, hopefully, I'm hoping a split he's playing Omen. And I think he was better because he was playing Brimstone here. I just don't think the Astra's actually allowing him to play as he wants to when he's on the controller. And even, I mean, I don't want to get too far ahead, but like his util when he was playing on the Astro last week on Split, like he was stunning his own teammates. Like there was just miscoms, yeah, misplays. Yeah. And I think when, you, when you're playing Brim and you have the rifle skill that he does, you can just put down your smokes and focus on shooting people after that. Like you're going to be in a much better position. I think mean, it's just easier for him to do. Yeah, no, no, fair point, fair point. And, of course, we'll see, though, uh, how that plays out on map two. Though one player, though, that uh, Geek Heavy was uh, talking about earlier on was Bustio, who had a massive turnaround this game. And I think, you know, it kind of goes back to what you were saying, Shazam, right? Yeah. Last week could have very well been the outlier. It felt like we saw a completely different person on the server here today. Bustio's normal self, basically. Yeah, he's, he's an incredible player. I think that off days do happen. And you could see, like, straight into this match, he was um, performing like the usual Bustio we know. Yeah. And uh, that, that's an important piece of this team. Yeah, it has been. Has been for a very long time. I mean, he was he it was in the first half. He was back to getting his clutches and things like that, too. There was that one before, or it was a 4K that he had in the first half that really felt to me like, oh, okay, the Bustio of, of last week is gone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is the Bustio that we know. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, I, I, it's like in every, any team that he's in, right, he's always going to be that emotional leader. And I feel right. like when, you know, that person's down, it's very hard to dig yourself back out of that one. Uh, very difficult situation here. But let's, of course, get ready for map two as we dive into that one. I'm Look, it, could 100 Thieves walk out with the 2-0 for this one? I mean, this this feels like 100 Thieves are playing quite confident here. But now we're getting ready for split. And, well, you know, I mean, anything could happen there. And this isn't paper, but, <laughs> you know, like, what do you make of that one? Why? Heading into Split? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this ha Split has been good for them historically. It's just you have a bad taste in your mouth right now because they got smoked by Sen on it. But it's also a great map for Sen, and I really think that if they just do make one, I would, I'm would. i really hoping that Cryos is playing Omen on this map and not yeah. Astra. Because also when he's wanting to go for aggro plays on B, he was just getting caught out and needlessly dying a lot. And so was Bang. Whereas on Omen, you you know, we, you will have spots where you can have the opportunity to fight and actually TP away and not yeah, get yeah. caught if he's trying to get one kill and leave when he's anchoring. Yeah. So I, that is really one... It's a small change that I think would have a lot of importance on the result there. Well, let's actually see what the coach of G2 has to say as we get ready for map number two. Josh RT is joining me, coach of G2. Now, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm doing phenomenal. Uh, I got to ask you, so I... It, I think G2 had a, a great performance in that last map, but wh where do you think things kind of went a little bit off kilter? 
I would say on defense, we forgot a lot of our defensive protocols that we practice. Uh, we made some errors in rotations in um, position wise, like we were not in the right spots to deal with their um, executes. And on attack, um, we, we, since we fell in a hole like 4 8 first half, we didn't have enough of a round buffer to deal with what they did. Um, at the end, they just stacked the bolts and just closed the round out. So, yeah. Well, best of luck on map two. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And map two is where we're headed. It's going to be split. The battleground to decide whether or not 100 Thieves could walk away with a 2-0 win or would G2 force that map three on Icebox. But you heard Coach Josh RT there uh, say, Wyatt, how, you know, a lot of those defensive protocols, the things that they had prepped that they were ready for kind of just fell apart. That's something that simply just cannot happen because it feels like 100 Thieves, they've always been that drilled team. So even without Boosio on the roster. So they got to fix that going into map two. Yeah, they'll be starting on attack. Last time we saw G2 playing on this map, they are running the like breach, cypher, raise, kind of like trap setup comp on defense. So that's also a comp that Hunter Thieves used to play a ton and one they really favored. So I was surprised last week when we saw them switch to a non sentinel comp because they've always loved cypher so much. And if we're looking right here, 100 Thieves are sticking with the same thing. Cryo is going to be on Astra and G2. Yeah, they're playing the comp I was just talking about, which is obnoxious to play against on defense because you're going to get pinged with a Cypher cam or break a trip, and then you're getting stunned, and then all of a sudden you're getting naded and you're dead, and it sucks. Because your <laughs> utility kills people in Project A. They lie. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that breach comp, I know you have to be extremely proactive, whether it's on defense or offense. Um, they're kind of the ones that want to set the pace. And uh, from what I know, they're very rehearsed on this map, so hopefully Ooh. we'll see some good things. Yeah, I think they're undefeated on it in America's for G2. They're very comfortable in the role. I think I see there were a lot of questions about how he'd do, given that we had only seen him for one weekend last weekend. He looked comfortable on the Yoru. He was taking entries. He was winning gunfights, and I think it'll be interesting to see. Again, there's a lot being put on his shoulders as a solo duelist. All right, folks. Well, this is it. Let's get ready for map number two, shall we? We're going to send it back over to Mimi and Ender for the call. Thanks very much, GB. Yes, G2, three for O on the map thus far this year. For them, this is a comfortable territory, but the guy I'm watching in the server has got to be icy. He was great on the Yoru last map, a slower debut in their first game. He's on the raise here, and he has a comp that really enables that raise player to do a lot. Yeah, we've got full support here. This isn't any of your sky, you know, flash for info, no. This is go, go, go with that breach to support icy. And as we dive into this game, it'll be a big one for G2 to get back into the swing of things. I can already tell you, Icy's got the support of his team on this pissed round. He bought the light armor. He got a ghost chucked over to him. It is all on his back from the get-go. Little raid boss action to start. And him and Jonah B holding hands. See that most Happy for that. Here. Instantly, the camera just being broken in main. I don't even think we've got to see really anything off of that one. But G2 aren't going to be playing their hand too early in this one. They've got the Viper all over towards B that he can try to lurk in front of. Not going to be allowed this time around, though, with Asuna playing up in front of it. And instead, just looking for an eventual 2-3 split over into this A site. Getting quickly up into mail to force a player back and maybe pull a rotation off of that A site. While these three players start to creep up. Oh, boy! Wow, Leaf gets through there somehow! I have no idea how he's lived through that endeavor. That is wild. There's no smoke on heaven right now either because G2 went really quickly on that timing. Still get the plant off, no problem. Breach is still sitting down in sewers. There'll be a very late reflank. We'll keep tabs on that as 100 Thieves are going to set up for this set retake. Cage. Haunt, dizzy smokes. They have the whole nine yards to invest into this one. But can they go quick enough before Jonah P arrives? Molly, that'll be the first stage of stall, but Asuna is past it, decayed, and taking a lot of damage. This refight is excellent out of G2. Here comes Jonah, up the ropes, waiting for his timing. Saw the back of a player walking through, and we're in astral form. Cryo falls, Jonah gets his and dips away. Now it's a fight on the site, and G2 is winning them all. One that wingman remaining. will be shut down Whoa. in just a moment as G2 cleanly deal with that post plant. There we go. That's the G2 pistol round that we saw just last week. Four out of four on those. Lost two players at the end. Makes it a little bit less pretty, but pretty good all around. Yeah, I love the protocols on that one. Jonah and Icy initially setting up towards mid, and then some great layers to that one. The second the Util's coming in, they're refighting towards elbow. Isolate this first skill, and that sets G2 up to really close this one out. 
I will say they, they found a bit of a gap over here on this A site. Notice the 100 Thieves is not running a Sentinel in their comp. They usually put their info over on the A side of the map. So when none of that got used against them early, they really found ways to abuse this space. 100 Thieves looking for a bit of a trap in mid on this round on the eco. Very similar stuff to what we saw from 100 Thieves playing this map back during kickoff. That's a cute little trap play there. The Dizzy and the Haunt coming up on the rope for two players, but no one was there to receive. Going to be going for the safe plant back here. Good wrap for main as an option on this one. Leaf two, you'll see, just holding on the extremities. He's not looking for the flank this time around. Instead, waiting as 100 Thieves get a flank of their own going on, trying to flush out whoever that's going to be. They definitely weren't expecting Jonah P to be the uh, the rewrap in the last game. You never expect the breach flank. No. I really like Leaf on the Sentinel roll thus far. Feels like it was really made for him. He just has such incredible mechanics when he's anchoring alone. And when you put him on those lurks, he's a player who has such a good idea of the timings of this game that he's really taking the perfect opportunities. Also, I imagine adding a second voice to help Fallon out as well. Very vocal player when he's given the chance. Yeah, he, and he was always, even when he was the star duelist on C9, he, he would always flex over, play the odd Sky here, the odd Viper on Bind. Never really too much of the, the Sentinel, as a matter of fact, but it certainly suits his play style. Can rely on him a ton. That's good for Jonah to actually sneak that kill onto EU instead of letting him die to spike. One more orb towards that breach ultimate. So now this is really where uh, I want to see if G2, their read, is just to continue abusing this A site. Uh, again, what I was sort of hinting at is that because 100 Thieves don't have a Sentinel, their setup is almost always to put both their Fade and their Gecko over on A side. And they can do things like use the, the Prowlers to scout out down uh, down ramp whenever that, that wall goes up, whenever any you know lurking cages are thrown. That's usually how they deal with it. And then you'll see a lot more pairing up of both Trent and Icy to play util combos in mid or in male. It's always Cryo on, on his own over towards that, that B site. I meant Asuna and Bang. Nade for Asuna, ready to go in mid. Got a lot of bodies walking up here from G2. Picks a good timing on that one. Spam gets a little shaky, but he finds oh, his mark it. and the nade as well, helping out in that one. So positive trade for 100 Thieves. A lot of pressure on Cryo. Players coming out of heaven through main. He finds the first and covers it over into Spike a second down. somehow. Trent left all on his own. The spike stuck in hell. Lovely to see those kind of rounds out of Cryo cells. This guy was struggling a little bit the last time we saw him play Astra and 100 Thieves debuted series for stage one. Talk about people that are left on their own. Karayo is isolated all the time on this B site, and he loves playing up close like we just saw. Trent has managed to recover the spike, though. Planting slightly off the normal line just to try and get something done. Actually dodging all the utility. He wants to go for a kill. Peeks on out of the smoke, gets his. But the 3v1, it's just not going to happen. So clean round there for 100 Thieves, dealing with the mid-aggression with some nice util of their own. Very characteristic, yeah. Again, Cryo likes to get in front of the Viper setup over on this side. And they can sort of play with that information that he has to set up more aggressive re-clears on other areas of the map. Yeah, and this kind of like new wave of Viper on the map with this lurk wall over towards B that you're, you're always seeing teams throw, it forces you to be a lot more proactive in your B play. 100%. So how do G2 come back into here? I still think uh, threatening lurks up A short, very effective, taking the fight into mid. Also clearly getting the job done for Icy. Yeah, I mean, Asuna just swinging ahead of that. I don't think he even had any use of the support, was just trying to take a fight off the rip. And again, that, that happens a lot with how 100 Thieves play. All their proactive fighting tools are going to be over towards A. Yeah, they've got the, the Astra that can assist globally as they just walk into the line once again. Yeah, no util use for the second time here, and EU stunned up, naded off, he's trapped towards heaven. G2 have a completely open A site. There is a flank coming in, that's the, the only thing to really keep a mind on, but there's also a trip directly in Bang's path, Nonsense. so that's going to be sold out just as soon as he runs into that one. Honestly, 100 Thieves might be well served to go for a save here, like Bang just play on this, on this trip, look for maybe an exit kill or two, because this round is not looking winnable. And that's just what happens when you have two players walk out, take a forward line, get shut down easily. Round dissipates. 
Playing no Sentinel on this map can, can be quite a challenge on your defense. Yeah. And, and basically the way 100 Thieves would usually get around this, let's let's pretend they have sure. five players alive, is they're not just walking out into the open and taking their ones. What their comp really thrives with is this mid-range utility. Everyone's got a piece of utility to be able to fight with. So what they'll do instead is very aggressively re-clear down into ramp, through mid, back into B main, these sorts of areas, and they'll try to catch G2 or any team they're playing against before the exec comes into play. That's where 100 Thieves' power is, not the sitting and playing the slow game. But G2 have found a lot of really good timings here, just contacting up towards A, finding these pops. When you go for that fast execute and there's not enough players there to flood retake, it honestly makes these rounds really difficult for 100 Thieves to win. It's exactly the right idea for 100 Thieves to go for, or rather for G2 to go for. 100 Thieves is going to be the ones to call a timeout this time around. Maybe looking for some options to deal with that ramp area after getting beaten there a couple of times now. But really, when we saw them in kickoff, they didn't have a ton of different looks. It was almost always going to be the Gecko fade over towards A. They had some aggressive looks with Asuna. They had one B main fight, but for the most part, it was trap plays around mid and then U tilt to scout out and make sure they couldn't get lurked on on the A side of the map. The question around this comp, I think a lot of the times, is going to fall on Asuna. Because when you lack that Sentinel, like you're talking about with the necessity for proactivity. Austin is the guy who's getting set up for that. And if he's not winning out on the duels, finding them that space, then this comp on defense really starts to fall apart. Yeah, they've got to they've got to find ways to lock down both mid and ramp. That's where it's getting beaten up. That's where Austin lost that fight just in the previous round to Icy and everything sort of spiraled out of control after that one. G2 not looking to overplay their hand, I think, at the start here. Maybe uh, utilizing the, the breach stun, the fault line, to get up ramp as an option or fight against early aggression. Because you can see, Asuna wants to fight into A lobby. When they've got these three players ready to go, that's usually some kind of a push play. And it's with two of their only rifles in this round. Cam insta broken yet again. Here comes this forward fight, but Leaf, he's out of there. Yeah, G2 have to react instantly. Either into B or up through mid, but the Viper Orb in mid has stalled them down. So instead, they creep back over, they take some space into B, but Cryo's still hanging out backside, playing a really nasty off angle on the walkout. He has won the hero rifles in this round. How much can he get done? Good, at his feet, Molly, but he's found the gap in it. Still healthy enough to get something done. Here comes the clearance. Cryo wins the first, but the trade is instant from G2. And now Bang is going to have that same task ahead of him, and he falls as well. G2, Colleen House, only Asuna left. And he's getting overwhelmed from so many different angles. A flash in his face, a pit in front of him, only 45 HP. Tried to go for the silent drop, failed it. This clears back into mail. Jonah's not giving him a fight. G2 are fully dialed in here. Making Asuna waste away time and eventually step on out of this one. He might honestly want to fight here. Two players have alt online. He gets a kill, dies. Sure. Could have the raise rocket for the next. You can build ideas around that. Wouldn't be too bad. They've also got the money because it was just a few rifles they carried over from the previous round. I like the read on that one, Mimi, and he's gonna have his opportunity. So they're running here through spawn, swinging around the line, he gets his two, and escapes with the rifle to boot. Lovely stuff there at the end, but still another round where G2 take initial pressure, then find the other site, contact in, and find the perfect timing for one of these executes. Great mid rounding from G2. Had to deal with uh, some some problems here, right? Cryo, the util not quite connecting on him. Also, G2 flooded out onto the site. They used, uh, uh, sorry, 100 Thieves flooded onto the site because they used G2's own Viper Wall against them to get them jumping out of heaven. That's how they had so many bodies on the ground so quickly. It looks like coming out of the, the timeout too, yet another look. We've got a bit of aggression towards B main. The Rays and the Fade teamed up there with an early smoke to lay claim to that space. And again, G2 tested with this opening of rounds, those slight pivots in the play of 100 Thieves. What is their decision? It looks like it's going to be to re-clear and re-fight into that B main space, where really Austin has just been left on his own. G2 take control towards B main. Again, you see that Viper Wall is forcing 100 Thieves to be proactive towards B. They have to have a player looking ahead of this one. And Austin is going to get flashed up. Also being committed, they're going fast it's a into this hit, but it was never a full commitment. Rocket is there, Asuna 
has committed it and Cryo is the only man standing on the site. G2 not looking for him, not hunting for him. The flash is straight from Busio towards Spike heaven. This is all a. falling to pieces. Leaf still left. His spike on the floor. Jonah far away, but he's ahead of the eagle. Finds one. Foolish. Has to look for more in this one. It's swing towards heaven, though. It's too well timed. Left. And 100 Thieves have this one on lock. Bit of a fumble there from G2. Yeah, I mean, it was a cool idea from G2. Again, no sent to you till on A means that if you really sell a fake well, and they did two ultimates, they get that opening kill. It looked completely like G2 was executing into that B site. But all it takes is, is one guy in outer space. Rocket Man Cryo setting up stars on the other side of the map. Didn't actually rotate off that A site. 30 seconds left. So he's able to, to cause and cause havoc. You got Busio throwing dizzies through that smoke in heaven with Cryo calling the rotates over. The magic trick just didn't work out for G2. Molly haunted to him, eh? There. Asta can't fight any deeper off of that. I do like these adjustments from 100 Thieves ever since the timeout. Really showing yeah. more forward utility on this A side. Asuna looking for an actual fight up close on that wall. But after not scouting anything out, they're actually rotating back maybe for a bit of a B re-clear. Maybe seeking out into mid here. They've got a Prowler, they've got a Seize. Boosty has the ultimate, so if they really wanted to send it on a, on a bit of a gamble call, they could. He was actually playing just on the rope there. So if he sees anyone step into vents, I think that's the call, is just let that thrash rip. Cage triggered. Leaf has kept two players on this site. That's going to be main with the thrash to set up Crashy. <laughs> Sorry, Cryo. Toxin screen down. And it does detain onto one, but that thrash is going to be lost. Still 35 seconds for G2 to work with G2, this lurk. G2 have no time here to get back into the site. Left. They don't have heavy exec ults. They don't have a lot this of utility. This everything, and Tread loses it. Leaf picks one up on the other side, but B is our focus, and Cryo has fallen. He needed to do more. I think There's 15 seconds left. Oh They're ulting over to A. Valen got the ultimate, now onto the A side, but EU finds the kill. 10 seconds on the clock, and EU gets them both. He's won the round. The rest of G2, too far away. Another overcook there. M Mimi, how many rounds on the previous map did G2 lose on time? Like, it was it was a handful. Yeah. They lost a lot on their attacking side, and especially against ults. They would wait into these rounds, and then 15 seconds left, there's still two, three ults ready to shut them down. And I feel like that's the, like, the duality of how Va Valen likes to call his attack sides, right? He loves playing sides really slow. Throws a lot of fake rounds into the mix. But sometimes it's a little <laughs> overcomplicated and falls apart. Yeah. I mean, to their credit, like, you don't expect EU to still be on A getting sure. two kills off of the Omenal. But that is twice in a row that 100 Thieves kept a yep. player A and win because of it. Yep, 100 Thieves. Very clear their ideas of how to play the map, not over-rotating, and that's an important thing with the comp they're running. They've got to trust their sides of the map and still oh, hold their God. ground against any sort of late lurks or late pivots. And again, you talk about old 100 Thieves, you feel like sometimes they lost that trust, right? Over-rotating, over-committing to help out their teammates. Losing themselves in those mid-rounds. This team, not so much. Two players in mid, maybe considering a fight off that orb drop, but they elect against it and said just another Molly to stall. 100 Thieves just wanted to show all that pressure, still not giving up the line. You notice if they give up this line into mid, all of a sudden there's a cross that can get over into heaven, and that would put a lot of pressure back on EU oh, there, Cryo. Second round in a row he's played there and gotten value out of it. Paranoia towards heaven. Bang has escaped. All this util is for pretty much nothing, as he's going to actually not be able to get anything out of this one, and neither does Asuna all on Cryo. How's he got three? Seems impossible that he's done so much. Use deafened 30 seconds at least left. one of those players. Spike planted. And Busio's just sprinting. He knows that Jonah can't hear, so he's just running up behind him. So astute from right the leader, there. Valen, though. This is one piece, has to shoot the second. He'll teleport towards me. Shadows traveling. 1v2. He hears both players drop into backside. Wingman available for the defuse. 
He's gonna stick this Valen has to fight. Finds an opportunity, but misses out. 100 Thieves tie the game. Cryo is just a man for 100 Thieves. Locking down that B-Site completely. I mean, three kills from the spot he went in, was in was just completely ridiculous. One big disadvantage of this solo breach comp is normally when you're going for your B-Hits with the more usual Sky comps or double initiator stuff like 100 Thieves have, you have some kind of dog to clear those close angles. The breach flash is the easiest flash to turn in the game. If you don't have a perfect stun, if you don't have perfect timing, those off angles can be incredibly punishing. And you can also play right up close and personal with that smoke. Shut it down completely. Timeout does come in for G2. And we saw back on Bind that there were some pretty big adjustments to how they played their attacking half. Back on Bind, it was about looking for that deep dive onto the A site. Now, well, that's really the question. They have not found a good answer against Cryo on this B site. He's always found a couple of kills, no matter what it's really been over there. But do they want to fight into that? Do they want to overload utility into the common places he's going to be playing? Or just avoid it entirely? Raise Rocket for IC this round. Chance to maybe do something a little bit quicker if they want to. See players posturing towards mid. Yeah, they don't want to do anything too fast with that Rocket, I don't think. We're just looking to, you know, go into a bit of a default here. One, two, two. Scout out what it is, 100 Thieves, and what their difference is going to be. Because usually if you see any piece of Fade or Gecko utility not in A main, you instantly know 100 Thieves have made a big pivot. But 100 Thieves really haven't. They're just back to the default they've been going for every single round. It is nothing too shocking for them. Early into the round, though, we're already down a Breach Flash. Paranoia and Faultline not used just yet. So if they want to accelerate or try working back into A, that could be their best bet now. 100 Thieves wants to uh -oh. fight through the smoke. They pick their timing Blinded. to perfection. And that is a big player for G2 to lose. It's all about those reclears. Bringing down their Viper Orb. Looking for the fight, yeah. leaving the space entirely. He's now, how do you force into a site? It's got to be Icy with that ultimate. Look at Bustio. Off angle. angle. Do they have the discipline to clear him? Icy's he not looking. Know. The rookie has exploded him, and Musio's activated. One for one! Icy's oh, killed his teammate! Oh. That's your IGL, man. What are you doing? 2v4 now. And he is flooded into backside. He's ahead of this one. Icy's just not looking, and Trent's in trouble. A swing for me. What a blunder. It is just a disaster round for G2 coming out of that timeout. Bustio is just giving him the business from across the stage. He's just laughing at him. <laughs> Thanks for the help, Icy. Uh, I mean, it starts off with that great little play, bringing down the Viper Orb with two players behind it. Then Icy with the ult remaining. doesn't clear close flower box. So Bustio gets the kill. Then it's a team kill. Eo uses all the chaos of it to sneak into elbow somehow. G2 won four out of the five first rounds in this game. And since then, 100 Thieves has won four in a row of their own. They have control of this defense on split. Flash in, forces Bang off the line, and G2 are trying to go into mail fast, but good flood utility, just dominating that space. The spam, the pain shells, G2 are falling apart. Lovely stuff there. 100 Thieves, the util combo is perfection, and I was ready to maybe even fight for more. I mean, you can just see the confidence in these guys. One enemy remaining. G2 need to find some way to hit the brakes and sort of re recover themselves. And maybe it's with Trent. What is he doing? A one on four brought to one on one. Low HP, but Trent cannot carry it through. So damn close. Okay, that's a little way to reset yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's still not around. It's, it's not around, floor. but it gets a little hype going. Can't say no to that after a couple of disasters. One enemy remaining. Good lord, I mean, dude's on one HP. Ridiculous. One enemy remaining. 
remaining. He still got it. Clearly. It was never in doubt. Oh, 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 Busio's not, not, not talking anymore. Not oh, anymore. curious. <laughs> what changed, Mimi? I mean, the, the little spark. <laughs> we almost lost that. Big round here for G2, though. If they end this half 8 4, could be signing their own death warrant in this series. 100 Thieves are dominating both mains, though. Trent on his own. Saw what the Sheriff does. He stepped into this space in B main. Two players there, and Thrash was just picked up for Busio. The orb unlocked that ability for him. G2 have recognized that mid is a gap, though. They can refight into this one. A nasty off angle for EU. Spam to try and bait that no one's in this position. Can he find a shot? It's such perfection out of EU. Oh, it's a nasty trap. The star comes in, the haunt, the thrash to go on down. And look but at the somehow, whoa, Jonah one. just blasted him! Mid thrash, bang on the other side, though, gets two kills, peeking out of his ult. Back in it with the shorty, and he has three! Back up the ramp, looking for Jonah, and a hundred thieves destroy G2. The layers of that round are stunning. It's a Last trap play towards B Heaven. G2 is pushed back into Heaven, and there's two different players ping-ponging to fight towards B. Oh. Then a Viper Pit in the late round. How, how do you get past them? Absolutely. I mean, the only kill they got was, was an aftershock was on a player <laughs> stuck in an ult. <laughs> like, what on earth? A ridiculous angle for that, but I mean, bang. Low on bullets, switching over the shorty inside the pit is just perfection. I don't get the blood pumping. Another fight for 100 Thieves. Are they gonna commit deeper on this one? Just getting that off for Asuna. Another round where they dominate main space. They've got B main, they've got A main. The only gap is into vents. And this could be massive. G2 finally looking to seize space early on. Yet Asuna remains ready for it. 100 Thieves doing a good job of policing this again. Asuna and EU, there. They might want to refight into main here. Off Bustio's contact, they can pop an ult and punish. But that'll activate the mid lark. That means the pressure this round is on EU and Asuna on their respective sides. Ult committed, Asuna in. Two kills, fouls. Now here comes the vent players. Up the vent. EU ready for it. Here's those players gunning around the corner. Asuna gets his three. Flawless. And Valen in main. He's cut down to eight, two, four. Hundred Thieves are owning. Switching sides. 100 Thieves just turned up the heat here from round 6 to 12, winning out in their entirety. I mean, Austin uh, just playing on that corner there, sees the gun, and doesn't even hesitate to snap that showstopper. Another beautiful round for 100 Thieves, a flawless to end the half here. G2 have a lot of work if they want to try and rally in this second keep this series in control. But for now, we got Geek Heavy with a special guest. Amazing performance by 100 Thieves so far. Joining right now, we have former 100 Thieves player, Will. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Yes, the arena is hyped. I want to know, what what, you, what has your experience been like? Uh, just, because uh, you, you used to play with uh, Hasso and Bang, so how do you think they're doing so far? I mean, I think they're playing phenomenal right now. Yeah? I'm mostly happy for Sean because everyone's been giving them so much shit. So I love that Sean's frying them right now. Ooh, ooh, okay. All right, well, I mean, they, what do you think they need to do to kind of push this and just like end this right here on the second map? Well, I think they're just, they're having a lot of fun on the stage and I love that because I think vibes is really important in this game. And if they just keep doing that, I mean, they're frying everyone. They just keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Will everybody? We're not. We're not done yet. I'm, I like honestly. What, what I want to know what has been like one of the highlights though that you've seen on map two. Highlights, sir. Yeah. Well, one of the highlights that you've seen from from your former team. Well, I mean, literally that last round where yeah. Sean got three in the pit. Um, I, Cryo's had massive rounds, honestly, on B main. I don't know how he's getting three every single time, but he's doing that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's toss things back. Give it up for 100 Thieves. <laughs> Will 100 Thieves close out? That's the question now. They're up 8-4 at the half. From 100 Thieves' will to will 100 Thieves. The great turnaround. 100 Thieves looked so good at the end of that half. Mimi's booing me. Okay, understood.
<sighs> G2 though, I mean, that was just brutal what happened to them. I mean, they had they had a couple of nice rounds, right? With the Sheriff coming in hot. Seven rounds in a row. Off of Trent, though. but yeah. It is not a great look. They need to win this pistol. It's a fast hit towards A from 100 Thieves. Dizzy into the site. Asna has all the space. G2 will play a set retake. Oh, giving that spike over to Asna. Get that showstopper online. Delayed slightly, but still enough time to get this down before the smoke fades. That's it. And 100 Thieves are going to be looking to play heavy for ramp control into heaven late in the round. G2 have to be ready for it. That refight is everything. But for now, it's the fight on the site. Paranoia for Valen. But more Util to stall. Finally, the commitment will come out. Here's the fight towards ramp. That's one. Two for one trades thus far. Icy into the backside of site. But there's still a lurk here. They were raiding for the re-clear. G2 is ready. A tap on the spike. Both players trying to fight up through the ramp. But that spike not being stuck just yet. And a chance for Eo if he can win that duel. But it's just not happening. G2. If they've got one thing, it's pistol rounds. That is very true. Trent's position there coming up really nicely for them. And that, that's a whole idea, right? They're going so heavy through screens, they know that ramp was going to be a weakness. So leaving Trent to be the ultimate rat, right? Like, think of all his teammates, how much of any fights happened up in heaven before he went for that swing. But it's exactly what they needed, that late control. As 100 Thieves try to heat in here, not expecting the Viper to be stuck down in vent, and that keeps G2 very well in this. I feel like we've seen a lot of teams take great learnings from how good Sentinels has gotten at this map, with setting more protocols to punish that ramp re clear that is so prevalent in those A posts. Yeah, especially when 100 Thieves are going to be running with the, the Gecko, so you yeah. can wingman plant and very quickly be fighting forward for screen space, going back into ramps. 100 Thieves can get very mobile with it. Poison. It's going to be a look towards B here for 100 Thieves. And they're walking into a judge. I see. Finds one and picks Spike only one. Down, Great movement B. by Asuna to get ahead. A little stylish from him to get around the corner. Now he's got the judge. Bad news is no satchels, so it's hard to actually make use of that one on the attack. Poison's off. Actually, Cryo's hung out over in B main with the spike. Or what are 100 Thieves thinking? Because they've got a couple of options. They could try to play this round out and split into that B site. The other option is, and they're going for it, rotate back into A and try to sell a hit so well that you maybe get a plant in. They do not have that much time to work with. The spike actually looks like it's going to join towards A. Just going to be very late here for Cryo. Here comes the commitment. Coming up, taken out. New Sentinel player leave. He's got all the util to stall this one out. Rotates. Cage trigger. Coming in for at least one Deploy player. Destroyed. He's just flying around in his cages. And he picks the right angle. Good fight on to Bang, and the trip has Ten caught off Asuna. It's only two kills picked up, but the rest of the team has arrived just in time to likely win this retake. Still, EU could be dangerous here. But the Molly is there, very thorough player from standing. G2. That's a judge, though. The paranoia, he's too close for it to matter, but that's a great teleport out of Valon. The second angle, the difference maker. DP might have saved G2 there. Got a little close at the end, but still using the mollies, doing everything by the books on that retake to keep it as clean as possible. Now, one thing G2 are going to struggle with a little bit on this defense is getting forward information, right? Because they don't have a sky, you don't have a dog, you don't have a flash, anything like that. They've got a ton of passive info, right? The Cypher setup towards A is always going to have that on lock. But we may see more lines like Icy just took, where he stepped all the way up into B main, where they try to take a little bit more space with their bodies and get a forward posting so that they have a little bit more control, a little bit more understanding where 100 Thieves are trying to play on the map. Yeah, another big strength is Stomp. You were mentioning this in the pregame. The trap plays. You can set up with a camera, have a stun, have a nade. Yeah. There's a lot of different options there, which means that 100 Thieves has, have to be really careful about how they scale. Yeah, even just an idea like they've got right now, there's a fault line ready to go, thrown into B main. Icy gets up into that space. 100 Thieves, though, are seizing mid-control. Judge around the smoke, but it's not going to get anything done. Okay, Zosma awesome finds enough. a quick two. Yeah, big entries out of that, man. Hundred Thieves just making G2 sweat now. You get two kills, you just freeze. Nobody move. You know G2 are gonna have to walk into you. Icy's gonna have to do something. He can't just sit backside B. 
too many angles he could be approached from. But 100 Thieves is heading back towards the A site. This is the strong side. Viper utility. Trip wires. There's still a chance for this round to get dangerous. If they find two players here on this A site, though, they've got enough time to potentially wrap back through heaven into mid. We'll see what they end up doing here. Paint shell to try and clear close site for utility, but still a trip left on site. As now they go back up into ramps, they're aware of a Viper on this site. Are they going for the read at the same time? G2 getting some rotates of their own back here. And holding off against the CT push. Left. Trent is alone on site. And that's where 100 Thieves is heading. Asuna satcheling forward. Trent full HP. Bustio. His wingman is going to get the spike down as Asuna wins the fight. And he gets a fourth as well. Flawless round, 100 Thieves. That was nice. Going back up into heaven puts the pressure on G2. And then the flood out onto site with wingman with the satchels. Beautiful. 100, th uh, 100 Thieves. Only remaining player of that initial roster, Asuna. He has been with this team since the beginning. He's got a beard now. He's been on the squad so long. <laughs> they actually haven't let him shave. Yeah. They wanted to show the passage of time. But he's still good on the race. Yeah, now he's got a showstopper too. G2, not much in the way of cash. So they've just got bodies up in B heaven. It's been a bit of a brawl for mid the last couple of rounds. 100 Thieves putting a lot of players in there themselves. And G2 are trying to get ahead of that this time. It'll be an aftershock. I imagine just comboed with the paranoia here to fight back in. So that's only a hundred thieves. Activate that trap play. But for now, they're just biding their time for re-aggression. Yeah, you can't really move out of a trap play like this on a, on a low buy. You, you gamble it all on hundred thieves stepping into you. But now, I think 100 Thieves have sussed it out because you saw a very forward camera place. That's unnatural from Leaf. And then also, you're not scouting anything in vents. Hold on. We, we're anticipating it's a bit of a B stack, something like this. Maybe stepping back into B main to try and clear that out. Bang has a 1v1 ramp here. Leaf just a frenzy to work with. Good clearance. Uh, and now they've got to go back into A. You don't know if it's just the one player. That B side is open. Even the wall to guarantee this plant. Ooh, check out where Austin is playing. Boost himself up on that box there with the coverage given by the wall. That is going to be a nasty angle to play off of once this wall comes down. Oh, no! Jonah P steps through the smoke for one. But it was only one. Three left alive. But they've recovered two weapons here. A guardian and a rifle. E on the off angle. Lines up a double. I, I think just a little a high, high low. low there. That is lovely stuff for 100 Thieves. Yeah, Valen got a kill over on the flank that Bang was holding out for, but uh, yeah, that high-low, a little bit too much to deal with. That's not one you run into all too often. The little things this series for 100 Thieves Cover have been really out. good. Setting up these high-lows when they have time. Yeah. Going for these kind of individual reclears in the late round. Doing a great job of comboing their utility. This is a team that has grown so much from the failure that was their last season. Look, the, the Copers are going to keep coping. 100 Thieves had the group of death, but honestly, they had so many but close the, the games. The Cope is real. The Cope is real. I, I, I believe in it. They Sentinels twice in a row. Yeah, that's brutal. Close games both times. Very true. Now doing very well up against a G2 that just dismantled EG last week. Like, there's no two ways to put that. Austin, <laughs> I was just staring at him for a second there. Uh, Asuna, what are you looking at? Time out for G2 now. Last chance to recover in this series. G2 have a showstopper to work with. This could be a good round to implement some kind of a trap play with the Cypher camp if they wanted to go for that. Would limit their tools over on the A site if that was the call to come on in. But I think with the way that 100 Thieves have sort of been slowly taking space in rounds, a little bit less committed of a defense from G would, G2 would be nice where they don't have to play so far forward, play for a little trap idea, especially around mid. That's usually where 100 Thieves have been trying to exploit. But you can never anticipate 100 Thieves are just going to run back and do the same thing coming out of a timeout. It's the hard read to that's a turtle. You only have one line. <laughs> I've got one bit. <laughs> Swing round here. Rocket for Icy. He has had a tough second map. 
And he's six and eleven thus far for the rookie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's had a tough few maps so far on the debut. Right now, just set up for a big fight in B main. Do they snap it off the rip? There they do. Ult goes in, but does he clear the close box? They're all around the wall, and he can't get it. That's another ult this game where 100 Thieves just tuck themselves into a close corner and get that easy kill. He got a kill last time. Yeah? It was on Valen, but... <laughs> Maybe you can't do that to him. <laughs> All right. 4v4 now. That was a big trade to pick up for Valen. Oh, look, 100 Thieves have been stalled out for now. G2 comfortable to maybe move back over towards that A side of the map, but Hunter Thieves are really just freezing. They've still got their showstopper. They've still got Thrash. This B side is going to be hard to hold on to. I'm honestly a little surprised G2s are still committing bodies into this area of the map. No charges. With Cryo dead, there's no smokes to... Walk up into mid here, so it just has to be a contact from 100 Thieves. Yeah, we're looking to split hit. Thrash in from B main. Showstopper can blitz it up into heaven if they want. And these players are going to fall. Valen goes down. Still, backside is Trent holding on to that line. He gets his one and a second. He's keeping it together from on site, but now it has been cleared. Wingman plants a spike. Leaf joined. By his teammate now, both through spawn. EU up top to hold this one. Great first kill. Leaf trades onto one. He's low on HP. They're both one shot. And Leaf gets it done. He's still a star. That is heroic from Leaf. I mean, 2v2. How did G2 get in there? They've got no utility whatsoever, but Leaf takes his time approaching that fight. Stays cool in the moment when it was about to run away from 100 Thieves. Again, a swing round right there if they had lost that one. But the combined efforts of Trent on site getting two kills, where there's a Thrash coming his way, a showstopper, tons of utility. And the close from Leaf is good. A pivot in the setup now from G2. Cypher Util over towards the B side of the map, and another aggressive look into A main. It's gonna be a brawl. Nade, stunt, both sides investing a lot of utility, but it's dead even. Space taken for 100 these G2 retreating to site, but Asuna up ramp. Heaven is a gap. It's just Trent underneath those ropes holding on to it for now. 100 Thieves have been very measured in their approaches, right? They're not instantly blitzing into the site after they okay. see those two players. There could still be a heavy stack with players in heaven. Now the rotate has come through. That is true. Trent gets the first kill from on the rope. Icy gets another. And 100 Thieves have been as good as stalled out here on ramp. Low HP on Trent. And not a lot of util to try and re-hit here for 100 Thieves. They'll be revealed by the Cypher ult, but they're going to take into the site. Can they hold against this retake? Can EU make a play? He'll hold towards spawn a smoke. He'll block off a bang. Can't risk planting open. They won't have a heaven rewrap this round, or at least not when it's planted for it. Pit unlocked, but G2. They actually just spent so much into elbow, didn't scale off of it. Wrapping around the other way instead. Playing on the outskirts of the pit, but Cryo is here waiting for the approach. It's not planted for him up in heaven, but with EU around the corner, they have brought it to two on two. Back and forth, Bang goes, scouting out the players and taking them down. It's another for 100 Thieves. How do they win that? In a man disadvantage, trapped on the site, they make it work. The movement from Bang in that round was expert. Isolating fights in the pit. Baiting time for Cryo, ping-ponging back and forth, lovely stuff. And he only gets the Viper's Pit because of the plant yes. going in. That was critical. G2 also remaining. used both their Paranoia and their Fault Line into Elbow, Heading but right as one. the pit was cast, they didn't scale off of that. They walked in dry to every single fight they took. And 100 Thieves, all those little offlines playing around the pit. It was just too much to deal with. A pit of their own for G2 in mid. Three stingers for G2. There's a Nightfall, there's Util combos. Not gonna catch on to Trent. But if they wanted to get back in, they could. Refight A main. G2 going for this one. They hold the Util for now. Just walk up off the smoke. The goal to get you on his ult. That's a success. They'll back away now. On bind, they were in the same position, and they chose 
to save, to not play out this round and give 100 Thieves 12. Even with ults available, even with a couple of guns. This time though, it's way more equalized. 5v5 still, clock is dwindling. And 100 Thieves are about to walk into that Cypher cam on B. They're, they're biting on this fake. Three players over at the A site now. The Viper's still trapped in mid. It's only one trip and a player in heaven to stop this B hit. But that's okay. G2 want to play retake with the Rolling Thunder. Jonah P is in position back towards Alley. And our thieves aren't in just yet. The clock is moving, Mimi. 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. If G2 timed this flood retake right, they could win the round. Wingman planting this spike. Jonah committing his ult. Here comes the fight. Leaf wins the first. A second as well from the Cypher towards heaven. Spike has to come down. Another flash, another fight. Bang has too much to deal with. And G2, oh. shut it down. <laughs> Leaf can't well, hear a thing. It doesn't matter. Oh, well. Giggling his way through that one. Four kills on the round, and it was the perfect setup. Playing for the ult at the start of the round. Leaf playing off it to perfection. They needed to win that round, and they do. A full force of all their money invested. Yep. Two alts remaining. put into that one. Flawless. Put it out, they try. Empty boots. Yeah. And they make it happen. All good, all good. All good. 100 Thieves. Gonna wash that one off. That was one of the two rifles that G2 had in the hands of Leaf. Used to perfection there. And Thieves called their own timeout. And really, what has changed since G2 called their timeout, since they started winning? It's been tons of early round aggression. G2 have been dominating the orbs to play for those critical ultimates. They've been fighting forward with both their, their breach and their raise utility. 100 Thieves need to adjust to that, whether that's going to be quickly exploiting space in mid and looking to split away from the main that G2 is attacking, or looking to fast refight into an A or B main. <laughs> Remember this 100 Thieves comp has so much fantastic utility for, for clearing away those close corners. The Astra Stars, the Fade Util, everyone's got a little piece. And they can be putting that together as we speak right now. Bit of bad news. Another tech pause. Womp womp. It could be worse. Could be. Last time it was quick. <laughs> That it was. I mean, and we're in a bit of a nail biter right here because G2 get that round win. They've won two of the last three. They can start building back here. They've got decent money now as well. So even if they are to lose one here in the next round, they've got enough to keep going. Even when 100 Thieves get up to 12. The player who's kept them in it that's really impressed me has been Trent this series. The guy's always been such a rock for this team. Critical in those clutches, flexible when he's playing the Viper, when he's playing the Initiator, he's world-class on both roles. And he's been stepping up big time, particularly as an anchor in this second oh, half yeah. for G2. What is it with G2 and their Smokes players? Last week it was Valen topping the charge every single game. Now it's, now it's Trent having a good one here over on Split. They've certainly been stepping up. Busio's in the flow state, <laughs> meditating during the tech pause. I've never seen the, the head warmer before. <laughs> that's 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 new technology from Boosie. Getting out of his chair too. Straighten himself out. I think you lose most of your heat through the head, so. Is that true? It's all the brain power, you oh, know, just the hands. neurons firing. Yeah, tough being in So actual. much energy escaping. We're back into it though. 11 to eight. Critical rounds here for G2. If they want to push us to Icebox. 100 Thieves. Taking a little bit out of the, the C9 split pay, playbook. An anti-ramps dive set up from them with the breach over on that side, or G2 rather. But that's not where 100 Thieves are attacking. 100 Thieves, once again, taking space over into mid. Trying to blow that up after the last few rounds where so, so much about forward space being taken. I like that G2 have slowed it down just a little bit. And, and again, are just waiting for a straggler pushing up AA main to run into the crosshair of Icy before ripping that stun. You did good. Dizzy picked back up in mid. One of the big strengths of this Hunter Three Thieves comp, being able to take early space, get that second cycle, and go for an execute. I don't know. I think this setup is going to cook 100 Thieves. They've spent 40 seconds just looking at this green goo in mid. Yeah, they could get up into vents, but there's two players from G2 playing very heavy for ramp. They've got a bit of a crossfire, and Jonah P from Sight can support so well. A fall line on that line would be deadly. Here comes Icy, walking down. Man whips his shot. That is a huge opportunity squandered, and now the whole door no has fallen apart. Jonah dies 
do. They've got three players on that side of the map, and Bang disposes of them. Hunter Thieves is going back towards B. Trying to spin a hero. He needs to do it again. Cryo in main. The timing is brutal. Oh, it's it's just a dismantlement by Hunter and Thieves every time it missed. Planted. And the only opportunity left, really, is heroics. Last Leaf player standing. Looking the wrong. No one has been looking <laughs> at the player they died from. It's so brutal. Because again, like, G2 setup, if given a little bit more time Match to cook, point. would be deadly. But then, as soon as they rotated out of their positions, like, as soon as Jonah P got on the move, that was when the lurk timing went up from Bang. That was when, all of a sudden, Valen is abandoning Icy. The timings that round were so unfortunate. And you also have to criticize Icy. When you have that setup, when you have the Breach ready to go, walking up there, need to win that fight. It all fell apart. They're heavy over towards A. One more! So One more! That's my son right there. Fucking... Bustio's got his map down. One more, as a matter of fact. And again, it's just working into mid. Again, a, a similar setup from G2. Slightly different, oh. fighting on a more forward line this time around. Poison's off. A main fight. Bang has to contain. It'll be a stun from Jonah, but he's ahead of this fight. Not enough. Fallon takes him down. Finally an opener for G2. G2, a little bit cautious that mid could be a gap for them now. Again, that vent space taken, so they rotate back through heaven, over towards B. Good stall here from G2, and they're ready to fight off it. Trent is playing on the ground. Leaf out on Raptors, and that blank doesn't hit anything. Leaf's good there for the kill. A paranoid to assist, wingman falls. Hundred Thieves have been stalled out, and Leaf has gotten the job done. All on EU now in a 1v2. Spike to be recovered. Jonah towards heaven. He's being watched. The plant being committed. Damage from EU. 40 seconds for the man to work with both players together. But he's repositioned. He can't plant the spike. There is a fault line. If he goes to this, he's getting stunned. Good left. position away. One and he gets in front for the kill. 1v1. I see! He can't do it! He wins the clutch! the man into his chair. A ridiculous clutch for me, you baiting out the utility perfectly. And what a way to close. After losing to this core in the Ascension Finals, losing out on his chance in America's community, he bests them in their, in their debut match here in stage one. Oh man, it is not every day that in America you get an EU chance. Boy, boy did he <laughs> get it at the finish there. A phenomenal round from him, almost slipped away. But he kept it together for 100 Thieves to get their first win. And it just, for 100 Thieves fans, it has got to feel so good. It has been a long time since they have had a team who is a true contender. But this roster, man, they're just getting started. well to 100 Thieves for getting the first win in Omega Group. They did the impossible. Alpha has been taken down. And the very impressive way. Yeah. First series they've won since lifting the trophy here in Los Angeles. And you see that smile back on Boosty's face. I feel like, look, today we got to see a lot, again, of their set ideas, their execs, their retakes on Bind especially were very nice. But the clutch factor on some of these individuals, like, we, we saw it all day from, from Cryo, you know? <laughs> we, we saw it, we saw it from Boost, we saw Massa, and then it's just EU at the finish, too. Could not be slowed down. Even in that first map, so many clutches from that guy. Yeah. Cryo as well. Looking at him. I mean, finding his mark. Played two maps on smokes, performed on both of them. Yeah, we forgot about this round from EU, where there's an ult into the back of his sight, and he gets two kills somehow solo anchoring. The amount of rounds 100 Thieves won because of, you know, beating G2 on the clock, or one player anchoring a site getting two or three completely unfathomable kills, was just simply enough for, for this split to look very good. Yeah, really good stuff out of them. G2, a tough loss here. Honestly, I think a lot of their ideas, how they like to call this map, like these really slow rounds got taken advantage of, like you were talking about, losing to time.
Their attacking side in particular on both maps ran into some issues. Trying out some new things, the solo Yoru over on Bind. Definitely got exposed some of the some of the weaknesses that can arise in a combat. Yeah, but I like those ideas we were I seeing in that first map. I think this G2 squad, you really can't count them out. They're really playing against 100 Thieves, who looks like one of our top teams here. But that's all for us. We have Geek Heavy standing by on the stage for your Verizon post-match interview. EU, that clutch was wild. That was insane. Now, this was your first win since you're coming from Ascension. I got to ask you, how do you feel? I mean, it feels good, man, especially yeah. with all the fans here. Yes, amazing, yes. <laughs> and, and, and like Ender said, it's not every day you get an EU chant, which is just phenomenal. So I got to ask you this, though. Uh, overall, what do you think it was specifically that just made you all just like seal the deal with this? Uh, I feel like we were putting in a lot of practice yeah. this week, especially considering we went into the Sentinels match and didn't win. So this week we focused super hard on practice. We made sure that the things that were tough in the Sentinels match, we worked on harder. And I think it showed in this match. Yeah, well, it, honestly, it really, it really did. It really, really did. It was amazing. Uh, but next match is against C9. C9. Now you all, you all went up against them in, in an off-season um, uh, event. Uh, what do you think uh, is going to happen this time? What, what, what's the team synergy feeling like? What's the energy like going into this? Now, they have two new players yeah. in Rooney and Moose. Yeah, we scrimmed them a little bit so far, to be honest. And I always like the C9 guys. I'm good friends with Vanity, so we scrimmed them a little bit. We're looking to practice really hard against every opponent. We're preparing really hard. So it doesn't really matter who we're playing. We're looking to win, whether it's Sentinels, C9, G2. We're going to try to win every game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I know you said you're friends with them, but this isn't about making friends, yeah. EU. This isn't about making friends. It's about winning, and I think y'all are doing a phenomenal, amazing job so far, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Of course, man. Give it up for EU one more time, everybody, for 100 Thieves. All right, we're going to toss things over to a quick break, but we'll be back at the desk. Gives you wings.
Step into the ring. The way that Leviathan lost to Cloud9 was like tough, you know, it was kind of weird because I felt like they threw a little bit. I think at this point we're pretty much at rock bottom. Settles a bit stuck. Cryo with the oh, Saucy with the oh, filthy oh, shot. He gets three on the round. He's getting the rest. Can Bang do it on his own? A 1v2? No! He's an animal! Contra Sentinels. I think they have players very intelligent. Então, eles jogam bem o básico, eles jogam bastante juntos e eles têm muita skill individual também. Eles acabaram de ganhar o Master, então tô bem animado para jogar contra eles. I mean, of course, they are a great team, you know, they have good players. Uh, you always need to be careful. And with Aspas, if his team is not doing that great, it's still Aspas. They can win this game. Aspas not even holding back right now. It's here to try to stop them, oh but Aspas is pushing towards the spawn. Aspas. More range battle, headshot onto Zeppa, the third row, the Ultra, and the Ivar Power! Minhas coisas individuais, eu vou continuar me esforçando e fazer a preparação de sempre para essa partida. Mano, good luck. Boa sorte, mobinha. Welcome back to week two of VCT Americas and our second match of the day. It's going to be an interesting one. We got the Sentinels, your Madrid winners, going up against Leviathan. Of course, I'm Golden Boy, the current guy yelling at you right now. We got Doug, we got Shazam from G2, we got Wyatt over there, Tambien. This is going to be a good one. I'm excited for this only because if Leviathan pull off the win, oh gosh, the internet's going to blow up. And I'm all about that, the carnage. Because the Omega Group gets a second win or because of... <laughs> or because of <laughs> just in general, just like to see the world burn, you know, kind of like Joker. Uh, but you know what, though? I I'm looking forward to this. We're going to get into this one. And, and, and Sentinel's coming off of a massive win at Masters Madrid. They came through with the trophy flex. This is a squad that looked good against 100 Thieves 2-0. And 100 Thieves were looking actually quite fantastic in their matchup, Shazam. So if anything, this just continues to show that Sentinels are no joke right now, bro. Yeah, they're looking like the most dynamic, best team right now, and Leviathan's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> good point. Hey, hey that, with truer words, truer words have been spoken. Uh, why? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm supposed to follow that? Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe I mean, I go. agree. Yeah, Do your job. I could let that sit, but I mean, yeah, it's just true. I mean, Central, this is a matchup between last week, the team that had the best trading versus the team that had the worst trading. So it's not really, yeah. Hopes are not high, <laughs> but <laughs> at least on that front. But there's other aspects of the game that we can say how amazing they are at, like individually and that whole thing. Uh, I like Maybe that. Maybe they like turned that. it around. I don't know. Okay. It's just, you know. <laughs> Listen, I got left off. <laughs> Chad's dug the hole, and then it's like, well, do I dig deeper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I think we got it. Well, I, I think the back to, you know, let's let's get out of this hole that we've uh, we've put ourselves in. I think the other fun thing about Sentinels, and you consider this, the win that they had last week is John QT hadn't been playing with them. They hadn't gotten a ton of scrim time, and they look that good. Yeah. Right? So yeah, yeah. it's kind of hard to, to disagree with the idea that Sentinels e – even with the trophy in mind, it's hard to disagree with the idea that they're not one of the best teams in the world right yeah. now. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> just felt like they hadn't dropped a beat right. from Madrid. Now, the question on everyone's mind is whether or not Sentinels can maintain this momentum. And last week, our very own eSports Douglas sat down with Coach Kaplan and Zelsis to talk about the road ahead. Our goal is to be a dynasty, like to, to be a team that can maintain consistency, that can look excellent for 
years. Mm -hmm. And the way you do that is staying focusing on yourselves. And we just got back from Madrid, and it's not how do we stay winning and beating 100 Thieves or beating Leviathan or Loud or whatever. It's what are our weak points as a team? And now we have an opportunity for the next five weeks to work on those while we're in L.A., while we're grinding between matches each weekend. And, yeah, just staying focused on ourselves and our own growth is... is uh, I, you know, at this point, I don't doubt we will be able to do that. It sounds like such a cop-out answer. We're just going to focus on ourselves, do our own thing. But genuinely, though, guys, that is all they need to do at this point, right? They've already, like, why they've gotten to the top of the mountain. Now they just need to maintain themselves there. And getting to the top, sometimes, you know, that's the hardest, more difficult thing, staying up there. Mm, a wise man, Sadhok, once said that, it was actually harder to maintain your spot at the top in Valorant than to take it, mm. which also was him, I think, just flexing about the fact that he's been able to stay on the top <laughs> for a couple <laughs> years, which is kind of just outrageous. He just <laughs> tried to sneak that one in there like we'd yeah. overlook that he's just hyping himself <laughs> up. But, and I, I kind of, I mean, I do buy into that because, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's going to be watching your tape. People, you're, not only is everyone trying to take you down to get to the top, but also you're influencing how all the other teams are going to play. They're going to be you know, using the same compositions that you've been using, taking, yeah. taking your tactics, excuse me. So, yeah. you know, I do, I buy into that. Yeah. Well, and I also think their run at Masters was like a, a on a smaller scale, but like a perfect example of mm -hmm. that. Their first matchup against Gen G, they were very vocal about how they were trying to counter stride and they weren't really playing their own game. They were more focused on beating Gen G. It doesn't go their way. They rematch against them, and it's all about we're just going to focus on us. We're going to do our own thing. Yeah. And I think there's a there are a couple of more nuggets in that conversation that I really love. But I'm super excited to see how this Ross, this uh, Sentinels roster continues to develop, not just from what's happening in game. I think the way that they are bonding together and the structure that's been built by uh, Kaplan and Drew is is fascinating to watch. And I think there's there's really no reason to think that this this run of success can't continue. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Uh, and, and if anything, it just goes to reinforce how well built this team was during the offseason coming into right now. Lots of opportunity for Sentinels here. But let's actually see if uh, Zekin's doing what he always does, decides to stay humble for us. Send it over to Geek Heavy. There they are as I live and breathe. Here they come. Zekin, please come on over. Come on over. I got to ask you a question. Please be very honest with me. Are you the best player in the world? No. Uh, I think I've got a long way to go, but uh, it's nice to be in that conversation. Yeah, I mean, your journey is has just begun, and it seems like you are, you're there already. Just admit it. No. No, you're not going to admit it? I'm not going to be the one to say it. But I bought the Sin Bundle. Can you just admit it once? You're the best for buying the Sun Bundle. I appreciate it. I guess I'm the best. But there you have it, folks. Geek Heavy is the best with Zekin, the second best. <laughs> 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 oh, come on, Second. Just give us once. One time. You know, he's too humble. He may not say it. I'll say it for him. He's the best player in the world right now. Ooh. Like, it's really hard to argue. Yeah. And again, they did it on the international stage. He did it on a team that struggled all of last year, continued to do it this year in kickoff, did it at Madrid, and he's done it since he's been home. Yeah. The it's kid's fair. nuts. It's fair. But you know what's interesting? Uh, statistically speaking, yeah, yeah, go on. Not the best player on the server last week, which is kind of wild that when you wild. think about it. Who it was was Saucy. That's right, Ball Brother holding it down for us follically <laughs> challenged. All right, uh, real talk though. I mean, we we harp up, uh, big up rather, Zek in here, Shazam. But you know, he's got so many tools to work with as a primary duelist. And Saucy, I mean, this guy, if he pops off, it's scary for everyone else in that server. Yeah, no, I think Saucy's a really good player. I think that when a team's winning a lot, they get a lot of attention. Um, and people start to focus on like, oh, this player is consistently at the bottom or something. But when things click, they click, and you shouldn't mess with that. Saucy is like an integral part of the team, and they should keep it that way. Yeah. The last round there on Icebox, they were nice. in a 4v2. Yeah. That little like jiggle peek, it didn't even look like he peeked all the way out and just tapped Cryo in the head, goes on to win like a 2v4. <laughs> 
<laughs> goes on to. It's a What's great. That's a, now that's cinema right there. <laughs> that <laughs> truly is. That's, that's that real is. cinema. That's right. We're holding it down. We're holding it down. But yeah, no, I mean, Sasha's crazy. just been, he's been such a positive contributor to this team. And it's also yeah. wild to think, like last season, you know, where Sentinels were as a lineup moving into this one. I was even concerned if Sasha still had it. I'm sure he had those thoughts in the back of his head. And here he is popping off. Yeah, I think that was a lot of the conversation for yeah. them last year. Does Sasha, how, how is he doing? Does he still want to play? Is he his motive? You know, whatever. He wasn't performing in the way that everyone expected him to and there was a big there was a lot of ask from him yeah and I think it goes back to Shaz what you were saying earlier like if you know Zekin and Tens are going to do their thing Saucy's returning back to championship form and he's going absolutely insane again there's there's very good reason to think that this team is going to continue to win yeah no no reason to feel otherwise especially when Saucy's out there flaunting the trophy <laughs> that they picked up in Madrid. Uh, and, and they certainly deserve to do that, especially after the journey that they have been going on. But their opponents on the other side have also been in a bit of a topsy-turvy mood as of late as we move over to Leviathan. Now, they lost to C9 in, and I do love this phrase, and I'm going to say it, a very prison Valorant type of game where you had no idea what was going to happen. It just felt like it was carnage on the server through and through. But C9, they managed to climb out of this one. And, and Doug, I mean, I, I just feel like it's a bit of a heartbreaker for Leviathan. On paper. <laughs> Look at the paper, man. The paper says they're good. Yeah, that, that paper feels like it's been dead. For the last <laughs> that paper's been burnt up? Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> there's nothing coming to life on that paper. And I think... Yeah, we've had this this conversation so many times. They look like they should be really good. Things are not clicking, right? And you take it across any sport, there are times where super teams or, you know, these intricately put together rosters just don't mesh. And I feel like in Valorant, that matters more than in a lot of other sports, right? So we're seeing some of that struggle come together. And I, I think the truth is, they should have won that series against Sentinels. That feels like one that they kind of let go. That got out of their hand, and, or excuse me, against Cloud9. It shouldn't have gone that way. Yeah. Um, and that's hard. It, it's almost worse in a lot of ways, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this too. It's almost worse when you lose a series that you know, like, that was yours to win instead of getting beat by somebody real bad on the other side. Yeah, definitely. It's way worse because you feel like you beat yourselves. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's hard to accept, like, okay, we got outplayed here and stuff, but now nah, when you beat yourself, it is, it is the worst feeling, like, um, Leviathan look like a team right now that's less than the sum of its units. Yeah. They feel very disconnected, um, and it's it's pretty disappointing right now. Yeah, we were actually, you know, what you, you mentioned about the disconnection, and Calm actually had a tweet earlier because I, we all know Calm for the flanks. I mean, I think everyone knows Calm for the flanks at this point, even his opponents, for better or for worse. Uh, but for him to say that he felt like it was last year all over again for him, I mean, uh, Doug, that is a, a heartbreaking thing to read from a world champion initiator like Khan. Well, and uh, to even go back to some of what last year was like, he was on the receiving end of a lot of grief because there were a lot of people who thought he was the one who should have gotten benched and not be CJ, mm. right? So he's dealing with all of this stuff, and I, I do think it's hard when – he made uh, as much impact as he did on timings and on getting flanks and things like that and finding holes and creating massive gaps through that because so much of that is is timing based and so much of that is heavily dependent on what your team is relaying to you as far as information goes and then also dependent on mistakes yeah. that your opponents are making and when that has been your breadwinner for as long as it has been for Khan for him to become a world champion not only off of doing that but primarily off of doing that Teams have keyed in on it. You, I, I, I think it would be very surprising if we saw a round today where there was not somebody watching the flank mm. because it's become very predictable in a way. They know he's going to do it, and he found plenty of success like that before, but the truth is he struggled like that since. Yeah, I mean, I almost, I almost don't even want to talk about the flank thing anymore because it's so played out, but it's literally <laughs> true. <laughs> like, that's the, yeah. the – which is yeah. annoying. Like, I yeah. hate when – I hate when there's a narrative that becomes like so like overdone and it's just getting beat into the ground. Yeah. But it's true. It's like I don't want to actually have to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, just, you uh, want to talk about something else? How about okay. uh, Aspas guess, dropping yeah. plus 32, and then they still well, that upsets me too. That, that's that also here you go. I mean, <laughs> it's just even more annoying that he dropped 32 and King dropped like. 30 as well, or something like they had at least yeah. combined yeah. 62 frags on a cent. Lost an OT, they're losing 1v2 clutches at the end. I mean, you can't get more of a testament to what you said of, you know, the uh, less than some of its parts, the other, yeah, is that the right way around? <laughs> you never think about it that way. You got but it yeah, across. That's the way that you are thinking about it, because 
Like, how, come on, how the hell do you have two guys dropping 30-plus and you can't close out the game like that? Doesn't make the actual clears with this team. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make the actual issues, excuse me, any clearer than that. Where are you seeing the those breakdowns happen in Leviathan from your experience? Yeah, like, you can tell they've rehearsed rounds, they go into executes, and it's when the round breaks down, it's the post plants, three takes, and they just look not on the same page. Um, it's a you, communication thing, it yeah. feels like, right? Because, I mean, Com's biggest thing when he was playing uh, alongside Busio and the boys in DG was that he was doing a lot of these, like, mid-round calls, like, contributing a little bit. You really don't feel that here at all. No, you don't see good mid-rounding, whether it's, like, players taking timings or being on the same page, and it's just really evident. Yeah, in a lot of these rounds, too, especially on Sunset, where they were running, like, the Phoenix and everything, and, and on the Scent, They'll have so many big rehearsed retakes with all their utility, but then when it actually comes to getting into the site off of the Molly lineup, paranoia, flash, all this stuff that they're throwing in, it just devolves. They can't trade for each other. Well, and I think the graphic that we just saw really just kind of puts together the value that Asfes has been able to provide, Phoenix notwithstanding, uh, and just how, how good he has been. And it goes back to what you were saying. It, it, this team right now is just not... It is lesser than the sum of its parts. That's a right? good one. And thank you. He I came up with that myself. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow, look at that. <laughs> so smart. Um, and, and I do think it, it feels bad because Valorant is more about chemistry and more about synergy, as we've talked about, than a lot of other games. And there's just something that's not clicking. Yeah. And I don't know if it's uh, King struggling IGLing in English. I don't know if it's I, so, somewhere. There's you a pretty know serious me? breakdown. Well, Sentinels last year. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sentinel's last year. International roster, you coming in, parts aren't working, supposed to work, don't really click. So it's going to be uh, quite interesting to see how this one plays out for Leviathan, but uh, for Sentinel as well, if you're a Sen fan, you're feeling pretty good right now. Let's go ahead, though, and find out where we're headed as we jump into the maps, picks, and bans. Welcome to the VCT America's map pick ban. Uh, we had a coin flip, coin flip determined that Sentinels is Team A and Leviathan is Team B. So Sentinels, ban a map. Ban Breeze. Ban Breeze. Okay, Leviathan. We ban a split. Leviathan ban splits. Sentinels, map pick. Pick Lotus. Pick Lotus. Okay, Leviathan, map side on Lotus. Attack. Attack on Lotus. Uh, map pick for Leviathan. Uh, Icebox. Icebox. Okay, Sentinels side on Icebox. Pick defense. Defense on Icebox. Cool. Sentinels bans a map. Ban Ascent. Ban Ascent. Leviathan ban a map. Sunset. Sunset. So the remaining map is Bind, with Sentinels having choice. Attack. Attack on Bind. Cool. Good luck. Have fun. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. All right. So we start things off with Lotus, Icebox, and then Bind if necessary. What do you guys make of that? I think it's got to be miserable to play against Sentinels right now. Their Lotus is world class. Their Split is world class. Their Sunset is world class. You're, it's not like you're playing against a team that you get rid of one of their maps and you go, okay, we can 50-50 the other ones. You're banning two of their best maps and you still have to play them on another map that's just as good, arguably better, depending on you know the day and, and stuff like that. Like It's just tough to play against Sentinels right now. Yeah, I, I do think this veto might have gone the best I could have for them. Mm -hmm. I think that Split and Sunset are maps that have gone through almost every series for Sen, and they've just looked unstoppable. Yeah. And so getting those out of the way, this might be their best chance. Yeah, yeah, of course. By the way, folks, we want to let everyone know at home that there's a little bit of a delay on the stage. We're going to get that sorted in a moment here. Should be starting things up in a couple minutes. Thanks for sticking with us. For now, though, we're just going to waffle, okay? We're just going to yap. And just, and just share our thoughts and emotions about this game. Thoughts and emotions, perfect okay. person for it. Wyatt. Uh, I think I already gave my emotions. <laughs> just like a general, sort of mild frustration. Mild um, frustration? Thoughts? Uh, I mean, I do, I totally agree with what you were saying with the Split and Sunset being out. And it's just so, like, so many teams are just playing those maps that when they go up against Sen, it's the, we feel good on this, so we should give it a shot, kind of leaving it in. And so those being out, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that, but I just struggle to believe that it'll be enough because Sun's map pool is so deep right yeah. now. And Lev's map pool, I don't even know what it is. Like, I, I don't what think is they know it? what it is. Yeah, I, I, I do not know. So. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, it, so, uh, of course, I think a player for me that is kind of sticking out that I, I'm really wondering how he's going to perform today, it's King, uh, because... 
Well, you know, he's always just had a really difficult task on this team. Of It's a mixed roster, so he's going to be doing a majority of the comic. He was the leader on Leviathan. This is a much, uh, on the old Leviathan, much different look this time around, Doug. He's still got to step up to be that leader, and there's just more work that has to be done on his end because he's going to be calming in English. He's going to be, uh, you know, communicating with the rest of his team, trying to, like, create some synergy with four people that, you know, or three people that he didn't play with last year. Yeah, you would think that when this roster was put together, King's job would be easier, right? We talked so much about King last year and how he was really the bright spot in an otherwise kind of mess that wasn't clicking the way it was supposed to, and it was just consistently under-delivering on expectations that we had at the beginning of the year. But you're right, GB, it almost feels like it's harder this year, and I think he's consistently doing his thing, yeah. too, which is why I'm so high on King. Like, the kid is insane. Right? He's been able to put together a lot of really impressive stuff when you think about his career on Leviathan up until this point. And it's, it's tough, but he has to continue to deliver. They have to continue to ask a lot of him and put things on his shoulders because the truth is right now, when you're struggling the way that you are, Right when none of the pieces are fitting, when you feel like nothing is going right and you feel like, n like you aren't executing the way you need to, where do all eyes turn? Right? Yeah. They turn to the IGL. Right? And that's when it's on King to... It's part of the job, bro. Like, yeah. I know it's hard, but something has to come from him. And it can't be a pop-off performance because he's Actually done that. I want to bring you in on this one. Because you, you, you kind of dealt a little bit of that, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, you can speak from experience. How's that, like, it's tough, right? Yeah, no. When when things are not clicking, it's that's when the IGL's got a lot of work to do. You know, uh, it's the hardest on you. And you got to, like, really reevaluate, like, okay, are our systems not working? Are they bad? Or are we not doing them right? Do we scrap, like, the stuff we're doing on certain maps and, like, reinvent? Um, you really got to figure yourselves out. It's it's not a good position to be in. Yeah. Um, and I really feel for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think the other thing, too, for this team is that it probably isn't just, the problems probably aren't just in the server, right? Like, there's something about the way the communication is not working, where chemistry is not working, where you, you kind of have to solve that, too. Yeah. Right? And it's such a sharp juxtaposition to Sentinels on the other side, where they're a brotherhood where everything is clicking, when it feels like they're, they're, they're building something special that steps outside of just what's happening in the server. So yeah. it, it's a lot to ask of King. You're right. It, it almost feels bad for him. Yeah. All right, fellas. Well, we're getting real close to the walkouts here, but I think we all know where everyone's leaning for this one. Two, the 2-0, two assuming here. Where, where can Leviathan find that win? Is it in this series layout? Will we be going, at the very least, to a map three on bind? Wyatt? I mean, I'm thinking about Icebox and last time I remember when they were playing with Ospos on the map and he was just insane. But so maybe there, I mean, but again, I was just in my mind, all I can lean on is, well, they have Ospos. It's like, that's not really. That's fair. I mean, he's amazing, but against the entirety of the Madrid winning team, against his father, Saucy. <laughs> actual <laughs> Ravers Dom in this game right now, GB. I don't, I, yeah, I. <laughs> How can you not go send? Yeah, I, hey, I completely understand. But this is it, folks. We're ready to get the show on the road. We got Leviathan. We have Sentinels. Now, whether or not Leviathan could pull off this win, it'd be a massive opportunity for them. But the Madrid winners are looking to shut them down. Let's send it back over to the stage. Riot Games Arena. I want to hear Sin City make some noise for Sentinels.
second match, Leviathan versus Sentinels is surely going to be an interesting one. If Sentinels can close this one out too well, they'll continue to show their dominance here in America. But for Leviathan, a massive opportunity to pull off an upset. Do they have it in them? Once again, you can see the map layout. It's going to be Lotus, Icebox, and if necessary, we'll be taking a trip over to the sandy beaches. Well, not beaches, sandy dunes and vine. Beaches is breeze, as a matter of fact. I could go for a beach. A, I think it actually. could be a beach too, though. It no? could be a beach. Right. It's Morocco, I believe. It's quite nice out there. You know, been. I, mean, I would love to go. I would love. To. Hey, you want to go to Morocco? I'm down. I'm down. Let's do it, baby. Absolutely. That's what's up. All right, guy trip. Uh, Shaw, you can come too. Why not you? Uh, so, <laughs> all right, boys, we're getting ready for this what? one. I, I'm. I really. I hate being so down on on Levia's Don Shazam. So I, I want to feel a tinge of hope. And I feel like the hope is going to come in the form of Osbos popping off in this server. Would you agree? I would agree. I think also I'm very curious to see the comp they run on Lotus. Mm -hmm. Ooh, um, yeah. That'll give me a little more hope too. So let's just see. We'll give you hope if they're not running three, something. Two, what? One, what? What do you want to see? Yeah. I want to see at least what a Sentinel three side map. Okay. <laughs> that's a good. Yeah, that's a good start. That's the bare minimum that you can ask for. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It feels like a big ask. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well. This is going to be a tough one, without a doubt, for the Leviathan lineup. But again, they have those weapons, Doug. So they have the tools that can bring them to the promised land here. It's whether or not during the week when they had that downtime, what did they talk about? What did they build together to try and take down Sen? Because they knew that this match was coming and they know that it was going to be a tough one. Yeah, I think when I think about the entirety of the series very quickly, take a zoom back, it feels like Icebox is probably their best bet. And sure, it looked as good as it did because you had Aspas doing his thing, but you've got a different beast on the other side of the server this time when they get there. It's not like Aspas will be able to just run all over Sentinels and do whatever he yeah. wants like he was able to last week. So even that, like, subtle win condition, if you will, that you, you feel like you kind of look at that and go, oh, that has to be where they deliver. Even, even that formula, even that equation is not the same one, and it becomes infinitely more convoluted. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shout out the scent bundle. I have to. It's in my contract. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's just a, there's a it's a big ask for a team that currently feels like they don't have an identity, that are struggling to figure out who they are, both in and out of the server, how they mesh all these things together. It's 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 tough, and I, I think for Sentinels on the other side. There's just a lot of yeah. go, right? Like when you're eating and you're eating good, they're, you're feasting. And that's what Sentinels has been doing. All right, here's the agent select now. And Sentinels is going to keep it nice and breezy here. Not do anything, uh, you know, obviously too out of the ordinary. A squad that's certainly just going to continue to just improve upon what they have already built and what has already led them to a championship. But from the other side for this one, well, you did get a Sentinel. So look at that. I mean, time, what, what a time to be alive. Shazam. Let's go, Mirror Comps. Does this comp make, I mean, Mirror Comps, does it make you excited uh, at the very least? Just see them kind of keep it standard? Yeah, I just wasn't a fan of their Ascent Comp in that last matchup. So mm. I'm glad they're trying to figure out at least get comfortable in the meta. All right, folks. Well, let's see what we're going to get with this one. We're ready for the first pistol round. We're going to send it over to your casters. They're a couple lineup Larrys. You got Van Silly and Rivington. Thank you so much, boys. Yes, indeed, we have a full house today in the Riot Games Arena. And you know what? I don't want to beat down on Leviathan either with okay. like GB because now we're not coming out with no multi comps for Leviathan. And as Shaz is saying, we got a Sentinel coming out now for Leviathan. And we're hoping to see them be able to fight back against Sentinels. And, you know, we haven't seen Leviathan in a very long time here on Lotus. So I'm excited to see what they can come out with. It's today. been since the end of last year at Superdome Columbia. So it was kind of a side tournament. Then before that, even versus Crew at LCQ. So it is. It's been a long time <laughs> since we have seen Leviathan here. And it is going to be attack for them as they come out. Very interesting. They want to go on the aggression first. I think one of the things we saw 100 Thieves able to kind of plague Sentinels with was the aggression, was Cryo was on. It didn't allow for those protocol retakes that Sentinels love to do. Get everybody set up and hit at the same time as your opponent just cannot stop the flood. Rubble Control is just going to be fought over for now, as this is actually going to be a pretty slow pistol round. Expect it to go off the rails quick, though. It's quick when the wall immediately comes down. And that's Leviathan to score first, so Tex gets the opener, and that's second down. It was a stalemate a little bit in terms of utility, but now you have Leviathan creeping up towards V as well, looking potentially to split back into B site. Util gone from Ospos, just looking for that Prowler still to come out from Com if they do want to take more space. Tens. 
caught out in the open yeah, just stuck. in front of the door. Has to do a one and done, and unfortunately, he falls by the hands of Aspas. Two player advantage now for Leviathan as they're now working as a group. All five players outside towards the orb of the A site. One hiding behind the box. John Cutie gets dispatched by Tex and also discovered by Prowlers being thrown from the A site here from Sasi. He has no choice but to fall back. Very low HP and they just walked. Tex walked out of turret range as you had Zelsus coming around. This time is going to be tough with a spike down though. Everything kind of resets and Led's going to be looking at every angle now. Maybe they might be group up here at the front of the A site. Zels is doing his due diligence, now open the door, keeping their two players looking out towards the door side. So gets a dink, but no kill. Leaving out Sassi alone. And Leviathan, you wanted them to come out strong. And they start off with a flawless. Flawless, keeping each other alive. Very nicely done, and they wait. They whittle away at Sentinel's members, so the retake isn't as powerful. A lot of calm play around A main here, and they didn't didn't get distracted from the wind condition. They didn't try to go clear pillars. They didn't try to go clear C. It was everything that was in front of them is what they had to look at, and Lev take down their targets. Guardian got a Bulldog coming out as well from Zeno. We'll see where Aspas takes this Guardian. Looks like he will get the support of both flashes. A little bit of cover here towards that C area. And they look for mound control to start off here. Just so Sentinels can't get a decent early read on the map. Split, 3-2. Leviathan take it slow once again. You can expect anything from Sentinels here, but they're going to play it safe. Like you said before, no novelty comps here. Com doesn't bring out the Sova. They have the fade. They refresh on that. Keep some Prowlers and Haunts going to clear the space that they need. Spike's still down as they're letting this one time out a little bit. They gave a lot of time right now for Sentinels to pinch out from a mid to C, and there's that paranoia on the tap. Com's holding all the way back with the Bulldog to drop two. That's going to make things a little bit easier here for Leviathan. Controlling the yeah. orb, controlling the kills, and now, of course, converting the pistol into five versus one. But you talk about it, right? No novelty com uh, no novelty comp, sorry, coming out of Leviathan, but also you're playing some easy roles, some ro some roles that are some players are comfortable with. Khan Absolutely. playing as the initiator, Mazino back to smokes, King playing the Viper as well. So this is looking pretty good in terms of, okay, we're, we're having hope right now for Leviathan at least to kick things off in this series against Sentinels. See this one real quick. Oh, nice coverage back too. Uh, kind of identifying that play would happen. It seemed like Leviathan was ready for a fast push. A hard one there. And if you can't, oh, I was gonna say, if you can't get a kill, just be the merchant, merchant of death and skins, just for one there. Com picks up the 3K, nicely stacking a few of those alts that are come up. Uh, Fade ultimate coming up soon here, and they probably focus Aspas a little bit as we move forward. So now Sentinel's first gun round. Zelsis already going to be focusing the Odin, but it's not headed towards Tree right away. That's gonna be over towards the C site. See if they try to get any type of rubble control with what would be more of a fake here. Maybe paranoia or a smoke through and then a nade as Zekin tries to front a little bit of control. You see the pings coming out already though. Lev want to clear that rubble and the left pocket. Just want to clear it very quickly. Already a satchel on the top of rubble. And even on the top, Tens was not ready for that. Yeah. So Aspas gets first blood. And already Sentinels are falling back from BB Door, grouping up back towards the staircase, looking to fight. Potentially a double swing out just to get information. They choose otherwise. They want to see if there's more util coming out from Leviathan if they actually initiate and engage towards the A site. And now they start to switch, right? They leave King in position there. to call for sound. They easily have control over mid still with that turret from Ter Pillars from Tex. And now they work the map. Leviathan trying to just take there. everything out of Sentinels. And so far in these rounds, it's been the members of Sentinels, not just utility. And the reason why you see Zelsis here playing with the Odin. So the Alarm Mod's gonna get first info. Yep. Gonna try to slow things down with Nanoswarms off the turret, and the Odin's gonna be good for the spray to try to deny plants. Instead, he's trying to play he in front of the smoke. smoke. Instead of playing the retake or slowing things down, he gets denied by Aspas. That was scaling up towards that white side, uh, right side of the waterfall. And that spike goes down. Yeah, this is that's definitely going to be a call for a save here for Sentinels. In that position, I was 100% thinking that was a spam from the Odin yep. right through the wall there. As they try to plant, you create distraction. The rest of the team falls into place, but two kills right away. They lose members holding sights on both sides. And this is just going to be an easy walk in now for Lev after the plant and pretty much walk out. They just have to choose where to go. And that's being covered by Com. May lose his life, but it'll let everybody else get out safe. We get info here. <laughs> Walking forward. Hello. And that's oh, yeah, they're there. <laughs> your team says, why is your knife out? 
Uh, You're like, I, I thought I had a moment. Thought I had a moment. They're still gonna go for the kills, though. They want to drop weapons. So nice I mean, damage there. Took the Odin away here from Celsus, just spraying it out. And yeah, you'll slow things down with the snake fight. You'll be able to save these three weapons for Sentinels, but the least a good thing here. Three rounds went through, and they noticed that late lurk from yeah. King on the pulse plant, and they took him down right away. So they'll keep that in the back pocket. And how Leviton's currently defaulting and scaling, and also doing a lot of rotate so far in these first three maps. And big Five money rounds, here. rather, yeah. 6k credits. They still have 4,000 at least going into these next rounds. And this is going to be the low armor buy here for Sentinels. Let's see if they stay back, go forward. They switched over where Zelsis is, tried to condition that we've left the Killjoy at C, now at A. And that may even play into the favor of Lev here. A push on the mound again from Sentinels. Shots are not hitting though, and Zekin's low on bull is hit by the Paranoia too. Still manages to get the kill onto Mazito before he falls from Osmos. He gets two in the round. And already to understand for Leviathan that they cleared out the space. Already initiating inside the site, double satchel. Prowler inside waterfall, spotting yeah. Saucy, and got to fall back again. I think Lev recognized too, low by. They pushed, they went into this. We have armor advantage, getting the site. I think she would say Osmos going in so quickly to know that that play was pretty readable off the push on mound. So Leviathan actually just getting that one, falling right into their laps. They made the right play, but yeah, Sentinels was not ready for another C hit that hard. Comms just ready to throw their Nightfall as well. So just trying to guarantee it around our Leviathan and his post plant. Sentinels waiting for the full road hit of Zelsis so they can move inside the side as a group. There's that first contact, Jiggle Peak, and forces out the Nightfall. Two of them were gonna get hit. Yeah. Sentinels choose to fall back and save. I think it's Lev with first kill every round so far. Yeah. We have not seen Sentinels be able to have their 5v5 or even really a 4 retake coming into this point where their utility would be the advantage. And yeah, the Vietan have such a great idea right now and it's all their game plan. They're not waiting for Sentinels to make a move. They're going to Sentinels in a lot of these plays. Here, Zekin was able to clean up a few, but still, you're overrun by the numbers of Leviathan just being behind each other right now. Really good teamwork coming up. Aspas two away from the ultimate, and not even close for an ultimate being on deck right now for Sentinel. So, another buy in round here. This could be a tough one. 2,400 credits coming on to those credits that Sentinels has them. now. So. This one's going to be tough for them to buy next round. This has to be one of their first ones. That's a good shout, because usually in round number four, when you're focusing on orc control, we'll hold that thought, though. The satchel's across, but Leviathan still get the two first Pens. picks. Close remaining. range, but instant trades coming in from both sides, even the push outside from B. That was waited and greeted by Leviathan, still watching those pushes on both ends. And yeah, we're trying to say that the silver lining, at least for Sentinels, round number four, when on the attack, they're yeah. focusing a lot of orb control, plant control to get an ult out ACP. Leviathan didn't have any, so they had an opportunity to play aggro, try to change the tempo for Sentinels, but they got denied right away when, you know, that they were mentioning at the desk, we were a little bit, there was a little bit of miscalls yeah. for Leviathan where they can't really trade perfectly, but this oh, looks really good right now compared to the other week. The calls right now, the feels that Leviathan has on what Sentinels may try to do is immaculate. Yep. They always have more numbers wherever the soft site of Sentinels is, even if that soft site's being pushed. It's been C most of the time right now. And yeah, the pillars push completely unexpected you. to see him pulling out two there. So now what? What do you think the Reed Sentinels has is Leviathan's in their spawns for most of the round. They're looking to play a little bit aggressive on Rubble, but also are stopping us when we push C. And, and you don't want to let Leviathan get to the front door at this point to get their attack on. They're responding so... Leviathan's responding so well to everything right now. Last player standing. Mm-hmm. That is true. <laughs> Enemy There's that push. So Tex playing that Sentinel role as the Killjoy. Turret finding information, using the boxes as cover, yep. getting these picks. So yeah, there is a little bit of nervousness coming out. <laughs> You're what? in the arena now, <laughs> cheering for Sentinels, and yeah, you definitely need to call a timeout now for the defensive side. It's what of Sin City. indeed, and I feel like Leviathan, that pressure on their shoulders may just kind of be lifted, right? Knowing that this is going so well, it's starting off what they came to play is working so well against Sentinels. I don't know if we've really seen them down this many rounds start stage one here and now it's can they repair it we've seen sentinels come back on the international stage they can definitely come back here but do they have the answer for what leviathan has been throwing down ospos one away from alt this could be a focus to the orb on that right side lev has left a kind of just 
no man's land after yeah. the first round where they put king up forward and then they kind of play towards c play towards mid a little bit for the lurks so this now they may start to show that a presser again zelsis will re-initiate the utility of killjoy over towards cb and sentinels is just trying to find out what'll work right now for like sentinels push too. yeah you have a second that's also one way from the alt potentially trying to throw some sort of paint shells to show okay maybe there's a stack from sentinels on the a site Thompson's and then they could push leviathan over to a rotate yeah. of a c site stack and with that haunt that was being thrown prowler to find information right now sentinels are still playing with no information taken right nothing was spotted there on mm -hmm. either extremities they're waiting it out they see the prowler b fade b and we'll start to work towards a again this is the alt door for osbos if they can grab it you see king ready for the plant here now they source out what this is going to be. I feel like Sent needs to back up in sight a little bit more unless they're going to take this fight straight on with this ult coming in. Second Prowler finding information this time over on the A site. There's King scoring first. Showstopper being pulled out. You'll take that dub right now as Sentinels is on an eco. Going right at the feet of John Q to be killed. Stolen <laughs> away by Calm. Yeah. The clean entry towards the site. Plant comes down for Leviathan. And now the last three trying to get something done with that. Bulldog in this round. At least hopefully bring the economy down for Leviathan because they are about to max out across the board should they close out this round and take the lead by six in to send scoreless. Just taking that site, the util usage coming from Leviathan, the seas is catching, the haunts displacing where the defensive spots are. And it's like Sen is safe nowhere. Trying to get that push on, just a distraction. Standing. Zelsus is just counting the bullets and able to catch one off the exits. Yeah. And for Olivia time, they're hunting on those kills for sure. All right. Those alts are going to be coming up for Sentinels. Can, can they formulate a plan, though, so those ultimates just don't get snuffed out? Leviathan's been playing so far back. They, there's the C right there. Zekin was ready to make us try to make a play with John Cutie on the other side. Just a few sheriff shots to maybe collect one kill. But it, they're not even letting him get away with that, really. You got to be sneaky and spawn, apparently. Odin's back up for Zelsis. See where they decide to roll these. It's still going to be that C play for the Odin. Utility split between DC and a bit of this mound and rubble control. Not again. No. They leave it to. The Vieton for now. Wow. And they don't know if Sentinel's pushed or not. The Vieton's just ready to aggress that utility and push back. They're not taking any chances versus Sentinels here in our first B rush. Let's see how they coordinate around the Killjoy utility. And Sentinel seems to be okay for this as well. Sassy was almost in a one and done. Well, he is still going to be done. Timing. Still going to be done. Satchel's in, Kong, that was the one that was able to get the first blood for Leviathan to get a flat deniability by paint shells coming through. And now the gap's been closed, they can use this showstopper now for a second. There's that second half on the spike, they're using yep. more util for Leviathan to slow things down. Paranoia being thrown to lurk by Aspas, and that's a quick one and two. Now 1v1 against the Yoden, and Lee Zelsis wins that one. But they have no show showstopper for the retake, that might be it, that might be it right here for Sentinels. Another lurk? <laughs> yeah. It never ends. Just keeping him back. Standing. There's King with that kill. Oh my gosh. They're everywhere. Leviathan is just able to encroach into the defensive side so fast. Just throwing off the state of the game for Sentinels. The timing not there. We even saw Sasi getting caught with the, the haunt seas out. Whatever. I couldn't tell what he was throwing at first, but it's just Leviathan everything going their way and it's because of the movements the mid-round calls and the way they've been playing seven rounds in the first time they hit b and it does catch sentinels off guard you till out to break the site that's all still there you just talked about it this lurk as well just absolutely disgusting they really have not been able to put this odin to use either that they keep buying towards c that's a crazy part too as a duelist being able to get behind enemy lines to backstab too yeah so when you're really seeing Leviathan on these executions, Aspa is getting so much space right now. And not really met with too much opposition too, because Sentinels are trying to fight a little bit towards the fort lines at the beginning. And they'll try to do it again. Util being thrown out here towards the A site. There we go. The first real rubble control with a season aid that we're seeing from Sen here to feel comfortable and put that power into just an attack that may not work. 
Molly's go off pretty early. Orba ought to go down. They'll have a pretty good sight of this B site now. Yeah. They got great stall right now with both wow. John Cutie and Zelsus here. Yet, Leviathan, they deny all of that util. Not afraid and just brute forcing in. This is one of the first times Sen has their team to get the retake in. And this is what we there expected we from Zelsus before. The spam through the wall from Waterfall. Now Sen's ready for that retake protocol. They have everything for this swing round. Locked down at the ready from Zelsus' kill. So he's rotating back towards the spawn to initiate it. They also have a showstopper to just fight towards that corner if Leviathan wants to fight inside the site and stay there. Yet, they decide to fall back, play towards the mound. So that lockdown will go through. Nobody's gonna get detained. Showstopper now trying to clear information. There's nobody around the site. So they know right now for Leviathan, they're playing post plant outside of mound. There's a the Showstopper, four for the night by Asmus. A four on four, Satchel up in the air. There's still a smoke in the front. Sticking on to the spike is John Judy. Puts it a halfway, now sticking it down. One for one in front of the fight. And there comes all these defuses as all the signals is falling. Except for John Cutie, who at least gets to defuse. Smart play. Pens holding paranoia for the longest time. The lockdown getting Leviathan out in a, something they must have missed because they planted to hold in sight. And that's not very easy when that lockdown comes out from the side of Sentinels. All pushed outside, forced to fight through smoke. That turn at the last second, the turn at the last second to save him puts the spike lower, allowing the defuse duck from John Cutie. Zelsus' spam actually plays out huge in this one. Wow. I oh, cannot believe that's the way they scrape one through. They got a lot of work to do, though. 7-1 down. This Odin's still here. Nightfall to retake a site. Sentinel's going for more of the retake protocol again. And it's going to be a C hit from Lev to start. It looks like they're right in. Zelsus is on the top of the wood with the Odin. Bomb grenade out. Now delaying with Nanostorm is trying to walk in and find a timing through the poison orb. Planted. Right out of it. Catch is calm. Spike at least planted for Leviathan. There's the pit outside on the attack side to cover up all the waterfall. Sasi though has a night bulk and uses towards the site, initiates it, engages it now. King looking to fall back just around the corner and they might forfeit the pit from there. Aspas trying to delay as well with the showstopper of his own. On the top of the boxes. So now C's just got thrown to get more information as well. But they stay inside the pit, they kept it up. Walking it close, all the Sentinels are low on HP. So hard to walk inside that pit, and as it goes wow. down, all the Leviathans still there fighting inside the site. They snap back right away. Ultimate protects two lockdowns here if they have any trouble coming from the future rounds. And they do not let another post plant go to Sentinels. Let's see this again. Just stick in the site after plant and they lose three. Okay, now we know why. <laughs> you, you can't say that was supposed to happen, but you take those every day. All right, here we go. Wall up on both sides. Leviathan looked to tempt a little bit towards A once again. Let's see if there's a, a hard push looking to make a fake TP sound. And a strong B pillar push here from Sentinels. They're trying to give different looks from defense too. They're in kind of their 1-3-1 one, one formation that we would almost see them already in a, a retake on, or at least a 3-1. But we'll see if this works out for them. It's going to be knowledge from John Cutie and Zelsis to this pile of three in mid before they move. Yeah, just like the little TP that you saw from Azino, though. Usually that omen sound you're saying to beat it out is right, the TP right. across towards C. He wants to make sure he's not going to get overwhelmed by a stack of Sentinels on the C side. And with the Nightfall, yeah. Just to cover our tracks now for Leviathan. They realize that the A side is open. Easy plan now for Tree. A little delay, left and right. Stall him at the door. And we'll see what Sentinels has here. Sheriff retake hasn't stopped him before though. You yeah. Paranoia went high. Not gonna hit anybody inside the site. For Sentinels, you're happy. You wasted out two walls from your opponents before. Yeah. They're actually just going to uh, potentially die to spike. Trying to keep it expensive is not really the name of the game right now. It's, again, Leviathan are rolling in the bank. Still trying to chase down these kills. There you go. There's John Cutie tends to get some work in. Aspa's holding it down inside the site. And I, that might finally be the hope gone of some sort of an eco. Save here for Sentinels. And Leviathan now really making it a one-sided affair so far yeah. in this first half in this series on Lotus. Well, like you said, Sends happy, especially at 9-1 to see those ultimates were used to take the low buy round from them, but 
Will the guns even matter here? Lev firing on all cylinders right now. They, they, they were shooters last week and it didn't seem like they had the macro. Now Lev's putting both together. They're running the map and the shots. So many first bloods to just separate Sentinels from being able to retake these rounds. The spot we think them most strongest. A haunt out, quick one up top, but they still can't fight for this rubble control. It's just a little bit of early knowledge to try and have Tex, or I'm sorry, try to have Zelsis hold this area with all the Killjoy utility. A good push onto Mound is gonna let Sentinels focus on the A side of the map, but it's a it's pullback here from Lev, and they leave King again. This is much like their fir the bonus round that they ran. Actually, they're leaving way more. This is gonna be a B pinch for the first time from Lev. And through smoke, King falls. But you mentioned it. You might think here for Sentinels, okay, we got the Lurk down, but at least for Leviathan, yeah. they have other players on their side trying to make some noise here. They threw the Paranary out towards Tree. They threw a smoke. They popped out both mollies. Her baby door being broken here on the defensive side. That's Aspaz trying to scale in. Oh, Texas running inside the smoke, catching Zekin off guard. And the teleport into the site, just growing the numbers of Leviathan here on the B hold. To have it. Oh, they're pushing! Whoa, 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 off pass. Prowler also keeping Sentinels at bay. Now they can reset. Ten's just waiting for a timing to paranoia in the front of the B site, but nobody from Leviathan will be there except for Mazino. There's that flash not being thrown. The door. Cannot connect on the kill. Waiting for it, and finally drops Mazino. That allows her Sentinels to move in, and Ten's at low HP gets a second kill. Now a smoke here. Osborne sticking onto the fuse. Snake bite to keep it at bay. Carve is alone! And Sentinels are able to come back. That seems like the timing that we are used to from Sentinels. The ability usage when they're hitting, disrupting so many of the angles being Last watched by Leviathan. The we saw their mouses flicking back and forth at all the wrong times. These are the kind of things, and the reason Sentinel's retakes usually look so clean, it's they're at the backside of their opponents, still double swinging something that's never available to trade. And it just goes over so smooth. They keep some weapons. A 9-3 is almost a must here with the power Lev's been bringing into the match. Let's see if they can keep it going. This early haunt, allowing a little bit of info to come out of B here, but also still keep fade on B. Keeping Lev thinking that rubble control is trying to be pushed. This mountain, though, this is important to Sentinels. Super aggressive for Sentinels. The dodge. The dodge, the first blood, scored by Sentinels, answered back by a knob on the attack in the hands of Ospa. They Second still falls. fight it. Crazy. Now that allows here Leviathan to get control of both the mountain and front B. They can choose the pathing depending on the picks. The off angle being held by Sasi. Now the jig is up on that end to try to at least give Sentinels an opportunity to take a player advantage in the last round of the half. Pit comes out as the orb just got tapped and picked up by Osmos, one away from a showstopper. Really cool pit, because you have this push up here. It's going to push him right back over towards Zelsis on A. And now Zelsis can back up, I believe, Baby Door might. Oh, he may just try to lace him with the Odin here as they pass by. This is going to be a sketchy one. I don't know if they make noise before they get to Zelsis. That would immensely help the rotation. This is such a big gamble right now, and there is that defensive wall. Leviathan's walking through. The wall's about to drop, and there's three left. just behind. There's that one. There's that second one. It's that two. But at least he's some damage, allowing Saucy to rotate over. And now King once again is left alone. One versus three, 18 seconds left on the clock. A plant, but no more U2 left behind. Now also on top of that hit, but a nightfall, giving a chance now for Sentinels to just book it. He gets the first pick there onto Tens as he drops down. The last two have to group together. John Cudi and Saucy sneak by the available on a defense. King trying to find information. There's the third. But because he was scuffled by the nightfall, needed to find that info. And spots both of them as the wall came down. And Sentinels to get the defuse and the half three to nine. And it can't be a Valorant game without a seven to one scoreline or a nine to three <laughs> scoreline, right? What quick thinking there by John Cutie and squad saying, you know what, C has been a lot of these late round hits. They put the alt down at C and basically direct Leviathan back towards A, back to the waiting arms of Zelsis and Saucy. That's the macro we're looking for from Sentinels here that makes their opponent walk right into the traps. Took a bit, they got three. Sometimes that's enough, but they're really going to have to put this down on attack. All right, well, at least now let's throw it back to the desk here, GB. Leviathan looks good, right? 
Man, I'll tell you one thing, baby. We got egg on our face right now because that whole segment, we were like, ah, left, left, left. And then they came out of the gate and said, you know, just hold my Red Bull. Uh, inc impressive stuff, really, from Leviathan here, Doug. And it feels like uh, a rejuvenated team, exactly what we wanted to see and exactly what we expect from those five players that are playing under this banner. Yeah, I think this is a lot of what people thought would come together when this roster was built. And I think... Aspas is still doing his thing. I think King is popping off. I think Mazzino's had a couple of really big moments as well. And I think they showed that they had a really good plan at the beginning of Lotus. It also felt like Sentinels were trying to force it a, a little bit at times. Maybe, you know, a couple of plays that kind of were left head scratching. But other other than that, Levitan, at least for the first quarter of that half, if you will, uh, looked very comfortable. Yeah, honestly, it's very rare you see Aspas not having a dominant performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then on your point too, like it felt like Sen um, were down a couple rounds and they started making peaks that it's like only when you're down a couple rounds you feel like you need to make a play to like yeah. save the round. And that was just like snowballing throughout the matchup. Yeah, you certainly felt that. Uh, now we are in a position though where Sentinels were able to squeak out three, nine three going into this. This could still, let's not forget, it's Lotus, right? So there's going to be a lot of question marks here on whether or not the defensive side for Leviathan can hold off because they only need four out of this. I hate I hate the idea of a 9-3 curse. I'm, I'm over it. But I will say, at least... At that least, there's a 9-3 curse. No, stop <laughs> Okay, never mind. I will say, at least so far in Stage 1, attacks out on Lotus wins like almost 70% of the time. So there is a very good reason to think, okay, they got three on defense, whatever. There's still a shot at this thing. Yeah, there certainly is. We'll see how this all pans hands out as we get ready for the second half and send it back over to your casters. We'll definitely see how this pans out now as Sentinels has an opportunity to fight here on the attack. And yeah, the scoreline definitely shows there are at least a stat yeah. undefeated so far in 2024 on Lotus, which is arguably in our second best map, right? When you looked at the vetoes that came out from both of these teams, you're like, okay, well, don't I split? They have a chance here, but let's talk about that in a bit. There's three players crossfiring towards the front B. First blood for Sentinels. Saucy falling back. A C is being thrown to to prevent Leviathan from pushing forward. And the Prowler's even going to notice them very close here at their front B. So Sentinels falling back with a player advantage. Big quick jump there. And they back up for safety. Saucy down quite low. The take on the site's going to be a little yeah. tough, or a retake is going to be a little tougher without Aspas's nades, but they should be able to hold off for now with this info. A little bit of control on A being grabbed back. Dakita goes down. That might have been a quick switch on the map. Now they have to go see on this one. Yeah, it looks like John Cutie wasn't expecting that forward push all the way to Rubble, denying the lurk. There's that C execution for yeah. Sentinels, and it's open. Nobody's really moving in here for Leviathan yet. Trying to make sure there's no other lurkers around the site. Cleared out towards B, put an alarm bot on flank as well. And all of them grouped up towards the Ooh. spawn because they lost that space. So Zekin's the one to move forward. Oh, they're going to haunt. Are they going to? They're proud of this. Yeah, especially when there's a one way coming yeah. through here on the, on the attack. There's a paranoia, this? but Zekin avoids it. There's that dink in the kill. You ask for him to lock in, he'll get two. That's King Answers back. Tens at the ready to trade off his teammate as they're running a three player push outside towards the spawn. Tex is alone now. Beats Timmy the turret, but not Celsus. Sentinels win the pistol round. And a much needed pistol round there. Also having to call the audible and be forced towards C. I'm sure they were happy to not get any uh, defense from Lev when that happened. This is going to be where they pull it back. Lev started off on the attack side here. This is Sentinel's pick. So Lev said, we want to bring you that attack, those attack rounds. And this is where Sentinels has to get them back as well with such a dominating first half. All right, we hop in. Walls up, a big A hit coming in from Leviathan to gain control on the map. And it's just another C hold coming in from Sen. Orbs to Zekin over and over with those first two kills. One already as well before that. Almost to ultimate coming into round three here on the second half. Toxin screen down. And oh, everything's very patient to this. Yeah, John Q is there. trying to do some damage. He'll contact Tex. Oh. And a second one as well, okay. You're starting to see these players playing solo plays, and it's working out for Sentinels. Trying to break the timing is King jumping forward, denied by the Stinger. Last player standing. It becomes a clean entry now for Sentinels. Inside the B site, farming orbs. A second after this plant, one away, and go for that kill. Go for that hunt. It's up against Calm. And this will allow Sentinels to get the showstopper in the next round. In their bonus. 
Not looking. Flips across. Old oh, ready. I love this. Because Zekum was basically, he has been going in on these rounds to get alt. It's like, yeah, I might die. You got my trade, but that's another alt orb. I just picked one up, two in a round almost every time. We're at round three now, second half, and he is going to have that showstopper for Leviathan fighting back with full guns here on this bonus. Really neat way to start this off. The two kills really helping out to get this alt online. And let's say pillars? There's a ping going down there. They're choosing the soft site here out of all three, and this could work out very well. The wall's gonna be different here. It seems to be for Baby Door in Heaven, so Sentinels potentially just wants to fight inside this B-site for a plant, but so far, a little bit of a util is keeping them at bay. There's that wall finally up. Showstopper to clear it out. Now all the way towards the back. Boombot misses, but Elise the sees, and then the, show, uh, the Showstopper gets the pick. Identifying every strat that'll work one after the other. Really giving Levi Leviathan a taste of their own medicine from how we saw it first half. Retake from Link and Heaven, but Baby Door, will they be able to take down Saucy? Because they have lower guns here for a couple of them. You want to stay inside that site. That's the Stinger and also Tens working in tandem. Both of them dropped by Osbos. Six cents coming in from the Duelist, even a third in the round. 22 HP remaining, pain shells across. Lineup Larry by John Cutie. As Osbos is out one HP. Was going inside the Decay Boys of the Wharf. Off. That slows the clock down for a bit. John Q and Zelsis having to work together. There's that Lana Swarm to the live more. Never realized it there. And that will be a round for Sentinels to convert the bonus. Maybe GB should toss to those guys as Lana Larry's, not us. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> those two. Oh my gosh. Not a very big post plant Molly setup map, but you know what? Sentinels is gonna make it happen there and just give Leviathan a hell of a time trying to get back onto the spike. Such a powerful hit, this take. And they're still able to hold it off with two alive after having to put so many in the site. Yeah. Looks like it was a haunt actually. That got the ping towards the back and not a seize, but you'll take whatever to yeah. get that entry with that showstopper. Clean. One watches the push, one's getting the mollies. They had it timed out really well too, so you know that's been practiced until they got it down. Prowlers towards pillars, Leviathan's trying to get info here. They open the door and see if they're gonna get another B push again, but they gotta be ready at A. Sentinels is moving so fast here. Not afraid to make any noise whatsoever. Two players anchoring towards that A side, it's tech. Straight it out by John Cutie as he's able to drop Celsius. Still, maybe they don't expect King here though. Here's the footsteps, nobody's watching it. There's that first kill. Stink bite on the ground, Spike a. is down too. Door not being open, King pinned inside tree, so they'll look for a safer plan. But pain shells are also coming down. Osbos gets to pick. As Sentinels are trying to push towards the back of the site. Finally, King falls down towards the tree. One now Khan trying to push forward, but it's a one for one. Five Showstopper down, at the ready. Saucy is alone. Second satchel closing up. Oh no. Swings out and it connects. They are, that is big. Three for Osbos. They dove right into the site without really knowing what the state of it was. A few nades in. They all felt comfortable to control with each other. And I think the big miss out there was the door was open by tens, but nobody went in to clear and nobody saw what was in door, so nobody peeked around because they thought it was clear. Yeah, they thought That's it was just a mistake. Text in there. That's a mistake. Right, usually with these setups that you see from a Killjoy, it's a Killjoy solo site hole. Right, right. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, that was a what happened. So one of the protocols was very missed there. 10 to six now, Leviathan actually stopped the pressure here from Sentinel second half. Molly has to come out. Leviathan gets a bit of read on who's where on the map. And the Prowler does see it close. Man, Lev is just delay, delay. It doesn't look like they can make plays off this, but they're just like, no, you need to back up Sentinels and rethink the next hit as Lev take rubble control. The thing is, they use a lot of util towards this B site and C. There's not too much to hold back except bodies here on the C site. Now, John Cutie sees at least one leaning out towards rubble that engages Sentinels to pressure out towards the C site, but Pain Shells, once again, more util being used by Leviathan slows them back, but we've mentioned the amount of util that's now missing is the call from John Cutie at the minute mark. Rotate over now, group up towards the seaside, grab this orb, and you have a nightfall ready. Face when they notice John Cutie on the A site with the KJ, they know there's no KJ util on this side as well. Becomes an easy entry for a plan. Lev with some low members here, gonna make the retake difficult, but Aspas starts them off right. 
Yeah, have no choice but to fight towards spawn now because he lost control in front. And Celsus drops two. Last three of Leviathan, a death ball towards the back of the spawn. Yeah, First to contact clear. will be Zelsis. To, to actually find the information, but I mean, the fall from the Prowlers are going to be there. High, low stack, just at the top of the box, there's at the ramp. Keep him in there. Nice satchel first. Kong gets the first kill. Oh, and oh, gets both no them. way! Kong with the fourth kill! Onto Sasi! I mean, combining four kills together on both Aspas and Kong on that retake, and that was everything for the satchel to start things first, to break that crosshair placement. Van Silly, we are witnessing it from Lavia Town right now. No it's like they can do out. no wrong. Let's watch this replay again. So they push spawn, two huge kills coming in from Sentinels, and Lev has no choice but to re-clear that same spot. Every eye is on that spot, and they still get all the kills they need. That is going to put some momentum in the squad right now. Calm, overhyped, and it is deserved. 11 to 6 here. Two in favor of Leviathan. Is actually, I thought Sen was going to snap back again. It's usually we see some rounds go back and forth here. Find you. But not the case. A 3 1 1 by Sen now as they try to get some map control. Lose one already. Spike down. Same See. position where Zekin was playing towards the mound before, but it's Mazino that falls on that right side of the mound. Aspas falling back. Has Util once again to delay and deny. Boombox to find information and in pain shells if there's going to be any type of aggression behind that. But for Sentinels, they're creeping up here slowly towards the B site. Might be opening door, might be hitting towards B. We see all these leans coming out from Leviathan. Yeah. They're just ready here to play at least some numbers. A lot of this early pressure from Lev has come off of paranoia, whether they open a door, whether they try to take a little bit more space. So that requires now comms utility. And they don't, do not get as much info there as they can't push out. King. It's a good distance for the judge. They come in close. The decay. There's oh, that the hit. Instantly gets traded out, though. Allowing Sentinels I to move the inside the site and get the plant down and off the plant. Oh, our John yeah. Cutie has the pit. But the counter, once again, is a ninth fall available for Calm on the retake. In, and it gets popped right away. Door opens up. It's a one for one. They lose control now of the front B side. Our Sentinels force oh, a play inside the pinnacle. Tens and John Cutie. Satchel inside right now as Aspas is trying to clear it out. Now slowly bleeding to King. Trying to spray across, and it's up against John Cutie. There's time. Winning a reset on the HP. Trying to get lucky with the sprays. John Cutie repivots towards the top of the site. Sprays in on the tap. <laughs> that required some dancing from the side of Sentinels. Being tagged by the ultimate, Nightfall gives you the trail. And uh, they were just trying to follow all the Sentinels members inside that pit. Another C mound control. I think at this point, both teams know they can get a first kill over there because there's going to be a fight. And this just got hectic, but not for John Cutie. Filming a new one. Cinematic. All right. We move on, 11 to seven. Lockdown's there, King's got the ultimate to maybe stave off a of site as this push is from the left side of the map. Full come around on the map here to see if they can get this pressure. Sentinels may not have the timing. Actually, I think there was a bit of a knowledge or here there by Zelsis. He looked to the left for just a second on the mini map and said, yo, we need to run forward. Already had to turn outside towards front B as well. Knew that the pinch was coming with all that util coming out from the C side. A one for one or at least Aspas with the Hero Guardian, Mazina with the Stinger, the rest with pistols. Showstopper and a lockdown ready for Sentinels. In their favor to try to close out this round. All of them pushing towards the back of the site. Nobody rotates in and across because they know the pinch from Leviathan was coming from Baby Door and from Seaside. More delays, paranoia being thrown. Not allowing really Leviathan to set up for the retake. There's finally the first contact. Now going left and right, peeking one by one. Also dropping one by one. Delays on the Nano Swarms. Trade are perfect for Sentinels as they're closing the gap now by three rounds. Zelsis with lockdown coming out of this one. A clean A hit there by Sentinels. We're not put off their game by being pushed around the map. Also knew there were only pistols on the chase, really. And great opening shots to hit this one. So Sentinels, uh, obviously power in numbers for them right now. 
the last round or so, Mazina was taken out, so they have had an easier chance, but the rounds that Sentinels isn't finding the opening kill, they are suffering in sight with the way the Leviathan is having these reads. So we've seen the long sea fight over and over from Sentinels saying, okay, Lev, if you're gonna come out and fight us, then fight us, we'll take that, because the sight take is easier. It's the little things they're hitting. I mean, in the beginning, Zekin was basically farming for alts, looking to get shot too, if that would have been a way he got an orb. So Zen have had an idea of what to do since the beginning. And right now it's to hit these alts next round as both teams get a little chat in this timeout. Great call, as you say, they're not afraid to fight out towards the seaside. Yeah. When the pressure is coming in towards A and most of Sentinels are on that seaside, well, John Cutie is doing a great job getting that info and also slowing things down in the pushes here from Leviathan. Uh, Lev also reacts with quite a bit of utility on the BC side too. And that's so. the thing. Zen using feels good about that. So much util to fight back on that mountain side and having less on those retakes here. Maybe that call would be what we try to be a little bit more, have a little bit more portal calls here and save a bit of that util for the retakes. Yeah. And when you're starting this round and we're back in the server here, you're not really seeing Leviathan really set up to go for that three player push on A, three player push towards C. No, it's, it's more reactive right now for sure. Yeah. They're trying to figure out what's happening, make the right moves so they can have that utility for the retake, which it, it does make sense. Sentinels is now hitting their shots, coming online a bit. This is their map for a reason. Let's see what they have left in the strat book. Aspas just a bit on the off angle here for the peak. Woo! Showstopper ready. Stays. Comes out, connects oh. on to Celsius. Meanwhile, though, Com has fallen, so they did have some sort of a trade here towards the B side, but advantage already comes out for Leviathan. Also, a pit came out on that C side. Imagine you get into the round with a showstopper and a lockdown, and those are the things that go down first. That did. <laughs> Sentinels did not need that start, and Lev is very happy with the condition of this round. Able to stay in default positions. Killjoy utility still smattered about A. Yeah, this should be a lev round. Almost no deaths if they can help it. I'm able to dodge the Prowler, too. Ten's just getting ready to TP somewhere. It's a seize right in. Yeah. Tried to guess it, that he was still trying to hide in that cubby towards that waterfall sign. And unfortunately there for Sentinels, it was an off angle closer to the boxes. An easy win there, John Cutie trying to create some space. Clearing out all that util on the A site, now realizes the last nano, jump spot kill. Should have done it with a classic, why not? But yeah, Sassi's gonna meet up with them. They'll get a plant and a nightfall out of this, so there's still some sort of hope here for Sentinels on a post plant. But Leviathan are at the ready. Three of them grouped up here at the staircase. Pushing. Trying to focus a high-low that might be a swing, but I don't know if they have the time. Three now, about to approach. Oh, the Nightfall was looking towards the spawn. They were looking for a timing to push in that area, and it's a backstab instead. Leviathan with this defuse now, or at map point against Sentinel's map pick. That's just one of those moments. Even tell yourself, like, I'm gonna count to five, and then, <laughs> then I'll turn. I'm gonna give this time. They're not gonna, okay, they're not pushing. What? To, oh. Bam. <laughs> Oh my. That's, I, I think that right there is a really just good window into what's been happening to send this game. What Lev has been able to put on the server in these situations where they have the side of Sentinels in, in a rotation. They're pushing spawn and catching Sentinels off guard. It just seems like those little moments. And it's really, like you say, who's to blame? Who's yeah. to blame except for timing? 12 to eight here, Lev. Looking to put the last and finishing touches here on Sentinel's map pick, Lotus. The sea mount control again, it's gonna be a big fight. Showstopper. Oh, the dodge! Hits the front of the site. Baited out. No contact. They still have more ults to work with, with on the attack though. As for Leviathan, they have their lockdown currently run. anchored up on the A site. Nightfall as well, if they do lose a bit of control of the site. So many things to layer on here to keep it secure and keep C. A winning round for Sentinels. All the members of Lev make it out, but Sentinels has made a home now in C site. Nightfall comes out quite early because they're expecting Lev to just push in. Yeah, especially that the lockdown got used. Now they'll keep him at bay for a bit, but here is the winning moment or a key piece is Tex. Tex with the lockdown. Com with support now dropping the players trying to fight back towards the waterfall. Numbers dwindling for Sentinels. It's up to John Cutie and Celsius. They're taking all these fights. There's that lockdown. There's some free space towards the back. There's no util to throw here for Leviathan. There's the deniability delays here with the snake bite. Both of them pinned towards the back of the side. There's that first wing. Second shot coming through. Oh my God, John Cutie! And a 
laying down the law. John Cutie saves the round for Sentinels. Absolute cinema. Holy John Q.T. does it again. The clutch in B for a pivotal round. And this. So many alts used here to not secure this round would have meant the game, but the pressure doesn't matter to John Cutie. Do you want it? I want it. I want it. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Do you want it? Do you want it, he says? I want it, they said. Let's go. Sentinels want it. Fans, let's see if they got it. It's going to be ultimate coming up for John Cutie if they can source some orbs. And they've pushed a little bit of a lower armor buy here to Leviathan, but with this rubble control, Sen's taking it slow. They do want to take it slow. They know the economy's somewhat broken here for Leviathan. Three chances for the defensive sign, so they will go for the force by around only the Sheriff of King. So you can see that it, it, Lev, they're feeling, they, they do not rotate this much so far in the past few rounds, but already you have Calm going back and forth to the site. Now they're rotating Mazzino back out, back to a 1-2-2 trying to play reactive against Sentinels right now because they know Sentinels could bring this to 12. Prowler out, great information on Pillars, seeing at least a few there yeah. coming in. And because of that, you're see Calm and also Mazino grouping up here towards Baby Door. Trying to open door, trying to create a diversion on the other end. Bold players on the A side from Sentinels now getting ready to break that door. Boombot now to clear it up. There's that first blood. Instant trade. Calm waiting on the other end. Hit by the paranoia. Turns around on the reload. John Cutie got caught there. Couldn't reload fast enough. And Calm gets the pick. Hard to get information. It's not cleared once again. Such a tight space, but he finds so much room. Now Zels is trying to save the round for Sentinels. A two versus three. Zels is swinging out here. Wins it against Calm. Aquas with the backstab. King gets that pick. Tens. It's all up to tens. It's One smoke. Two. Shrouded step, jumps part from Last Boss. There's that first headshot, the tap on the flank, and the flank across with a Red Bull clutch! Another one coming through for Sentinels! Is that even real? The pressure is just making them better. Sentinels have called upon everything they have in these clutch rounds. John Cutie stepping up. Remaining. Tens. One enemy remaining. Oh, absolutely godlike. <laughs> In shambles. Leviathan. Yeah, I don't know about Kaplan with the whole like I get nervous there and uh, <laughs> losing my hair. I think this continues on. 12 to 10. Oh, with the way Lev has started some of these last rounds, you'd think he would just lock it in. And we have Icebox next. Both teams, <laughs> both teams showed so golden on Icebox last time they played. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. And Sentinels now two away. Tying this up. This should be a locked in round for Sentinels. The Sheriff's there on Lev's side. No panic from Sen. They go through. We should get an 11 to 12 here with a possible OT after this round. Especially we talked about the buy that Leviathan had before this timeout. Force buying around King's Sheriff. They have nothing to work with in this round. Ashiko. This will give a chance here, some breathing room for Sentinels, if they can convert this one. Potentially continuing the protocols here of controlling the orb. There. Look at this push out from Leviathan though, they have so much pressure on the A side. And Sentinels, it's a one gear move forward, clear the C yeah. site and plan. I think they're realizing Lev is having a tough time reacting instantly to these. It's just Sen have to be just as scared about the post plants as Lev would be about Sen's. Oh, the shots are off. In for one, two players. John Cutie wasn't expecting a third. There's a paranoia that's going to hit at least one of them. Zelsa stays alive, and that's going to slow things down, at least on that side. Give me a chance here for Leviathan to creep in from Waterfall and also from the spawn. That's King and Tex. John Cutie has a pit available if needed, but he's playing it from the mountain. Tex has fallen. Sword of Planet for them, and as they're trying to pick up the Vandal, Zelsa does not allow Tex to upgrade. 
King now alone. Running a forward, running across, jump spotting and spotting King. Yeah, he'll get that shot. Yeah. Spike will go off no matter what, though. An expensive round for Sentinels, though, as they move into round number 24. That's the question. Where is the money going to be? 3,400, 5,300 could be a buy around tens there. After he gets a smoke in, you can see the credits they have. Saucy at 55, and the first shots here to drop some of the weapons. Uh, the Molly follow up here from Sentinels was beautiful for delay. Three Mollies, as well as the KJ, the two Viper. And they just wait out the round with King inside as Zelsis just goes a little ham, has some fun in sight, knowing that round's over, getting himself an alt point one away from lockdown no matter what now. So smart moves all around. Sentinels have done everything they can to get these rounds, even with Leviathan poking in there. 16, 17, round 20. Sentinels have found this C mound fight to be so beneficial once they grab that control, it hasn't really been the A focus. It seems like Lev has the read, the ability to lurk a little bit more than Sen want on the A, on the A focus. So it's been BC, BC for Sentinels, even if the round starts today. Let's see if they hit it again. Once John Cutie gets the site, you can expect the ultimate here. So I think we've seen that at B mostly. Maybe they hit B again as a late one through door. But it is up to Lev here. They've had so many chances to close this out and Sentinels are gonna push them to OT if they can't do anything about round 24. It almost looks at the beginning of the round here when they had the Nightfall versus the Pit that they are. We're gonna finish towards the B side and said Leviathan are gonna play a little bit thing, uh, things a little bit more cautiously. Calm getting ready to throw here this Haunt to get information outside yeah. the A side. But for Sentinels off this timeout, will they try to go aggressive or just break that util, Fine. wait it out? They'll wait it out. Both the orb and the wall thrown. So if they want to come back, oh, retake becomes that much easier, but they're holding. Making sure the pressure isn't anywhere. They don't want it to be. Oh, that's a move up. You see the orb picked up. They're going to continue to press forward. Remember, it's the ultimate for Zelsis here as well. So that's two big ones. And they initiate on A. King's there. Hit Just hit. By the paranoia. Manages to fall back on time. Seas could not catch him. John Tutti watching the staircase. Lockdown available as the orb got picked up. Nightfall being thrown on the defense. Second oh, trying to clear three. it up against information on three. A lot of them are hit by the Nightfall. Tens made it behind. Dude kills out with the Vandal. Lockdown in the front. Tex trying to push forward. Denied by Sasi. It's up to Osbos and Mazzino. Two versus four. Pit comes out. And a plant also comes in. Here. They try to skirt under the lockdown. Not gonna be tough here, but Mazzino, he's able to at least get one. Trade it back, at least with some pop shots on Sentinels, but Mazzino's still alive, looking to walk back in. Has a paranoia, one HP, TP's across off the paranoia, but just got hit by the edge of the Nano Swarm. Osboss now has to come huge. Watch Cindy King down, Spike being watched. Boom. Backstab by Zelsis. We are playing the extra innings. Sentinels bring us to OT on a 9-3 first half. The rounds required clutching, and it's required many of them. This is hard earned. And Leviathan has slipped a little. Not able to close it out. Three rounds to make it happen, but Sentinels find a way through each time now, and everybody's starting to come online. This is the Sentinels you know as the number one team in the world right now. Able to come back from anything. And that's really a question right now is we have not seen Sentinels, what, down 5-0, to start a map? It looks rough, but they still have some of those solutions to make it work and bring us to OT. We are in. No operators around, and the sea mound fight continues. Zekin trying to get across, avoids the Prowler. Two inside the smoke, there's a trade-off, a two for one, and inside the Great. smoke, Calm evens it out. Leviathan falling back, turret and Tex are still watching for that push towards B. They'll see nothing yet pivot towards the A site where Zelsis is set up here with the full cooking utility on the A site and the Odin. I'm gonna stay together. Looking for Prowler, sees here. Do not have the ability to watch back now unless it's an alarm bot. They're just out of range as they start making their way forward. Baby door could be broken, but it looks like John Cutie's not going to make that sound. They'll be rotating somewhere else. 
but they're playing it safe so they can all get here for the retake. Bomb grenade out. Already using they're gonna all push. They're gonna push. Yeah. Behind the prowler inside the site, though, it's a one for one. Free plant now for Calm. Spike plant. Sentinel split you. across and looking to regroup towards the spawn. John Kuhn and Saucy. Lots there. of util in their hands as well. And they have deniability with the Nano Swarms. Potential lineups here as Texas playing all the way back towards Rubble. And the alarm bot's gonna be the first point of contact. There. Oh, the jiggle. Well, they see one. They know what the Texas is playing, and they know he could potentially be playing those lineups, so they had to move forward. There's the alarm bot. Kong with the off angle, now tries to get the backstab contact. It works out, catching John Cutie off guard. Now the Nightfall comes out, and Tex gets the pick. And Leviathan, they finally find something or are back in the lead on that point. Really clean movement from Com there at the end to kind of strafe back and forth, give him a hard time to get that off angle trade back in. And yeah, Leviathan with the attack. Slowly playing it towards that right side, able to find the shots until plant. Now, I thought they might be playing a little far out of sight, but they were ready for the retake. And uh, Sea Mound has just been an absolute <laughs> war zone for these teams. Trying to vary the way that they're getting the paranoias in, working under and uh, around the one ways. Incredible stuff that both teams are in somewhat of a gentleman's agreement to say, all right, we're starting at sea again, let's go. And they will take this fight. Time out for Leviathan here. They take the round and they take some time. Yeah. Discussing how this one might go. They have, it's been an A pressure to start. Sometimes they're leaving King to that right side. I believe they did that on a pistol or a bonus round. And then a few rounds later, doing a very nice job of burying up the way they're trying to play this. Ospos 30 and 14, another 30 bomb for this man. Of course. Absolutely killing it out there. Toe to toe, blow for blow. And yeah, after this timeout, you're talking about it. Will we try to lurk again or maybe just fight out towards the sea mound? Instead, as the bearers are still up here. All of Sentinels concentrated on this B side tank. If they try to contact this time, will they? Be able to swing a little bit water here against Aspas, who also seems to has a, have to, a good read, rather, into the Sentinel's contact play. Pillar. Pillars for Sentinels. Their beat protocol already. is strong take, but this is the strong site. It's a jump spot. There's that paranoia on both ends. Kong is able to drop yeah, Saucy and also the spike just to slow down that push out from Sentinels. Spike knowledge means no one on the map moves. You just see him backing up in sight a little bit more to play it safe. Anchor points being held by two on C now. Heaven overside by Mazzino as Sentinels look to restructure. They could get a lot of info. Oh, at the top of the dome. Com just got spotted and King has to fight back. Another one for one. Pain shells are trying to push him away. And as mentioned, both of these teams not afraid to fight. Oh my gosh. 2v2, second one away from an ult. Tex rotating over towards the seaside with Mazzino. Sentinels will still take their time to walk it up. They have Alt Orb. Still there, did not get picked up. This is gonna be Showstopper. And you don't want to actually give your position away. Do they take it? Do they plant for it? Gotta move they for plant a plant for instead. It. You have to play the contact. Clearing out towards the tree. Also being meticulous, left. clearing towards the back of the site, watching drop, seeing that util. And there's that showstopper now ready on the pulse Oh line. my gosh. Where do they put it? What's the safest spot? You can get your blast packs out. Yeah. So Sentinels is going to let them walk into sight, even to get that first touch on Spike. And Zekin may just ult and hold it. Yeah. With with John Cutie watching the angle, then they'll they'll burst out. You got an orb. You got snake bites on top of that. Showstopper is going to be the is. first one. Just ult the and first hold thing it. to delay, just to actually even take out the smoke yep. away here from Mazina, who does have a second one though. Door is about to open. <laughs> Satchel towards the air. Just make sure kidding. that nobody's there. Sleep bite coming in as the door opens. So that's one of them wasted towards the back doorway. A pinch attempted to be moved forward. Mazzino runs through the door. John Cutie trades it right back though. John again. Tap on that spike. There's not enough time. And John Cutie plays in time, plays the win, and keeps it at a tie game. Oh my gosh. The play, Sentinels run down the clock. Overtime. And Leviathan are forced into another overtime here. Let's switch it up one more time. The opening kills. And then the fight at sea again. Can't forget about that. 
Oh my gosh. This play. You saw how much Second wanted to kind of fire and draw attention, but also knew he couldn't give coverage to John at that moment. John with a very fast play and then times it out. Sea Mountain Control is on. And three players this time, one TP on the top. That was uh, that was 10, sorry, to start. Yeah. Just to see if there was going to be more pressure from Leviathan out that area. Stalemate, players rotating back, leaning up and scaling towards the A side. There will be utility that's going to stuff them out. Alarm bot spawn it and I'll play just outside yeah. of it here for this, Leviathan. This is the equivalent of sitting in front of the Cypher Trap, oh, waiting for back. somebody to peek. They're ready for Sen even to do a jump peek as they are that far up. I don't know if Celsus has heard anything in A just yet. He's still kind of moving back and forth like he wants to get some knowledge or even pop the door to be a little scary. But man, there's about to be a party on that side of the map and Sentinels only have the two. And the call from Sentinels after that info is to, to rotate C. towards C. So all of Leviathan looking to group up and there's a storm in as a group with the alarm bot. Zeus is forced to fall back. Satchel comes across, and he's out in the open in a one and done. Hit by the pain shells, oh, hit by a snake bite, and also gets dropped. Now John Cutie has to hold alone. Hits, gets hit by the seas, and also gets dispatched here by Aspas. So much util coming in, they can't decide what to shoot at or where to shoot. Aspas also moving forward. Zekin made too much noise. Showstopper ready. Oh, Misses, does some damage on bit. the Saucy though, but he's pinned. Really nothing that. Sentinels could really do outside of this paranoia. And a flawless round for Se uh, for Leviathan, rather. And both of these teams, Sentinels and Leviathan, continue to have some good results on their attack sites. It's all about being back on attack right now. And so we question, uh, why not more than 33? Well, let's see if Aspas can do that, because he's at 33 right now. And this, again, every time that Lev's coming through tree, they're taking a main control there near stairs. That, whoever's in that spot, second was last time, got seized and hit with so much util. It just seems like such a hot spot for where Led's protocol is, that right outside tree area, right side plant. Ah, oh, they're vibing. They're feeling it right now. They know things are going their way on these attack rounds, but it's the question of the defensive side. What is gonna make it work? Sentinels are gonna be calling a timeout here. Organize what that might be because it has been a rinse and repeat almost of every round to see who can do the most damage at sea as they punch each other <laughs> right in the face, back and forth, and then work the rest of the map. The late A plays, we haven't really seen the B focus as that has kind of been uh, rebuttaled immediately every time someone tries to get there unless you're entering with an ultimate. So it is a really big question. What's, what's going to work? That's not this C push and then a default around the map. We'll see. They'll have an answer for us right now. It's about to come out of the timeout. Round 28, Lev back on match point, but this just seems to favor the attacker's aggression. All right, a little bit of a C play here. It doesn't look like they'll fight it as much. It's not Zekin over at C now. They're just gonna sm or smoke it out. Maybe get a haunt through to detect what is pushed. Bring them down. A little Prowler status. And yeah. yeah, they back off so much quicker. Ken's doing a little bit of a Mazino play there from TPing backwards on the boxes. Yeah. Although you're getting good information here. Calm just throughout the Prowler. Got contact in the front. Door now gets opened up. No paranoia being thrown here by Mazino. Still, uh, Spass is going to rotate across, though, to support Calm. Calm buddy out. Boom, bot out. Instantly gets shot down, trying to get a wall bang. But it's a stalemate once again. Sentinels are pulling yeah. back. Big A main control, right? Or rubble control right now. That, that reclear is going to be very difficult because they want to use their next util for sight, not just to clear a position outside of a site. So we're getting C here. It's going to be the most effective for the utility Sentinels has left. And it's a bit of a read with yeah. that rubble push for Lev. They have the perfect read, right? Because of that rubble push and they yeah. hear the first piece of util, nobody's really engaged back on that side. Too late to rotate towards A. So we're going to have close range battles now. Oh, TP. 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 Mazzino, and again. comes in. Last boss trying to fight back towards the waterfall. Answers back with one. But C site is now open for Sentinels to plant. 3v2. Util, there's Molly's there. No, just the Viper's bites coming out. Doesn't hit anybody just yet. King already moved inside, though. There's that second snake bite. Door also being opened. Spotted and stopped by John Cutie. King is now alone. Up against Tens on a 1v1, at least to start. 
manages to find safety, find some cover, spoke up as well and play with his teammate. There's that contact towards the front, John Cutie. Another multi-kill coming in from the IGL. They knocked the crown off a of king. Another round coming in here on to Lotus. Round 29. As we get Leviathan back on attack. For Sentinels to win this round, absolutely wild. All the information that Leviathan had on the right side, Sentinels mid-round calling right now, and how they're forced to attack some of these sites is really, really incredible because it's not putting the pressure on them that Lev is expecting. Yeah. All right, back in. Even the coaches are ready to see two, <laughs> two in their favor here. This is getting wild. And a little techie pause. Little techie pause coming in. A little break for everybody. Breather, take in everything that's been happening. Let's remember what it took Sentinels to get here, right? It's very uncharacteristic that these were some 4K rounds, absolute clutch rounds that were bringing Sentinels back into this game. Usually, those are rounds Sentinels is still just taking away from their opponent while they're three or four rounds up. This is really one of the first ones where we saw Sentinels struggle a bit, and then they became Sentinels a little bit into that second <laughs> half, just absolutely shutting down all of Lev's plans and being able to come out on top with the mid-round calls. And as you saw here, we had a little bit of a mouse issue and a yeah. sound issue, and this is in the hands of the IGL here of Leviathan. This Thing, is King yeah. trying to figure it out. Or Bibi Bay, I don't know. I don't yeah, know who's true. playing today. True. But yes, uh, to, still to a lot of Riz. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> but at least to go back to that storyline, right? Talking about how Sentinels, yes, we're seeing them turn it around here on that second half. It's yeah. the Sentinels that we know that number one team that we currently have here in Valorant Worldwide. But Leviathan, when we started now the kickoff going into the split of the VCTs, going into the stage one, on paper to look like one of the top teams moving in, right? Because on mm. paper, they have an international all star roster. And you're definitely starting to see those come slowly yeah. into pieces. It took some time. It took a bit of novelty to test out, but when you're going back into what's more comfortable now for these players, you also see the synergy, something that was missing from last week. And Calm being the vibe merchant, stealing that pull away here from Zelsis and his interview during kickoff was like, hey, I just want to make sure that I'm able to support Ospas as much as I could. Exactly. And he's definitely doing that, right? And even they lost that previous round, the C's actually caught three players as well. Yeah. So Util is good, the trade is good, but the fights are better on both sides. And the desk mentioned it, that Calm did not feel like he was starting the season like he wanted to. It felt a little bit like the start on EG where there was not a groove. Seemed like he was able to focus on that and shake it off here for the first game of the week. Bring them down. And where else will they go? I have the Still, sea mound. It's like there's gold under that sand that everybody has to guard. <laughs> and now the B push. Not too many here in overtime, if any, that we've seen. But this was a round where John Cutie was able to clutch. They have come away with wins here. Looks like they have metal detectors too, because they realized that nobody was fighting towards the C side, any C side anymore. Perfect rotate towards B. Pain shells to deny. Calm cannot get a plant yeah. yet. Out of charge. But all of Leviathan are still holding inside. Delay. Plant will be successful Spike this time planted. around. Utility being thrown by Tex on the post plant. Again, a tie game here in round number 29 in this first yeah. map of the series. And Sentinels are just trying to find the right timing. And you gotta be telling me they don't expect the paranoia from Tens to come through this door. It's been almost every time. And it's going into sight. He might actually choose sight. If he makes it to switch, it usually goes through door. Gonna go ahead and smoke off one side so he only gets a few members to be seeing here. They don't even know! Perfect one hits the first. There's the haunt for a counter. Players are stuck towards the back. Now he runs inside the side, gets a backstab on King, but runs out of bullets. Second is still there though. The Nafus alone cannot get it done. Right. Leviathan with the slip there to have three and be main and not know that that paranoia has come through almost every time. Sentinels rinse and repeat. This is why they run these protocols. Switching sides. Same thing there. It works this time again. Sentinels get that win at B. Being able to retake it, very nice. Now they're on to attack. We see one of the wins come from the defensive side, bucking the trend here of overtimes. And it's Sentinels to grab it. Where do they go for this round? Look at me, just shooting everything. I'll second over there, fragging out, doing what he can. That was the thing, nobody was looking at 10s, right? He had perfect U till the sneak he ran, If he had more bullets, that was more kills, for oh, yeah. sure. Oh yeah. For sure. Thankfully, there's, there's yeah. less bullets. About 10s is just gonna go on multi-kills nonstop. But back in the server, Sentinels in the lead. Beautiful retake, allowing them to close out the first map. Zelsa sees the aggression coming out from front B. 
trying to fight back against both players. Yeah. Kam and Aspas in tandem once again. And in tandem falling back. Sentinels pushing now towards the A side so as there's fast. two players out under defensive there. But Tens just got caught coming out of his shrouded step. But John Cutie stuck behind. He's at the staircase. He hears a rotate. This is an opportunity to bring Baby Door and move towards V for a plant, and they'll do so. Slowly moving through. A little bit of a lurk on stairs right now by John Cutie. Could separate this entire squad of Lev, whether it's one or two. Still gonna Johnson stall them out. Down. Oh, and this is. Shh, everybody quiet. And now, oh! that's two kills for him, and second is there. Two versus two, second and Saucy. Spike planted. No delays as Zelsus has fallen. Paranoia being thrown out on the defense. Aspas trying to fight against second. Superstar against Superstar. Now the sign to push back and defend his teammate. Defusing the spike. There's that lean on the first to look back on the other. Seconds with the sprays, but cannot get it done. Aspas getting these kills. Aspas also getting a kill record for the for the BCT Americas. And we're once again Overtime. going into more innings. Absolutely wild. Are we really? Oh my gosh. This play right here. We thought it was going to be the kingpin. Everything gets torn apart here, but that's not the case. There's still a bit of life left on this retake. Oh. The control, the defuse, calm, cool, collected. Oh my god. Here we go. We are back in. It doesn't matter. Two rounds now taken from that defensive side. We're back to our a bit of our seam mound fight, but still Lev's a little more patient on it this time. The Sentinels look to gain that ground. This root push on A, though, is gaining some serious ground without being seen just yet. Oh, they're making noise right away, actually, at A. Zelsus is looking to fight with the Odin. Going back. Swarm to delay. Burma, no kills. We stay hot now for Leviathan. Backpedaling once again towards the spawn in. Again, same type of strat, leaving King. Yeah. Just lurking around now. But Sentinel's just taking up the same defensive position everywhere. Tens is already pushed out here. A little bit of info. He can get out safely, drop back, teleport into C. And he'll have his paranoia through door here. Second should be able to just peek out as the smoke pops and see one to know they're coming. Doesn't even look, actually. Just goes for the nade delay. Pre-fired shots, and now the plant is not for long B. Leviathan choosing to fight inside the site, choosing to fight towards the spawn prowler to get the first blood Let's resources, and they're just swinging around! again! Back to a two versus two, John Judy has a pit to work with after their trip kill. He understands there's still that lurk from King, so it comes down to the smoke on smoke. Tens versus Mazzino, spotted, forced to fall back, hit by the paranoia, hit by the snake bite, and also killed! Up to King with that timing in the back, the backstab there to a 1v1, snake bite, Tens trying to find the timing, King staying tucked in, King getting the headshot, and a Red Bull clutch. Leviathan are back at that point. You can't ask for more from King Switching right now. Side. Going into the overtime Match games point. that they had the last time on Icebox, it was so tough for King to find a frag, for him to get past those moments, but here coming up huge, nothing stopping the left squad on that defense as they push right through. Okay, John Cutie for a moment, for a moment. God, so many multi-kills coming from this guy right now. That kid can frag, but it was all up to King right here. Dang, King feeling good about the last one as his team brought it around. And they cycled these rounds together. Now Lev's on defense. And Sentinels wants to move quick. We're already here. Paranoia towards Tree. Alarm bot now still up around that smoke. Deniability, there's delay here with the snake bites towards the A side, but Zeki made it through. He has a chance now to play towards the staircase, but look at this push. Oh, this is gonna be bad. They're flying. Zelsus thinks he has a timing. They're flying. Oh, thankfully here, Saucy stays behind. Here's the footsteps. There's that first line up for the second kill. Easily done there for Sentinels. C side now open. Zelsus has full control. Not once in this OT have we really had a push like that. And it's called the one time they turn for the flank. Sentinels get two, and Zelsus is pushed for another one. It looks like we're getting another round here. This is going to be an easy plan. It's all up to Mazzino. And I think they're going to quiet him down quite soon. Unless he comes up huge, but with this plan and a nightfall at the ready, and even the alarm bot. Yep. All eyes on spawn. Can't stay quiet anymore. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna stay quiet though as he gets hit by the nightfall. 
Pain shells now, more delays, and you definitely know here at this point. With no util coming through, he TPs across, getting there sprayed, is. getting picked off. We might be in for a long series, but I'm here for it. Switching sides. John Cutie oh getting close to that 30. It's gonna be a why not 40 for us, boss. This is getting insane right now. These trades. Again, timing. Orb goes down. That's when you're finding it. I mean, we just saw the knife come out in that situation when Saucy took down two, so you can see what kind of advantage they have on calling this timing, calling the rotation. Sends Macro is on point to collect some of these rounds, but so is Let's. We go again. You mentioned there 39 kills for Osbox. We mentioned the record that he was holding. Or now he now holds. The yeah, record was 35 holds. before. And now he has 39 in one single map here at the VCT Americas. Crazy. The more rounds we go, the more it's going to be difficult <laughs> to actually beat this record. But Leviathan in round number 33, a bit of util being used towards the C-set again. It's almost like a broken it's... record, but it's a favorite song that we have on repeat. Yeah. This is one of the most quiet rounds of the entirety of OTs that we have. The contact play to A has been happening, but no show C, no show B here to start. Your first acknowledgement is going to be that door opening, and three stack that site for Sentinels. Once they break that door, there's going to be delays here with the Nano Swarm. Sassi able to score first, though, towards that A site. Another spray towards the staircase to drop calm. That's less you to the hop Aspa, so he's going to have to do it alone, walking inside the B site. But there's a lot of push and pull here on yeah. both ends. Prowler being thrown on a defense, doesn't spot any opposition close here towards the A site. Now Sentinels will have to choose to play the retake as the plant now comes in for Leviathan on B. Really nice bit of macro there by Lev, playing that baby door, playing text to push the site. The shot towards tens, they know they've done a bunch of damage. It's All a perfect them. line here to flash towards the B site. Yeah. They're waiting for the timing on it. King, though, continues to push and lurk. Drops Zelsus on a rotation. There's that ping. There's that paranoia. It's going to hit two of them. Texto playing the off angle up towards heaven. And with these kills, oh Leviathan again. Answer right. on their attack. How does it go that they have such a good read on each other every round? Oh my gosh, it just feels like a team should run away with it, but our OT reset, the swap of the side, is giving teams enough life each time. Saucy with the sauce there through the smoke and the push-up. That's the second time we've seen Lev do that in this OT. Last time they were actually in the defender's spawn. This time they're just pushing heaven. They are meeting Sentinels at the front door when they retake the site. But it's now Sentinels to try and push Lev off defensive positioning. And that's a great call because Sentinels are known with these protocols for the retakes. You're not giving them a chance they to, to set, set up. up. But when it comes down to fighting, Sentinels are also very good at that since we're seeing such a back and forth battle here on the attack half of both of these teams. In this overtime, round number 34, door being open, and this time Sentinels, they want to change a little bit here. A re-hit back towards the seaside. Tens looking to paranoia off the contact, and that is going to push Manzillo back inside the C site. Feels like forever since we've been at C. They head back, the fight wasn't as grand as before, so a bit more util here for both teams to be able to make a retake or a site take happen. Checking all the corners. And they push out without cross map control. They're actually just activating and pulling down the Viper gas at A, so they may have a bit back as John Cutie presents with the team towards that side of the map, leaving Zekin as a bit of a lurker here. And yeah, they're gonna full retake on this and walk it back up. Thing is, they can't really read line. They're not really retaking for Leviathan. They have a left. perfect read right now, keeping two players inside yeah. the A site. Text with full util, King again. Here's the audio. A nuisance towards the tree. Snake bite to slow down, 20 seconds left. You know they're hitting the site. And as they make the noise, they break the noise and actually break the door to move towards the B site. Another pivot here with 13 yeah. seconds left, but there's no U till to stop them for the plant. Room to breathe left. now for Sentinels. A five versus five post plant. Really nice job with the Zekin Lurk there, controlling the audio in the middle of the map. Lockdown comes in. And this is going to be tough for Leviathan to get it. Just off to the side, it is not going to work. They'll have to keep them back. And the paranoia was used already earlier on in the round, so they have nothing here once they reopen the door. A TP inside the site, Tans is trying to find information. Hit here. At least sees a C's in the front. 
There's that first swing out. Tens trying to get one. Will be able to do so, but Osmos fights towards the back lines. Players are falling down. John Cunian sells this once again. Two versus three. Tap on that spike. Where's the lineup? He gets picked. And now it's halfway though with the defuse. Will he stick it? He can't. Spike will go off. Sentinel, stay alive. Incredible rounds right now. Switching sides. Sentinels. Overtime. Staving off the death of the first map there from the Vietan as they threw everything they had at defusing the spike, but there were just too many mollies. We saw it before from John Cutie and Zelsis. They have a, pay, a plan for the B post plan. Whether or not they can get far outside. Incredible last moment plays here to keep us going. Round 35 on the board. Look at that. The duality of man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. Instantly in this round. Yeah. <laughs> Alarm bot now spotted in front of C. On our side here inside the game. Not ready to slow down the pace are both Sentinels and Leviathan. Pressure continuing for both of these teams. For both all the fans currently watching so far as Leviathan are looking to hit towards the C site. Four players grouped together. One late lurk on the A side, which is Tex. And that's the game plan, keeping them towards C. Yep. So Tens has to play. A great spot here from Rubble. Do they insert? I thought they were going to leave King for a moment, but he actually plays a bit of a safer spot here, and they, they're going to want to come back after a hard hit here at A. They're going to try to get a good fake in. A frag may bring exactly. the spike over, but right now this is just going to be a bit of a ruse from Leviathan. It's a double pump. They are backing up, though. So you realize that Rubble is open now. They're all grouping up. Yeah, they're going to take it. 30 seconds left, you can work the map still. You can still go towards A side or break that baby door towards B. And if you're looking at it here, Tenza is gonna be alone on the A side, so he has to come up huge if Leviathan chooses to fight that area. Door gets broken, second stays back. Paranoid are trying to slow down as much as he could. 20 seconds left, the satchel's moving inside. Tenza trying to do as much as he can towards the back of the site. Now the first contact, there's that first kill. Boom butt in, instantly traded out. 12 seconds left in Aspas. A nuisance at this spot here at the top of A Heaven. Has support from King at the drop. Placing swamp. But Sentinels are doing a little bit of Leviathan here. Three players grouped up towards the staircase as they lose Zelsis in the process of the rotate. Smokes are being thrown. The push, the engagement, second with the first blood. The off angle coming out from Leviathan. These picks are coming through. Showstopper out for Aspas. John Cutie stays alive for a bit. But now you can definitely see here. Going to be difficult for John Cutie to get inside the site and to try to get the defuse. Wall after wall, smoke after smoke. And as it comes down, Osboss gets another one for his troubles. <laughs> and we continue on. Switching sides. Match point. Wow. We go again. And this is becoming. Uh, such a, a timid early round OT now for each one. Both teams are playing to win, but also to not lose, which pulls you back into sight, making the rounds even more tense because it looks like the site is open, but the defending team is playing more to retake and not lose a member, so they have full util. It is becoming such a different game right now for these takes, these holds. We're hardly seeing this C-mount pressure anymore because of the safety that's required in these rounds because they're coming down to the wire. 4-1 to start off round 36 here for Sentinels on attack. To to bring themselves back in for another OT. They're trying to do the same thing. Yeah, grabbing an orb here on the C side. Zelsis is, is the one that picks it up. John Cutie, though, is going to get hurt. They just hurt him jump spot. He does get the lineup. The snake bite on the ground, and he pushes Leviathan back. Pain shell, snake bite. He avoids all of it. Cover going out. And that will now engage Sentinels towards the C side. And as he rotates across, gets picked off by Aspas. They're still util to delay. Big paranoia out for the attack. Oh, Lazina slaps second from the air. Stays alive towards the back of the side. His teammate has fallen down. Buying some time as much as he can. Comes on the rotate. Wins another fight against Saucy. Casino. Util now being thrown. Both from Tens and Celsius trying to keep things alive. Yeah. Natosaur trying to push him back towards the pillar. But they have a two versus four now. All of them grouped up. Back towards the spawn. The wall bank. What the fall? This Celsius. might be it. Showstopper out. Osmos does not connect. Celsius trying to stay alive. Swerved in by Leviathan. It took a while. Leviathan will win, Lotus. And now, Sentinels find themselves defeated recently on Sunset. Leviathan having not played it since last year.
Bring out that W. 36 rounds in. <laughs> Osbos, 47 and 19. Seven first bloods on the game. And Sentinels were doing everything they could to fight back against this man, but it's still true that Osbos can make it happen when given the space, given the time to do so. And Osbos makes it, makes it happen by also beating the international yes. lead records for most kills in a map. 47 under his belt. Well, the record was 42. So yeah, maybe not 33 to win. He needs 47 and Leviathan finally get it. We still have Icebox next, man. Both of these teams tore it up last time they played. Let's, can we can skip a commercial here? I don't think so, I don't think so. Let's do it, let's throw the break. And when we come back, Icebox is next. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. Spain opens 
up the side. Patelsis is there. He's on oh. the ball. Now, I'm here with Coach Ghost. Now, it seemed like you all were going to wrap this up early on, but Sentinels managed to push it, push it to OT. So I'm kind of curious, how did you all regain that focus to ultimately win? Well, I think it has been kind of our story that we're being very dominant, but then we're kind of losing our, our, our game plan. So I think it's been our focus to, to try to just like focus on what we're doing, don't get carried away by the game, and just like focus on what's making us win and just like execute it perfectly. So that's kind of like what we have been uh, doing and what uh, uh, made us like close game. Close the game. Honestly, I can't wait to see the execution and focus in map two. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Hopefully, uh, you know, you feel you feel good about that one. That was a, whew, in the words of, of, of Jim Ross, that was a, a slobber knocker, a barn burner, if you will. That was just utter insanity, top to bottom. Why I don't want to start with you because I reference wrestling. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. there, I mean, it's just, that was just, I, I, Leviathan certainly let that one slip, and there's one that they definitely have to feel like a sigh of relief, but it should not have gone to that point given where they were in that match. I mean, if, if they lost that one as well, my disposition here would be much more frustrated because it was just like, really, guys, are we doing this again? I mean, after what happened last week on Ascent with Ospos dropping 34 or whatever that was, King 30. Yeah. But thank God they brought this one over the finish line. They can't, they had such a hot start against a sin that just looked really cold. They were losing all of the first engagements, having to save so many of the early rounds yeah. to allow them to get out to this huge lead. And then once the sides swapped and Sin were kind of coming back into the game, like, like please, please, don't do this again. And I mean... <laughs> They didn't, so, you know, it's all right. I'm yeah. not going to freak out. I mean, so many individual highlight moments here, but Shazam, there, there definitely was one individual in particular <laughs> that popped off. 47 kills. They put MVP there. I feel like that's insulting. <laughs> just, I mean, that was nuts, man. Yeah, it was insane. I mean, Ospos, I, I mean, I might think he's, like, the best player in the world right now. Yeah. Um, I just never see him not have an insane match, and that performance, it's, it seemed like everything, he tried to do everything he could to close that match out. And, we decided uh, to dedicate <laughs> our analyst desk area to the face of Ospos. This is now the church of Ospos. It's I'm, only okay. thing. Like, it, it truly is. Shaz, like, if you're in a game, if you're, you're in a match, you're playing against Lev, and he's doing that, <laughs> what do you do? What do you what do? What is the response? Honestly, like, when you're playing against a player that's popping off, you're not really, like, focused on it still. You're kind of just sticking to your game plan. Um, and it's not when you look back to the match and think, like, dang, like, this yeah. guy actually farmed us. Yeah. Uh, it's after the match that, that the realization comes in. But during the match, you're, like, kind of just tuned in on, like, what you guys are doing. Um, and, yeah, the afterwards, they're, they're going to realize, like, wow, Hospos actually just farmed us. Crazy stuff. By the way, you can see right there, he breaks the record 47 kills in a single map. That is a record. So when we were, like, tallying the record, it started off with Americas. We were like, oh, okay, cool, he's going to break the record in Americas. That's nice. And then it was like, oh, oh, oh actually, he's going to break the record uh, for international leagues. Oh, no, he just broke the whole damn record. There are no <laughs> records left to break. There's nothing I mean, left, man. And, again, praise be that they won that map. They still could have lost. Because otherwise, we, we <laughs> yeah, almost no. like witnessed Aspas becoming a streamer. This is what it took. Because that would have been tragic. <laughs> I mean, the mental, like, you just crumble, right? Yeah. And I, you know, we were talking about Levitan in their uh, celebration afterwards. I'm sure more of that was like a sigh of relief that like, holy shit. King smoke. was literally bowing to him. We didn't throw that game. We almost did. He's not gonna we leave. tried. <laughs> holy smokes, King man. was bowing to the man. That's how wild it was. All right, well, let's go ahead and hear from Coach Kaplan. Hear what he, is, he has to say as we get ready for map number two. Joining me right now, we have Coach Kaplan. Amazing performance. I know you all didn't win, but I'm kind of curious. What are you all going to do on map two to kind of turn things around? Yeah, we just got to look at why did we lose that map? Number one, we just didn't care for a half and that's not okay. So we basically played without a half. And then number two, I think uh, our Lotus is catching up to us a bit. We were a bit readable, especially on defense. Need to mix things up for the future. So looking at Icebox, number one, we're already awake. We're not gonna make that mistake again in a half. And two, we really worked on it this week. We're gonna show some different stuff and uh, basically just, hey, the reasons we lost that aren't gonna be reasons we lose this game. They're just not in the picture for Icebox and run it back. 
Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to see. Thank Good you luck. Much, man. Yep. You always know that Sentinels are going to be drilled and prepared no matter the map here. And we're going to be going over to Icebox. And, well, I, you know, Shazam, I, I've commentated a few of your games that went on a super long time before. So now, now you got, you know, a situation where uh, this team is, is going to be, uh, both teams are going to be quite gassed. So this is going to be fascinating how this Icebox plays out. But do you still have faith in the send pickup here, the send 2-1 now, potentially? Yeah, it's definitely still possible. Um, Obviously, Osboss is going to be a big factor here, too. Uh, but it is exhausting. You like, think? <laughs> a match like that is very, very exhausting. You just got to take some time to reset and like focus on your game plan for Icebox. Make sure people remember things, because their minds probably just jumbled up from those crazy rounds. Yeah. Well, it's also interesting to hear Kaplan say, like, we just played without a half. We, we Apparently, they just didn't care about the first half. They were lethargic. They were whatever. And I think a lot of those mental mistakes really showed themselves. But you're right now that you've gone through a, a, yeah. a literal marathon. Uh, that, how, how long is that game? An hour and it a half? It was an hour and a half. That's that's absurd. Yeah. There are movies that are that long. Yeah. yeah. And, and True. Bad movies, but yeah. Yeah, bad movies. <laughs> good point. Uh, you have to reset. Right? Yeah. You have to, like, reground yourself. You've got to be able to get past some of that stuff. And I, I will say, I think there is a lot to be said about the story that Sentinels have had this year up until this point. It's been all about they play a lot of games. They play a lot of rounds. They play a lot of maps. And yeah. maybe that's a difference maker here, or maybe Aspas just Aspas is all over him again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gita's everywhere. Uh, well, there you can see uh, the lock-in there for Sentinels. to see, though, when we, what we end up getting on the other side. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I think, uh, you know, Wyatt, I mean, this is an opportunity here for Leviathan to do something that no one gave him the time of day to do. 2-0 against the Madrid champs. Yeah, I gotta say, Kaplan sounded confident as hell he really in that did. interview. Like, that struck me. And I remember there was, uh, late in that game, Zelsus was really hyping the guys up. Like, they want this mentally. They're so in it. I still trust them to get this win. Uh, well, let's find out if we're going to get a third map, or can Leviathan close it out with a 2-0? to zero. Let's send it back over to Riv and Van Silly. Thank you, Golden Boy, indeed. Kaplan did sound very confident going into this map number two. Yeah. And also, when you're looking at Leviathan's side, though, it seems as though Osboss woke up and said, today, I'm going to play Jet on Icebox and not Reyna and see how that's going to pan out against Sentinels. Yeah, I'm excited. A lot of times, you can make uh, kind of Icebox your playground. Yep. Now they play with a little more verticality. Leviathan may be able to really stretch that against the way they're playing Sentinels here because Sentinels retake. The way they play this map, how organized it is, we'll set it up when it happens. It is terrifying. You got blinds going high. You got blinds hitting the ceiling sometimes with the gecko. Yeah, they are throwing them to break your crosshair for multiple rounds. Ghosts across the board. We expect to get some big peaks out here. Just gonna be a quick cascade up. A lot of mid control by Sentinels as they want map control right away. It's a 3-2 split to start things off on the attack for Leviathan. John Cutie was pushing down, actually with a triple push down mid to stop that split. At least the plant will go down now for Mazino. First contact was second towards that green side, dashed away, and then is waiting for his teammates to move in together with him to retake the site. Right there. As Mazino's waiting, high tide now falls down. Two players greeting him from the snowman. Goes with another cascade, drop from above, still gets one before he falls. But it's up to King and Calm, made that only calm. Long range with the left classic. Turret, wingman, shot dart. Looking for the right clicks. Not gonna happen. Celsius has his own word with his own classic, and Sentinels win the pistol. Oh. Yeah, just looking at the way these retakes are happening, to kind of go over the comms here as we watch this replay. Looking at what Sentinels has to approach the site with is multiple flashes wherever they want to use them. And for Sentinels' side, Imagine feeling the fact and comfort that you don't have to deal with any flashes from Leviathan. Everything you throw is going to be breaking their crosshair. And really, the only thing that you're going to get back is a drone and a dart that you have to break to deny vision through the harbor wall and the viper wall. So Sentinels is just going to pour that flash utility onto Lev each time. Let's see what they have for defense. It's up to Lev to break those defensive lines. Spike down for the second one as they just do a little walking around to gain info. Woo! And that's a good shot to start them off. Not a gun they can grab, but a good start nonetheless. And Zekin answering back with the Guardian as his teammate yeah. fell down, throwing to Dizzy for info. At least they took down some heavy firepower with Ospots falling, but Comwell 
be able to salvage that Sheriff, and they'll work together now. This whole time on this A side, Tex was waiting with this turret to see if there's any aggression coming out from Sentinels. Nothing there. They cross freely. I mean, they cross even not using any type of util on that side, just gambling yeah. it for Leviathan, and thankfully nobody was watching that cross. So they have a chance to walk together now towards the A site. Slowly moving in. Good contact play, actually not even giving up any of this dart info so they can use it for when Sentinels wants to crush back in. And now we'll see, Sentinels goes for a protocol retake. They usually leave tens towards screen and three will walk up towards the ramp so they can get a high entry back into the site here. Tom gets a lot of information from his position. Here's the footsteps on the rotate, trying to find the angle with the Sheriff. There's that first shot. A lucky Sheriff so far to get a third kill in the round Beautiful. with it. The first kill being Ospos with that Sheriff. Now John Cutie's alone. Toxin. Chance for Leviathan to get an eco. As he swings out the crossfire setup, King gets the yeah. backstab and a thrifty comes out from Leviathan. Lev, a big first one. A big actually kill by Ospos there. The Gecko is one of the biggest factors for the retake on Sentinel's take. The Dizzy going up over the backside kind of blinds everything towards that backside, meaning yeah. Tens can knife towards pipes, and they have all the info. That kill by Ospos actually really affected the retake protocol on the side of Sentinel's. And they continue what they were doing here on Lotus, pushing forward towards the screens, up tower behind Dice. Not giving a chance here for Sentinels to set up yeah. with those flood retakes. But again, Sentinels with this round only have tens with a Sheriff. They did try to go for some aggression, some information down towards middle to start things off. No opposition, so they gamble for a stack towards the A site. Turret being the first point of contact, while following up to Decay, and hopefully they'll get some pop shots for some trades. Due diligence out from Leviathan, though. Owl Drone clearing out the way. High Tide also pushes Sentinels back, so it's only Zelsus alone in the sight. There is that Dizzy, there's the protocol. The shots are at least not too bad. A wall banger dropped the spike. And there is that real delay. Ospos pushing forward, and they're looking for a 3 2 1 swing. A great job here from Ospos to isolate those pushes. Oh. What? <laughs> Calm was there for the support, at least for Ospas, but not right ready here. for that shot from Tens. Absolutely. On point. Just audio shot, really. As they play there. cat and mouse on either side of this wall, just waiting to peek each other. So they may be able to get a few weapons out here if they can Once run in and keep Lev in range but they're just looking to go down to the spike on this one. Yeah. So another one by Lev, expected round. They keep three alive on this with an A play as they force the back of the site, and we get a little bit of an idea on how powerful these flashes actually are when Sen can combine them together. <laughs> it's like, I will shoot you before you come in. And all back site too. Back left were all those frags on Sentinels. So let's see how Lev sets up coming into this round. Reckoning for Mazzino to throw out. And yeah, nice. It's a good identification that Lev have to push forward. I think if Sentinels even get onto that rafter, boop, uh, it's, it becomes so day. much harder as they start pouring into the site. So Lev's saying, no, stay outside the site. Just getting through the first door is going to cost you a lot of your utility. And you can see how brutal it is right now for Sentinels to lose Placing that thrifty yeah. against Leviathan, right? They have to go with hash shield blinds if they lose this round here. Out. They have to go back into an eco or a half by. Meanwhile, Ooh. here on the other end for Leviathan, they could start adding a little bit more ults here behind this Reckoning, forming plants, forming orbs. Yeah. And this protocol that they currently have on how to hit towards the site. So far, they have an opportunity to have continuous free plants here towards A. They get themselves in. Pretty easy to boot. We're going to have the full nice team of Sen move. to get back on this one. Reckoning just after to prevent that. So delaying a little bit more time. Extra nice there. And Sentinels are going to set up 3-2 split. Yeah. And Comps just ready for a recon dart too as they try to engage and enter for Sentinels. But there is that oh nice dizzy and flash coming in. Second and 10, swarming back in a sight. Tex is now alone. Nanoswarm to try to delay. He's up by pipes. He's yeah. spotted by Sassy and popped. 
And Wingman will get the assist for the Diffuse. And Sentinels, we talked about how it would have been a very difficult round should they lose this one here. Yep. They managed to come out with only one player losing their lives. And why, the Sentinels will do that retake every time Matt's at A. And the setup, if it may not change, it might change this time. They're usually keeping Tens and Saucy together so they can continuously delay with Initiator Utility and then retake with Initiator Utility. And they made it look so easy here. Nice retake. Nice retake. That's patient. Yeah, 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 nice retake. We just slaughtered him. It's cool. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, the defuse there, a little extra money, but still a little bit of low armor on that. As a few members did go down, but yeah. They're much more comfortable pushing up. Lev denying this orb control every time, but they haven't had to deal with pipes Three just yet. Rest. Good info from Ten's knife. And great deniability, too, from hitting that knife, because Calm cannot get a ping mm -hmm. with the Hunter's Fury combination. That's also going to slow down the pacing from Leviathan. Will they choose to fall back or re-hit the sign in? Seems right to there. be the latter here is already the spikes moving forward. That's Mazino, the one carrying it on his back. Cascade now blocking out the sights of Sentinels, seeing any cross over. And it's a pack for long, so they can use the Hunter's Fury. That's why Calm's staying all the way back now yep. on the pulse plan. <laughs> Last resort. This is difficult now because Sentinels cannot really flank across, so they have yeah. to start moving quick now in the site. And there's not enough coverage on that wall. Aspas no couldn't go forward, so they're forced to now wait for the retake. Calm, delay. Kind of an up the gut Hunter's Fury to delay that entrance into the site, but doesn't stop Sen. That's going to be difficult now because there's that double flash and everybody's getting picked off. There's some delays happening. Updraft, Aspas trying to fall back. They're getting denied for the defuse at halfway. Now second has to stick it. More util coming through. Aspas trying out. to stay alive. Tex gets the pick with the second one. Drop oh, Cutie and sell some snake. Make that only the IGL, but there's no time Ooh. left. That's what they needed to do there for Sentinels to move a little bit more quickly. If not, they were greeted by all of that util to delay. Yeah, and you see how far back the kills were. Yes, two went down in sight from Leviathan because you need a little bit of that in sight delay. But then everybody backed up so far in maze by pipes. Very hard to get affected by any of the flashes Sentinels is using to retake at that distance. And they just post plant it up. Text with the ice cold look there. Ice cold. Might be even frozen. Uh, three. I mean, it is. Two. Two. It is. It is indeed. Second with the ultimate. Up onto yellow. And they do. Sentinel starts to rotate into this default defense where everything on A is meant to delay. A lot of safety from the defense at B. Second can get out. They can reset. It's up to Lev now. Just identify that this is the way that Sen wants to play. And it. it completely goes to a retake. So Leviathan's goal to getting a lot of rounds on Lotus was to dismantle a few members of Sen first and look how safe they're playing. How easy it's to get a first blood here before you're even planting. It is not. And it's simple here for Sentinels. The default that they have on a 1-1-3. One, one, first contact will be Zekin on top of yellow, always taking this spot. They have an alarm bot watching kitchen in mid so they can focus a lot of those defensive players out yeah. towards the A sign at that minute mark. We're hitting the mid-round point. You're seeing the pivot from the spike carry moving outside towards A. So they have the perfect numbers at least to try to fight back in a beautiful first blood to start things off on that mid lurk. So King falls. Cascade now. Engagement initiation out of Leviathan. A one for one as Aspas creates the space. Nice headshot there onto John Cutie. Back on the top of the A tower. Left. Tens, Zekin and Zelsis looking to retake, and Zekin was still a little bit too far away, waiting for the confirmation of the spike getting planted. Mazzino trying to push forward to fight. You hear the null command coming out from Tens. Flashes, players are low, and players are falling down for Sentinels. And Zelsis is low HP. Can he get out? He will with the high tide yeah. up now. Okay. The round will come in for Leviathan as they have a nice anchor hold, a nice post plant. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's that forward position, and Hotspots is the one. You mentioned it, playground for him, just running around that A site. He really is. Adjusting, too. Uh, the other round, in the mistake of the harbor wall, he actually made sure he could still get up by dashing forward past 410, up onto Nest, and then to 410 to play it. And this one as well, uh, another stall out that Leviathan was able to get a kill. The one kill on John Cutie there that we saw Aspas get denies the retake wall. They can't put, Sen can't put anything up to play against Lev, who is back by pipes actually in that exact spot. 
But what a way to start off the round. And then not being able to convert the 5v4. The Viaton is just stealing away these rounds that send starting with a first blood on. Blades up. Dueling Blade Storms if we get it. We saw Zekin on yellow last time not able to activate it there. Actually gets a buy for someone else this round too. And actually they will pause it. A little, a little call there before the round starts. This end wants the timeout. Drew and Kaplan can get a bit in their ear and figure out what's going on with the way they're retaking because that was one of the retakes where they had everyone ready, but this Lev push forward still, I, the W key is on cruise control for them right now at some points and Sen's not expecting it. No. And the way that they're pushing here and scaling towards the A side for Leviathan, Cascade push tens away, they'll play the retake and the retake really is not working out. Yeah. Four Sentinels when they're losing players in a process before they could actually even activate and engage now. And that is an active Kaplan right now. Which is potentially why we had such a late yeah. timeout call. Lee. For sure. Probably has figured something out here on the read of how Leviathan scaling up towards this A site. And maybe the play, because they have a much lower buy. You saw it just before we got into the timeout, the Blade Storm you mentioned here, Riv, but yeah. only a stinger for John Cutie. Half shields once again. Economy continue to be very, very low. Four Sentinels as it might be a play for them to maybe even disrespect. The walls are coming out from Leviathan too. And B round was only tempted on pistol here by Lev. They continue to go towards the right side. The Thrifty within this second map really putting a wrench in what Sentinel's momentum could have been. Agreed. And Leviathan are working off that very happily. Push up. Double flank watch here, actually. And they have thrown the wall up on B just as a bit of distraction, keeping Zekin looking there from yellow. And you still have pretty decent utility for Sentinels right now to delay towards the A side because the pit was available for King here. Mm -hmm. There was a way he could have moved up and to do that type of pit for Jail. And instead, King is moving back with Tex and trying to rework the map. Both of them moving up towards Tube. Saucy is the one waiting now as a turret on Boiler spots one player trying to cross over. They have a time now regrouping to go for another five player hit towards the A-site. Slow orb. Sentinels in the same mirrored positions as before. I should say the same positions, rather. And they are ready with util. Interesting spot for Tens there. Could get caught out in a second, but it looks like he's playing safe knowing the wall's coming up. And a knife actually did delay, so no snake bites to be thrown towards screens. Tens gets the opener on Takam. But again, Aspas, he's the one pushing. disrespecting his own walls, pushing towards his spawn, Ooh. dashes away after he lands the headshot and a no. third there onto Zelsus. He could go wherever he wants to go here. That's an incredible round to watch, especially as Aspas comes around and takes down tens, because that's ten saying, okay, somebody wants 410. I've done that play, I know that play, but Aspas is already thinking ahead, still on that push. It was John Cutie last time, tens this time. And it's just not being communicated that they are hitting A so fast. Zekin will pick one up. Stinger in hand, so looking to stay close and grab a gun at the end of this one as the spike kind of zooms back in, but I don't know if we'll have the distance to cover. It looks like they save and spawn. Yeah. He's going. He's waiting. Not going to make it. All right. We'll see what they have on these replays. Uh, I'm going to send him to the graveyard if you could. <laughs> oh! Good job, bro. Eh? <laughs> I'm gonna send him to the graveyard and did 3K. 3K. If you keep digging, that hole's 18 feet deep. <laughs> All right, we're into this one. 2-1-2 across the map, back to this default setup, but Lev still looking at A. They venture into mid last round to give Sen, Sen something else to think about, but again, orb control here. Sen can't farm. Leviathan take space up to pipes. The small change though is that Saucy moved over towards the A side with Zekin. Yeah. So maybe they do want to try to start fighting back with counter util. But he's leaning out, jiggling out towards the screens, just got spotted by Ospos, forced to fall back. And that pivot and that change in terms of the positioning here might give Leviathan an idea that they might not have the Viper over there to help out with them on the defense for Sentinels. Owl Jolin to try to clear out some space, but actually. Tens is still able to hold the top of the A tower because it didn't spot him. Leviathan are deciding to fall back, leaving the spike. They're going into a 2-1-2 default mm -hmm. with a minute left, so expect a last second late plant. 
Need some hero plays to come out here get with the final way. seconds of the round. It's messing with Util, trying to get Sentinels dislodged from their current positions. And with that spike down, it's going to be another full W towards A here. Lev have done such a good job of rotating out the sights. Remember, still decently comfortable for Sentinels to leave them open. Because the info would come from the back of the site anyways here as Lev hit. So this is al almost normal yep. coming in here. Just a little bit more time, Sen has to rotate. Took a minute, 10 seconds. Right now for Leviathan to finish where they started. Same type of util coming out for a plant. Planted now at Jenny and on towards the A tower for long range position in a fight here from Bells. But the same thing happens. Reckoning was at the ready. Aspas on the top of the screen drops tens. As that gives a timing for Saucy to push out though to get two of his own. Zen, Zekin now pushing forward. Calm now picked off by Saucy as they pin across. Texas solo. Yeah. Nice round in the end. Zekin wins that fight. Wingman it's with another assist. The Sentinels a much needed third Wingman. round finally on, scores one. It. Look how much farther forward everyone's playing now. Aspas only getting a few of those kill results in. And then the flashes that Sen have been trying to use all connect on the way back in. Getting everybody to look a different way. Like you said, those windows just opening for the peaks here. Second pushes through. And you definitely saw it there from how Aspas fell. There was some sort of protocol to actually have Mazzino try to watch towards heaven. But right. that last split second where he was in there quick enough, they both pay with their lives and also lose the round in that process. All right. We have been conditioned, even as watchers, to think it's going A again. But it's not. It's going to be B. And Sentinels look like they're actually reading this very quick. This is the first bit of wall and aggression they've really seen towards B since round one. And Spike's still going towards A, though. Turret holds what would have been a push, and they have not seen Send push. So while being careful about this, this is all safe space as the rotation comes back. That's the thing. They have to be careful because at the beginning of the round, Tex got hit by a knife. So Leviathan, they have to re-clear, right but they're actually re-clearing with contact. Com does not have the Aldron to work with. So they're just walking up. And for Sentinels, it seems like you only see one player anchoring towards the A-side. It's Zelsis. Yes, the alarm bar gets picked, but the idea is for him to stay back so that they can potentially once again do the lockdown play that they're good for. She uses it right away. Oh, Aspa somehow dashed up, but it gets traded out. Mazzino is trying to run across towards the high tide to stop the lockdown. Will be able to do so and also kill John Cutie. Mazzino stepping up. Absolutely should have been prevented by Sentinels on this round. All three members are back. He's just on a mission right now. 18 HP. He's going to stay in the fight. Give it all he can as the team goes for the post plant again. Right How crazy is that? That they're able to run through high tides with no flashes on the attack for Leviathan, yet still getting these picks. The positioning that they're gaining in the early part of the map, I, I, I think is one, obviously helping Lev, but Sen is suffering from how far they're playing outside sight. If you're going to have two people at your screens every time you're approaching again, you're not going to be able to do much. And that is exactly what Lev did. I mean, it was only Aspas last time, but he said, Mazzino, come on through. <laughs> and finally gets that heaven control, finally gets a little more firepower in that situation. And the protocol Sen used to take the site back one round after the other against 100 Thieves is being stopped in its tracks before they get the flashes out yeah. from defensive side. And going into this game too, Sentinels pretty much was one of the best teams tied oh up here gosh. with energy right now yeah. in the Americas in terms of Retake, successful percentage wins here on those retakes for Sentinels, and it's being denied so far. And already a second timeout being called out by Coach yeah. Kaplan. And they have to figure out something quickly here. As they play the defense and calling both timeouts right away, it seems that they might trust their attack at this point, so they have to salvage at least as much as they can in the last three. All right, so where's the, it's map control at this point. Where does that map control come from if your retake isn't feeling comfortable? We think extremities. You think a little bit of mid control, knowing that they can't mess with alarm bot, but it seems Lev is playing like they did on Lotus, far back. You peek mid, you're probably going to get two Lev members. You peek B, they're probably waiting there as well. So it's hard for Sentinels to also peek. So many questions as Captain gets in their ear again to try and orchestrate a way for Sen's protocols to get back into action.
And as you were mentioning how they're playing so far back and waiting for their team to meet up here towards the spawn, maybe yeah. they just got to start adding some players on flanks too, right? Sometimes it's just Zelsus watching that cross, and there's really only one or two players staying behind here for Leviathan. Yeah. So try to at least isolate those players playing the pulse plant, long range right for Leviathan, and close in from both extremities after. It's been a very slow alt game. Yes. We have not seen rounds being swung here and there. The lockdowns are really making the most impact because they're the loudest and biggest on the screen, but just That's not it. really swaying the gameplay. I think there's like what, two ults that came out from Sentinel so far from yeah. that lockdown and a blade storm. Even on the other end, though, two reckonings from Leviathan and one Hunter's Fury, but mm -hmm. blade storm from, uh, from Ospos, of course. But in the end, it's just some really nice fundamental protocol plays from Leviathan on capitalizing and closing in on these rounds on how they're just easily executing behind all these walls that are being thrown out by Mazzino. Backstab? No. Turret for turret up here. Window fight. Oh Tex my. will get spotted by the turret if it continues to walk forward. And this is okay here. John Kitty is just running around and it's exactly. okay. He's trying to bait that out, right? He's walking back already. There is that plant coming through. Ospa somehow gets the pick onto Zekin towards that B site. He hears two, three players rotate out towards Kitchen, and he doesn't care about the turret. Swings before, they don't check it, he gets oh. that first pick, and there's that fight against Celsus very soon, who wins it? Mazina now inside the site. Three versus three, and the other two players of Leviathan are playing long range. Inside the site has fallen. Now long range is Ospas. Hit by a fragment, double swing after, beautiful protocols there on that swing. Up to calm. One Shock Dart available, there's that first pick. Shock Dart it after, but gets picked off right away by Tens, who scores three in the round, and allows Sentinels to get the fourth. And despite that, the scoreline of four to six, we were mentioning how Leviathan were doing so good on how they're playing their yep. executions on the site, yet Sentinels are still able to get these four rounds. Yeah, sneaking some rounds in when you're least expecting it, and it's the defuses, that's why. Because yep. they've gone on so long, Lev did take the site on those rounds and get to the post plant, and it, it kind of took a lot of the members of Sentinels to get it back. But now they start to get a bit of a flow, more economy under their belts, and this means they can start to make those moves, decisions where they might want to push up for one and fight for that orb. At this point, still two rounds down, not as much, but with ultimates on board here, Null Command and that KO ult and Thrash for Gecko, yeah. you can make a lot more choices as you're getting back in. It's actually crazy that 10 rounds were played and nine of them were defuses and yeah. spikes going on. So we're definitely yeah. playing the long game now for both of these teams. First contact you this time run. around, Zekin was trying not to allow yep. Leviathan to get a plant. Couldn't get a pick and now you have a chance to get a lockdown Vortex. This should be a pretty clean round to set up. They're going to go ahead and actually block off towards spawn. So once they get these smokes down, the Viper wall up, you're going to see the Sova Dart go past after they get rid of this Thrash. Oh, the Sova's the Sova, though. So that's calm with the spike. That's going to delay even more, allowing the fight to happen here. Sentinel's trying to fight back all the way from the spawn. All the ults are down. Celsius Labor, but gets that pick there onto King. Plant finally coming down until Tice is trying to fight back. Calm now, yeah. solo after the plant, wondering where his teammates were, they all fell. And Sentinels end up having a clean fight on the base site, despite the amount of util and ults that were being thrown at them from Leviathan. What a return on that thrash use, too. Like you mentioned, getting the spike, that threw everything in Leviathan's strategy for a loop here. Then they're happy enough to see a few members trying to get that upper hand peak. Right there, goes down, Tex falls, and they are just pinched. Sentinels, Kaplan Confidence coming through here. Took two of the timeouts, but it looks like they could give us a six to six first half after suffering quite a bit in the middle of this first one. You're right. Economy's low this time around for yeah. Leviton. Yeah, they still have rifles, but two of them at small shields. Slight hope now for Sentinels to tie it up to a six six in Leviton. Going back to the tried and true. This time a cascade of blocking pipes to give Ospas position in that area. Maybe even a dash on top of the screens will get delayed after that knife that was thrown by Tens. And finally, we get him going back to A. Those two rounds may be in their own head after the Kaplan timeout, but no, Lev go back to A where it was working. Defensive pit, a spray. <laughs> it works out at least for a one for one, and thankfully, it was Saucy that fell and not John Cutie. So the pit is still up, yet the plant still comes down on the A site for the A tower as Leviathan are playing outside of the site now. Two mollies, two shock darts, Hunter's Fury. This is all but secured here by Lev, right? 
That's the question. I mean, with the Hunter's Fury, you have to expect. There is that tap. Wall comes up. He's going to try to get it halfway. And then it contacts. Calm gets the kill. Text fights onto Zelsa's John Cuties alone. Sticking on that spike again. Dropping down. Here's the shots. Trying to get the spray across, but should be all. Yeah. Now Spotty here running inside. Mazina closes the gap. Closes the round. And allows Leviathan to end the half 7 of 5. Lev Switching are playing five. with such momentum today. And while no Sentinels are able to find the, the, the corrections in the things that are plaguing them, this is definitely a Sentinels that is not playing up to their level at this point. And Leviathan is taking advantage of that 100% as they should. Finding all the holes, the cracks, and being Boy, able to put Sen down 7-5 on that first half. But now, it's up to Sentinels. Well, now let's throw it down to Golden Boy, who's on the stage with a member of our audience. Thank you so much, fellas. I'm joined by Sebastian. And the reason why I have Sebastian up here is because it's his birthday, y'all. So I thought we'd do a really fun thing. And with the help of my friends, we'll go ahead and sing a little happy birthday for you, my friend. So here we go. His name is Sebastian. Make sure you get it right. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Look at him taking it all in. Happy birthday. Look at him taking it all in. The adoration. Happy birthday, dear Sebastian. <laughs> happy birthday. We got we'll some free stuff. You have that. That's yours. We got some free stuff. Do you want to throw some stuff to the crowd? Yeah. It's your birthday. Yeah. There you go. You only get this if you come to VCT Americas, baby. All the way up. You love to see it. Come on, make some more noise. Oh, 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 you got a lot there, baby. There you go. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all so much. Round of applause. That was fun, right? Yes. <laughs> I got stuff here. Open up your hands. Here's stuff. I don't know what was more fun. <laughs> Singing the birthdays of this series so far. I mean, we're in for a treat. We had a great time. We have a great time so far here in the Riot Games Arena. And this is some of the things you might be missing out here if you're watching from home. Yeah, yeah. But at least you're not missing out on some good action now. Happy birthday, Sebastian. Happy. Let's move back in the game. 7-5 scoreline for Leviathan. Again, a lead so far in this second half. Their map pick on Icebox looked really good here on the attack. We'll see if they can do the same thing now on the defense, though, as Sentinels. We talked about the confidence that Kaplan was yeah. missing yeah. during that overtime. And they're moving quick here for some early control on the A side yeah. until that nice spot's Icebox who misses those shots. Trying to go up for a frag. We'll see how this pistol round works out. Might have been wanting a happy birthday for a Sentinels win if Lev gets this pistol round. They push towards B. Sentinels are going to have power in numbers here with just a bit of a flank watch, a little bit of a lurk from Zelsis. It's gonna be quite late. I wonder if they just head back here. They're still pretty far from being pushed up as they're held back by this one way. And three members of Lev just on the other side. Yeah, knowledge of two controllers here. Let's, let's go to the other site where there aren't as many walls. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just have to deal with the Viper placement from the beginning of the round. Yeah, this is the difficult part, though, because the turret was watching mid the whole time. So really, they're walking into the unknown back towards the A site. Contact, trade, fundies to try to move forward. Haas boss is still there. Recon dart, though, that's going to give out their position. Yet, they don't really want to accelerate yet. 30 seconds left. Ooh. You're gonna hear Harbor running out. Oh, with that drop though, Osboss is gonna get ready. Dash available, picks it up, down to 10 HP and falls down. Sight is now open, unless there's some deniability here. Shark Dart's available for Calm. Gets the first one out, Sassy with the Wingman Plant and we'll get it. Five versus five here, Osboss is low on HP, so is 10s. All of them playing just around that spike for Sentinels. Yeah, as they want to play in front of those walls that are thrown by Messina. There's the attempt of a retake for Leviathan. Denied by Sentinels so far. Oh, 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 oh. Alone and last to fall. 
Sentinels win the pistol. Second just racking right now. Pushes towards spawn. Knows the team would be behind for the trades, but that's not necessary. Zekin and Aspas are about to duke it out. 14 and 8 to 14 and 10 across the top of your scoreboard. And it's about to be Jets online. Okay. I got your back through the smoke, don't worry. This blind fire in the classic is Zent second on the front line, hitting all the shots. All right, Guardians out. Vandal as well for Zelsus Bulldog. They're just looking to make these shots count and expecting a bit of that early push from the side of Lev. Not wrong. <laughs> the knife's gonna slow Lev down though as they try to move up for that orb area. Yeah, definitely seems on that end for Leviathan. Because they're playing with this composition, they could move in a little bit more freely to farm these orbs on oh. the A side and all pivoting now. Man's floating. Man's floating. He's playing jet after all. <laughs> There's the activation of the dash. Trying to land some shots. No body damage, no headshots. He falls back. King is still there towards yellow, but as I've mentioned, that orb that was picked up, everybody then for Leviathan leaning towards his B side, stacking on that side. And Sen have a perfect read in the mid round to pivot back towards A. Should be able to go four forward, five forward maybe. Yeah, I don't know if they leave anybody behind here. Quick take into sight, pushed by Lev, and they'll have a little bit of timing, but nope. Zelsus is already getting ready to uh, look for the flank. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of feet. He's going to only look for a little bit more. And John Cutie's going to hear all this ruckus going back down mid right now and call that. Yeah, pipes, boiler, and you see from Leviathan, <laughs> all of them holding that angle. Doesn't want to get sprayed, don't no. want to get spammed. This is going to be an attempt of a clean death, I guess, from Leviathan at this yeah. point when the spike's going to go off. Just five on the spike. You don't want to give it to Saucy, right? So Saucy's already halfway, more than halfway, to be able to get the thrash early in the round. Already, so Sentinels, a little bit of trouble there to start off the first half. Second half feeling very good, and the macro they're using here to get around the Viaton is just leaving them in the dust just about every time. You might have one member at the site Sentinels is going to right now because of the way they're controlling the info and the macro on the map. Their macro, I should say, around the map. Let's see what Lev's setup is going to be here as we get into round 15. A little bit of Killjoy utility towards A. Still trying to leave Ospos towards B so you can get somewhat of an early pick, dash away, and get Ospos going. Let's fly. She's Zekin and Ospos actually held to their 14 these last rounds. Let's see if they can get themselves into the action here. Tens is on a stinger as they're going for this bonus. But that's never really stopped them before. Good damage on Takam to start. And they pretty much put all their eggs in one basket here for A with the turret watching behind. Let, or Sen want this. Nice shot by Zekin on the top of the Viper wall as Zeno falls. So double flash to allow Sentinels to get a blind pick. And also a plant coming out from the wingman at the same spot. Trying to engage, pushing outside the balcony. Another oh. nice flash. Double kill from both Saucy and Tens. This becomes a nice little bonus round for Sentinels. Spike planted. Meanwhile, the last few players of Leviathan falling back. This should be free upgrades should Sentinels choose to pick up those weapons in the end. And a different way to approach here on for Sentinels, but it still becomes really clean on how they're really storming the A site. Yeah. They get in effectively. A lot of times you'll see where Gecko and, uh, not Gecko, Saucy and Tens are throwing that flash. Goes right around this area in the back. It kind of lands just up towards top A, towards the site. We actually kill Joy Molly right there right now. And where the flashes land, it allows Gecko for the pickup. His Lev just getting a few more in here. But the flash is in sight. Pretty much mean Lev have to play outside of it. It's that tough. And they have no flashes again to get back, to rebuttal. They don't even have an omen paranoia, right? As you wouldn't, but very hard to play against that. And Sentinels, again, has to feel so good. Just imagine going into a site, knowing you can peek every angle, and the only thing you'll effectively see is another person. Just drop and flash. They're even flash for no team. There's so many flashes. And how confident they are, too, that even <laughs> exactly. if they're blinded, the other ones will move forward. And it's no worries. The second layer, really, to hold that pulse plan. And again, if they're losing players in the process, they still have util to delay. Yeah. Spike the fuse, right? So it's actually pretty 
good what Sentinels has for this composition so far as they take the lead in the second map. Leviathan though, and a quasi buy around the two rifles that they save. I mentioned that thrash that was available for Sasi. Clear out towards yellow, but not really towards the back of the site yet. Yeah. And look at that. Go out, protect the Thrash. Thrash will be picked up, used again here in a little bit. This is going to put a, quite a bit of focus for them onto yellow. If they can't disperse before the retake comes in, this could be a problem. Singer kill, though, from the top. Inside the tubes, does get the pick onto Zekin. Owl drone from Calm does spot tens. Snake bite to try to keep them at bay. They're going to push him out here. And it's a snake bite, shock dart combo but does not land any shots. Meanwhile, it pushed them back towards the high time that was thrown up by Mazina, though. There comes that tap on that spike, the second crash, but there's the push for it from King. Stigger, though, runs out of bullets. Nobody on that spike yet. Comms trying to stick it. Celsus does get the pick, and then Tex answers back. Now it's halfway, there's only one player left. It's John Cutie trying to stay alive, but they're swarming them against him. He falls to get the defuse, and Leviathan tie up the game. Lev coming in with some of the walls. That first early kill coming in was so big. And the rest of Sentinels, like I said, had to scatter from yellow. Having that position meant they weren't ready to come at, uh, uh, at most of the util that was getting thrown in. And really nice clear on yellow by the shock darts and the mollies to make it impossible for uh, Sentinels to play in sight. The amount of kills that both of these teams are getting just above the that smoke. viper wall. Yeah. It happens a lot on Icebox and B, too. If you're at Snowman in the back, you can yeah. peek over the yellow railing. So many little trick shots he can hit. Ooh, Icebox fighting nice. against Celsus, pushing Ooh. forward with a second kill. Celsus. No trade opportunities, but Mazino is trying to do the same and try to avenge his fallen comrades. But unfortunately, it's Sentinels pulling back and instantly rotating towards B. So interesting that Sentinels call that make the play to all on Zelsa's shoulders. Now they go for the B plant. They're going to meet a little bit of util delay here, but it shouldn't be anything they can't get through. Oh, oh King just spawned one person towards yellow. Uber delay here. Yeah, they're, they're taking their time, though, waiting for gas to come back up. Yeah, exactly. Alarm bot's still there, too. Right at the feet Boys from Tex. King could throw snake bites long range. Once the alarm bot goes off. Unfortunately, though, because of a knife. Can't really sound the alarm, so it allows your Sentinels to run around this piece site and drop the players of Leviathan. I think that orb going up in the alarm bot too allowed him to sneak by a little bit. And did not activate as Tens was pushing forward there. Zekin on one uh, orb. Tens on one orb. They will have their ultimates in. Those are incredibly powerful to hit the site. Nice little crosshair movement there by Zelsis. And yeah, he's the confidence in those takes, right? You have tens pushing forward now. Like I said, there's a little bit more money in Sentinel's pocket so they can make those plays. They can push forward and be aggressive without having to worry that they're losing that weapon in hand. Yeah. Still going some low armor, armor too around uh, around the board with enough money to buy each other here. So that'll be interesting to look at once we get back into the game on the scoreboard. 25 seconds left in this left timeout. I mean, they still had a great opportunity to drop Zelsis at the beginning of that E push that they had. And right. Ospos just took a little bit to try yeah, to- Yeah, you can't miss that. Yeah. But when you've dropped 47 kills on the first map, <laughs> sometimes you gotta, you need a little bit from your teammates What's to help out the tank? of it. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any more? Scraping the bottom. He's still at 15 here on that second map and on top of the yeah. scoreboard here for uh, Not almost a server. Yeah, he's almost tied up with Zekin currently now, who uh, is act actually Zekin at 16, rather, where he's actually popping off as this jet roll on Icebox. And now, as we come back from the timeout, it was called here by Leviathan. An op comes out for Ospos. Jeez. I didn't know we were that happy about an off by. Yeah, I guess so. It's, <laughs> that's, that is a heavy win condition, right? And it is only a win condition, I feel, if Lev can keep Sentinels out of the site. You're trying to retake against Sentinels with an operator where you're only getting simple angles, not simple angles, but quick angles, and then you got to get out. Sentinels is going to punish. They're, oh, they're going to swarm you as soon as they figure out where you are. So it has to be a stop before they get the site where Lev is going to have problems. And that's one thing that they're currently doing too, right? Because they don't, they're not really using that dizzy to throw forward position. So this is a great opportunity for Aspas to play on the top of Jenny and watch that line. So Zelsis, there you go. 
first time they pull it out. Fake, fake news, fake news. Fake news! Zekin though, <laughs> answers back. The round will be won later on here as we have a four on four situation. KO all being thrown out now by Tense. And you do have only the Sheriff of Calm in the back of the side. Holy flat, punching forward. Atmos does get the pick on the Tense and somehow gets another one here. Whoa. Okay, so they didn't stop him at the front door. They just kind of before they got out the back door to the backyard. What was that? I mean, trying look at all those get, X's. Trying to get through the wall. They get absolutely shut down, and that just seems like what benefits Sentinels. Being able to pop flash through a wall, get in your opponent's face, and Leviathan just mow them down with a family photo on the other side of the wall. Maybe the right script knew something that we didn't. Yeah. Osboss gets the, the kill right here, round one. Yeah, exactly. He gets three, uh, two other ones, sorry, towards that B site. And yeah, we talked about Calm that only had that Sheriff on that B site. He also got a kill himself. What a great hold here by Ooh. Leviathan. But again, it took a couple of rounds to finally get our first op yeah. here on this map of Icebox, and they realize it now for Sentinels. This really might change their style of approach now on this map on the attack. And they're starting to get the lyrics going now. They're starting to get themselves on the map, pushed up mid. We were expecting this before. Zelsis is ready. 4-2 again. Oh, rinse and repeat for Big. Zelsis. Give him two more. Big impact kills for Zelsis. Larnblad's close, but King will stay at the outside of that radius to call that rotate over, but it's all a ruse. They made all that noise to pull back in. All face Osboss to get this kill. That's how the op goes down in this? Good damage, good damage. And they won't go anywhere to pick it up yet. They want to make sure here for Sentinels that Get this round, you get the win, you get the lead. Bomb grenade out. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a round one. <laughs> Gun here. <laughs> Uh, the oracles out here. <laughs> Crazy stuff. See, Chad, you thought we had the script. <laughs> well, that's not you pressing the button? That's not me pressing the button. Pressing the button? <laughs> All right, round 20. Operator gone now as we watch Zelsis go to work again. Boop. Oh, I just imagine that peak in mid and Zelsis is like, have you heard about the Zen bundle? <laughs> oh my gosh. You don't want it? <laughs> Sentinels in the lead now, 10 to 9. We talked about these ults now available for both teams. Osbos trying to really change the pace of the round on the other side of pipes. And here's these drops. Dash now activated. Pop flash forces him to dash away. And that's a small win right now for Sentinels. Clearing the space to engage the lockdown. Hunter's Fury here. Do they decide? Do they just let it rip? He's backing up for yeah, it. Yeah, he's getting ready, but I don't think they have it now with everybody in position. They're just going for the retake. Deep dart. Hospos okay to get tagged by this. Protection from the team. Oh. Lots of ults here. Looking cussing. And now Calm in the back of spawn. Hunter Fury from the back. Pace oh, three! Lands two! And gets a third kill! Hat trick! Yes, a friendly fire in the process onto Aspos and to Mazzino. But he doesn't care. Three kills, Celsius falls, second alone. Now at the generator against a full man squad of Leviathan. Man, that just feels like a, yep, they did what we thought they were gonna do. So patiently played by Lev. Left. Lev was actually all on 410 and pipes and pushed up to Maze to start this round with ultimates from Sen in their face. Just a quick backpedal, calm. Foolish me for thinking it was going to be a Hunter's Fury for the lockdown. No, 3K off of that alt. Yeah. That shuts Sentinels down big time. It was definitely the one at the front here, Aspas on the top of screens, being the one watching down, making sure that, hey, you don't need to use your lockdown yet. Nobody's pushing it across. Right. Save it for post plan denial or get the three kills that you just did towards Maze because of that reckoning also that was thrown out by Mazina. Oh, second alone. Now at the generator. Yeah. Feeling it now, Coach Lapland. Kaplan. All right. Three at A. A little bit of a skirt. One and one in mid and B here. Sentinels, they're on the W train this time, pushing straight forward. Vandals in hand. They don't really have to deal with too much rebuttal on the utility here. King with his ultimate. And choose to put that down anywhere, but Lev is not in position. They're playing this one rather safe towards B in mid. 
and just giving Osbos the chance to play the info game again. It's going to be a slow round now for Sentinels. Winning condition to work around the map. That pick is huge because that's going to pull Rotates away, which allows John Cutie to potentially find a timing. Already towards yellow. Kami's leaning across to find info himself. And he's covering yellow. Now gets caught, but still matches the flick back to get the kill. Potential double pump. Tens now making a lot of noise towards the A side. Throws a knife, actually hits potentially two. But one made it back alive. That was King actually not hit by the knife, which allows here. Sentinels to start moving forward. Okay. They have wingman delay. This is going to stop wingman. They're going to have to scatter again. Raleigh. Oh. Little bro lives. Free plan. Now that pit that was actually gambled towards that A site from Tenzis knife. They don't have that to use for the retake for Leviathan. We'll come down to the trades. A double swing towards the spawn. It's a one for Still one. Still gets one. Kong trying to move back forward with his teammates. Recon dart towards the back. Flash will not do anything double as it was thrown inside the orb. Yeah, double ping to get the kill. Lockdown now available for the retake. Tenz has to find a timing. Oh, easy kill. Lockdown destroyed. And also fragment onto the spike. It's not even halfway. One enemy remaining. Tex gets picked off. One enemy and remains. now King is alone, but now sticking onto it. It's close. Oh. But oh. Sentinels will still get the round. How scrappy these rounds are being put together with glue and gum right now as they are just going one way or the other at the last second. It's taken everything from these teams and Lev are gonna call the timeout. Incredible that Aspas was able to start with over 200 damage across Sentinels at the back there, not dropping one player though as the damage got distributed. Still have the strength to get through, get the sight. And wow, imagine if the Molly was activated earlier too. So many things in that round that are that can be played, but Sentinels winning the timing game. Or if the cape from Calm was in, wasn't being spotted there by Tense right. as he was trying to defuse. <laughs> no capes. <laughs> we know this. Because if not, the lockdown would have been destroyed. That would have been the cold there that there's actually a flank if they could fight in those moments. But that's in an alternate universe. This time around, it's a timeout from Leviathan, and Sentinels did capitalize on the round previously. And the lead now 11 to 10. Back and forth, we continue to go here in the second map. We never let go of the pedal for both of these teams since yeah. the Lotus map. Zekin and Aspa still close and one away. 19 to 18 in frags. The operator comes back out, but a factor of 10s and Zelsis coming online in these recent rounds to frag it out have meant everything to Sentinels. 11 to 10 now. Do Sentinels take Leviathan's icebox here with Leviathan taking Sentinels Lotus? Incredible they stuff so far ready. from both teams as we start round 22. So Molly being thrown here towards Boiler to try to break the turret. You see that actually pulls Calm away to try to watch towards Boiler. So yeah, the turret will still be up to watch Kitchen. They'll give a chance here for Leviathan to read any type of lurks towards middle. But it might be a late Owl drone coming out from Calm to really clear out towards middle, and there you go, 1.14 yeah. on the clock. He'll see the turret, he'll see Zelsis. Really no changes coming out really from Sentinels because they've met that before. Have to keep guessing now for Leviathan. Gambling two players now towards middle as Sentinels decide to walk out towards this B site. And look, they're trying to just strengthen this mid party right now for the side of Leviathan, thinking there will absolutely be a fight or a trade. They back off. Getting enough time off the clock on that. And this just right back to default positions as they're starting to heal di here Dizzy and Util towards Long B. Sentinels is looking to work the whole map though and Lev's giving them nothing. As they're making more noise, Zelsis is trying to walk up That's towards the two. Push. The AWP is back in the hands of Aspas. Zelsis has made it through, left. but he's gonna hear this turret now, realizing that it wasn't on Boiler in the beginning. Yet Aspas still lands that Spike shot onto Saucy. A. 20 seconds left, so Sentinels have to start engaging now towards this A site. Zelsa is falling back at the same time, too, instead of going for a lurk play. His second is trying to create some space. Gets picked off by King. 10, 10 seconds left. Seconds. Dinosaur mount delays. A shot won by Tens. And has no choice but to go for the stick, but they're closing in on him. He falls. Zelsa gets picked by Ospos, too. An incredible round for Leviathan on the hold. And an expensive round for Sentinels. 
Absolutely. Sentinels can't dislodge oh Lev. God, you no, had no. Ospas and King at a crossfire on A the whole time. They had three mid. They weren't really worried about B. You still have Ospas with the Operator coming in for the play here. And Sentinels can't find a way to make Lev worry about what's going on. They're still holding their spots. I think a really neat way Sentinels could start this off is if you have tens towards B long, sometimes with the turret in kitchen, which it's not anymore, you can molly that through the ceiling, get that first bit of utility out of there, and they'd be able to move the map here. It's not even a choice. Is the off still ready? But they play close. Oh, misses the shot hit by the Dizzy. An off draft in the air. It's a two for one. As Tens is still looking to get res and he'll get it. So back to a four on four. They've lost to Ospas. Call pushing four, two kills into his name. With the third there. All watching it from the back of the site. I mean, there's four players of Leviathan holding from the right side generator. It was a Congo line pretty much for the defense, and it's free pickings there against Sentinel's attempt to move in. It's up to John Cutie. I mean, he's won a 4K before. Yeah, nice shots coming out here from Kong. That's that's 12. That, yeah, at the same time as we come 12. back here, it looks like John Match Cutie got point. picked off. Match point for Leviathan. No weapon saved. In a, not the buy you want on match point. Coming to this game point, Sentinels has only lost three series this year. Loud, G2, and Gen G. Another one on the horizon from Leviathan now here in stage one. Pressure towards A just has not been working. And for Leviathan to make the choice to put that many members at A after it has been a back and forth from Sen, from site to site, a bit of mid control as well to boot. But they find none of that. The correct call there for round 23. Round 24, possibly Lev's game. Rotating to meet Sentinels now towards B, and it looks like they are there for the death ball. They have to move quick here. Hunter's Fury is available, and a user right away to Second. play against Aussie, so he has to get out of it. Does get the pick. There's no refresh on the thrash, and on top of that, a ping. Mazino playing on the top of the B tower, yet Sentinels can't move in yet for a plant. Throws out a cascade. Tens is trying to go for a plant. Mazino trying to deny it. Running and gunning. Gets Whoa. the pick. Denies the plant once again. King is trying to move forward. Three players left alive on both sides. They've disrupted it. Everything has to get be reset now. High tide slowing down the pace. 50 seconds left on the clock. Calm is still watching on that rotate, so they are weaker on the B site. Orb then comes up, trying to delay even more. Being placed down by King. Just waiting here on the attack side for that fuel to come back up, and it will. The walk across the orb, there's that first pick from King. Orb now coming down, surprise kill on to Celsus. Then Ospas with the last pick. Leviathan, they fight back in the second week and defeat Sentinels, two to zero. A breath, a sigh of relief from Lev, a cheer from the crowd, and an amazing outcome that no one expected. Leviathan coming to play today from Lotus OT, 19 to seven, to being able to take, take down Sen in regulation 13-11 here. And the Ospas second battle delivered, both <laughs> sitting at 21 frags in the end. But Ospas with six first bloods to seconds five. And the team just outright playing so well today. You can play to see a lot of those were actually on defensive side too. A crunch there against Sentinels. When Ospas had that off out on the A side, the Hunter's Fury that continued to be perfect here from Calm. The utility was great from map one to map two for Leviathan as you can definitely yeah. have those questions answered. How will they look here in week number two? Will they look like that all-star team that we know that Leviathan could bring here? We definitely do see a quick turnaround, 180 in this performance of this team in front of you right here. And this was a very scary of the Viaton today. If we take stock of what happened from Sentinel side and really think about these maps, Lotus required a lot of clutches from Sentinels. It was scrappy, 3Ks, 4Ks, John Cutie having to come up multiple times. And what you want to see that from your players as you're a Sen fan, it doesn't bode well when you want to take control of the game. It felt reactive. And then on Icebox, Leviathan was pushed, pressured. Sentinel started to come back into form, but it seemed like once Lev got the off, they were able to slow everything down, and that's exactly what Sentinels did not want. Yeah. Sentinels on their end, too. I mean, you heard what Capo was saying between both maps. 
They were they started off a little bit slow, but also that you know they're starting to get figured out here on Lotus and yeah. maybe even figured out now on Heinzbox where these retake plays weren't really working for them in the end, right? Trying to fight back against those walls coming up. They had definitely, I mean, it's hard. The question was, or how can you stay on the top here now that you're actually at the top for Everybody's signals. gunning for you. Everybody's gunning for you, for sure. <laughs> it's it, a, definitely a tough one. It's crazy stuff. And, and looking at how Sentinels can now repair from this, I don't yeah. think anybody should be worried. No. Again, this is their fourth loss of the year. That's not too bad. And it's still Leviathan. And now they get to work off of this. They get to see that, yeah, okay, maybe we got a little complacent in some spots. Today didn't go as we thought. How did the Viaton do it? And they come back stronger, right? That's what losing gives you. I mean, it'll also... And a, and a hope. And a hope, hope exactly. exactly. And if anything like that, too, you have, you can't not mention Ospos's performance oh here on these two maps, right? <laughs> Maxing out international frags here. Absolutely taking the spotlight for a moment. And sometimes doing the own facilitating for himself, but absolutely the team behind him. King with the calls. Their mid-rounding on Lotus was disgusting. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, the amount of times they actually had Sentinels out of position, while well, Sentinels still wanting to play retake, it put their retake out of position. And we have not really seen that yet. Well, a big victory there for Leviathan again. Against Sentinel, so let's now send it to the floor where Geek Heavy is down at the stage for the Verizon post match interview. Let's give it up for Leviathan one more time. Joining me right now, we have Mazzino. Uh, this was a phenomenal win. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since Leviathan has won, and what a win against Masters Madrid champions. How do you feel? Uh, really good, obviously. Uh, it was a really hard fight, and uh, we give it our best, and we win. And we know now that. From, the, from now on, we're going to just win. I like that attitude. That is, that is quite the attitude to have now. So it's, I mean, like, you know, coming into to things, you know, we saw you all go up against a C9, um, not the best performance. Uh, but I'm kind of curious, what caused this shift in performance for you and the team? Uh, it was just like a mentality thing, principle, uh, because we like, we're like lacking confidence a little on our game. And uh, now we just, play our game and it shows the difference. Yes, that's right. Now, my last question. Next match is up against NRG. Uh, last time you went up against them was last year. Uh, you and King were there. What are the confidence levels? What are the vibes? Uh, of course, after this win, um, our, the whole confidence levels are, la are high. Uh -huh. and we're going to keep doing our best and we're going to win against them. All right, well, you, you want to hear it. That's what you want to hear, everybody. Give it up for Leviathan one more time. We're going to take things over to the post show right after this. Welcome back, everyone. And yes, Leviathan walked away with a 2-0. You see, guys, we told you that's exactly what was going to happen. You had to believe us. <laughs> You had to believe it. Jokes aside, though, we're joined by my main man, the one, the, the one and only Com. First things first. That was an awesome Hunter's Fury. <laughs> How did it feel to get one of those off again? That was crazy. That, that has to be a world record. I did 560 damage with my ult there. They don't call me the goat of the ult for Ooh, no reason. the goat of the ult, Papi. Que bueno. Dude, I remember I watched that, and I, I, I don't remember if I said it out loud or not, but I thought, when was the last time we saw someone get three kills yeah. with, the, with that one ult? That's just insane. Yeah, I think it was him. Yeah, probably pretty sure it probably, probably was him. Yeah, probably <laughs> was. Pretty sure it was him. All right. Well, uh, before we start, I wanted to hand some stuff to you guys. Okay. We're gonna play a little game, Com. Okay. All right, I got you covered. Here you go. Oh, That's for right. you guys. I would play, but I'm, I'm, you know, no one cares about my opinion. All right. Oh, and also, I, okay, there we go. But I, I'm gonna, gonna participate. Give you two thumbs ups. Yeah, I get two <laughs> thumbs up. I know, right? Imagine. All right, we're gonna play a little game called Agree or Disagree. With the, you know, the things there, we're supposed to have a graphic or not, doesn't matter. <laughs> In any case, there it is. Ah, oh, boom. Look at that. Production. Nailed it. Timing immaculate. All right. So, as I said before, I'm going to read a statement, and everyone is going to need to weigh in with that thumbs up, thumbs down. And what's going to be fun is this is about the matches tomorrow. Oh, okay. So, we get to have some fun, and Sweet. you get to chill and speculate. Be a little speculate Stanley. That's great. <laughs> All right. First question. MIBR will beat crew tomorrow. Agree or disagree? What have you been seeing in the streets? I'm gonna go. Either way, I go. This is this is, this is just <laughs> screw for me. Uh, I'll go with the gray because I think MIBR plays a really good uh, version of Valorant. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like that. What did you say, Sean? Oh man, I'm gonna go with the gray too. I think that they've had a lot of time to prepare. Yeah. You know, they've been able to watch all the teams play. Yeah. And they should feel prepared. Okay. All right. You're saying agree as well? I mean, I, I almost like. 
tore my rotator cuff snapping this thing up as soon as the question was asked. That's true, I did see it. I firmly believe in what MIBR are doing. Yeah. I think they're criminally underrated. I think the coaching staff that they have there together and the pieces they put together are gonna be way, way, way better than people realize. And I know Kesnit's gonna you know, be Kesnit and do his thing, but I'm a big believer of MIBR. Oh, okay, all right. I, I, I agree, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, okay, let's see another one. We have NRG is the scariest team in stage one. Agree Ooh. or disagree? That's actually a, that's a thonker. That's, that's a, a thonker right there. You got to use the brain. Those are, those are my old teammates, man. Yeah, yeah, so that's rough. those guys. Yeah, yeah, you got to say, uh, you gotta speak bad about them. No. Or, or speak good about them. I'll speak good about them. <laughs> oh, we what play a them guy. next week. They're the best team in the league right now. So we'll <laughs> Look at that. that. You just don't want to give them ammo. That's <laughs> what it is. I respect that. Shazam? I might go with disagree. Ooh. They look really solid, but I think it's too early to say they're the scariest team. Okay. Um, I know Sun lost here, but I still think they're, like, you know, one of the biggest threats, and so it's just too early to say that. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. What about you, Doug? I'm going to agree because of what they can be. Oh, okay. I think... Ethan figures out IGLing. Demon One does his thing. You've got Crash. He's Marv just rolling back the years. He's playing far more aggressive. Uh, much like we saw in, the, in last week compared to how he had played like two years ago, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I think that's the NRG that is scary. And I think that the NRG that we saw, you know, maybe week one, or sorry, during kickoff, eh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I think they can be the scariest. And because of that, Thumbs up, baby. That's fair. That's fair. We're, you know, uh, just to kind of bring it to today's game, were you a little worried about, uh, you know, especially Sentinels having a hot run? Were you, like, concerned, like, oh, this is going to be a tough one today? Um, I would say coming into it, you know, like, they're the best team in the world, but also I know what it feels like to be at the top. So when you play in a certain way to beat these type of teams, yeah, it, it just feels great. And obviously, like, credit to them. They played an insane game. I mean, we went into, like, how many overtimes the first map? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I have nothing, but, re I have nothing but respect <laughs> for yeah. all those guys. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Tom, I want to pick your brain because last weekend you put out a tweet mm -hmm. about your individual play yep. and how it felt like it was back to the beginning of the EG days. And those yeah. were those were dark days, right? Yeah. Those were rough days. Uh, two things. Number one, what was your mentality shift from last weekend going into this weekend? Was preparation different? And then additionally, was your play style different? Did you approach the game in a different way? Um... I would say in a little bit, like I work, I definitely worked way harder this week than I ever have, just like what happened in EG last year. And I think it's also like, whenever I go on that server, like I just wanna make sure all my, like even if I'm dropping like minus 20, I don't care. You know, I'm always gonna make sure my teammates feel the energy that I give, kind of be like the hype man of everyone. And I've taken on a new role of being like, kind of like the secondary man in the yeah. team. So it's like, I'm just making sure everyone has the energy to, you know, win out the rounds and, I mean, I have insane aimers, what can I say? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, Ospos did like break a record. Oh, yeah, that was crazy, <laughs> that was crazy. All right, let's do, let's do one more. We got one more here. This is gonna be a fun one. Three NA teams will be representing Americas in Shanghai. Agree or disagree? What are we considered? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not um, a question. Not, <laughs> I mean, it would be... The classification should be, what, what language are the walkouts done in? <laughs> if the walkouts are done yeah. in Spanish, then... What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I mean, that's basically saying whether or not you're going to make it to Shanghai yeah, or it's not. Like, no, I'll go disagree. <laughs> 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 All right, what about you, Shazam? Um... Yeah, I might go with disagree too. Ah, because he's here. I may respect it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, loud is in that conversation uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, loud as well. You um, know, so it, it, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. We've got a strong region overall around here. So. We really do. We really do. Doug, yeah, Dubois. I think I got to disagree as well, only because I like, I don't. What third team would go? Right? Like, there's mm. a real good chance Energy goes. There's a real good chance Sentinels goes. What other NA team would go? I. Ooh. Okay. All right. I like it. I like the. The, the questioning there. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. Well, you know what, guys? Good news is we passed the game. We win. We win? Yeah, you won. I, I got too hype all, all day. I'm, I'm good, I'm good on that. <laughs> what you won was to take a look at the standings. There you go. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, no, you owe me a Coke. All right, uh, so here we go. The standings as they are right now, the Omega group with those two wins stand tall above the victorious MIBR. Omega Omega group fans rejoice. Today they was an Omega it. They're day. on the board, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I actually kind of like this thing of like Omega group versus Alpha group. Yeah. At first I was like, ah, it's kind of weird. And now uh, the more I'm seeing it, the more I'm like rooting on the Omega group there. How'd it feel for you to be able to pick up that win today? Because th that was a... Uh, 
That was a big game, man. It was a much needed one. I think after the C9 week, we're like, guys, we got to kick it in gear right now. We got to show why we're world championship caliber team. Yeah. And I think today we showed it. Yeah. And, and uh, something I did want to ask was about that week. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that the time from that week till now. It, it did feel like a team that came in with a renewed purpose, if you will. Yeah. Did you guys have a have a, like a serious conversation, or was, was any of that happening, or was it more just like get back to the server, get to work? Yeah, there was a lot of like tough conversations that we had to have with each other, just be real honest and blunt about things. Do you feel and, that was helpful? Yeah, and everyone just like voiced their concerns or however they feel, and then we just all got on the same page. I think before last week we didn't really fully feel on the same page, but I feel like this week, I mean, you see it in the server, it kind of feels like we're putting it together now. Yeah, yeah, definitely does, definitely does. Did you, I want to take you back to that quintuple or sixtuple overtimes, mm -hmm. uh, however many that was. You guys were on that point for a little while. You had yeah. a chance to put them away and it felt like it just kept slipping away. I think, uh, honestly, given the Leviathan that we saw today relative to the one that we saw last week or during kickoff, I think Old Leviathan loses that, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah. This read with this renewed purpose is much more confident, much more like dialed in and committed to what you guys are going to do. Obviously, obviously was able to emerge victorious. What would you say? Obviously, you know, preparation is one thing, but what was the biggest difference between last week's Leviathan and this one? Um, just confidence, man. Like, mm. we, we have Aspas, King, Mazino, Tex. Put myself in there. Come. But, um, As you should. Yeah. Um, we all have insane aimers. We have very good comms for a mixed roster. And we just have to show it. I mean, don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt your teammates. Just keep going. Yeah. Do you think you've been, like, kind of reinventing yourself as a player, too? I know, like, obviously, Conflanks is always going to be, like, a famous thing. Yeah. But um, I notice you, like, with the group a lot more. Yeah. And I don't even I don't even think I could pick out a round where you were, like, kind of wrapping around late round. Yeah. And it was, uh, I mean, yeah, it was different. Yeah. I mean, I think this game always tests you. I mean, I think these last, like, two months have kind of tested me to like reinvent how I play and kind of, you know, just find my new groove. Um, I think it's slowly getting there. I don't think it's all the way there. I mean, it took a while last year for me and I mean, it's happening the same this year. Um, but I think we're growing, I'm growing and it's, it's just nice. I like feeling the improvement of everything. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, proof is in the win column there, baby. You beat the Madrid champions. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. Congratulations mm. on that one. That's wild stuff. Let's, of course, take a look at the schedule and where we are as we get ready for some more matches tomorrow. Crew versus MIBR, NRG versus Furia. Uh, I'm stoked about that Crew MIBR game, but I got to tell you, boys, I'm pumped to see Demon 1 take the server. I, I want to see what this guy is going to be cooking up here it's going to be quite exciting uh yeah but that being said though folks i mean there you see the matches make sure you're there bright and early for those games well you know it's gonna be in the afternoon dog right it'll be like 2 p.m well it's like bright and early for gamers right yeah for yeah, actually for degenerate hours that's very that's pretty bright early, i had to wake right? up at like 9 a.m for the you poor thing <laughs> why am i here you know what i mean like i woke up and i felt like it was just like arisen from a coma uh well guys thank you so much i want to thank you all for the time com congratulations thank on the you. win again o always a pleasure to talk to you as you know but uh good to see you guys pick up that dub on the stage. Thank today. you, thank you. That was awesome. And of course, can we just give a massive round of applause to Shazam? First day working analyst. That's baby. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. We got the ham horn. They were ready, bro. Oh, they were the, ready. It's the best day ever. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Same time, same place, right here. We'll catch you then, folks. Much love. By See the left soon. bundle. <laughs> By the left bundle. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, y'all. Swings at the right time. Will it steal? There's no time. There's no chance. Hundred thieves. Number one. One enemy remains. My ult is ready. Goes on to win like a 2v4. <laughs> Goes on to.
John Judy puts it halfway, now sticking it down. One for one in front of the fight, and there it comes all these defuses. Oh. Them pinned towards the back of the side. There's that first swing. Second shot coming through. Oh, no, John Judy, Jones Park from Last Boss. There's that first head shot. The top of the fight. This might be it. Showstopper out. Akbas does not connect. Sess is trying to stay alive. Swerved in by Leviathan. It's a to wow. But Leviathan will win. Lumis. Happy birthday, dear Sebastian. <laughs> The walk across the orb, there's that first pick from King. Orb now coming down, surprise kill up to Celsus. Then Abbas with the last pick. Leviathan, they fight back in the second week. In the feet, Sentinels, 2-0. to zero. Thank <laughs> you.